this recording in progress. But the actual name they they haven't yeah. they still yeah. going to be then how it can go out. And then his opinion is cool, pen. See, I see Pierre's poem. Then it's like car change. I will just break. So why not just keep it on? It's fine. And then when the, the, the user is starting to come in, on it, then it's a PNC broadcast. I'm going to have a conversation after this one. Yeah. Yeah, what you can do, Rav, is we'll cut it off the sound. Yeah, you'll tell me when you do yeah. the process, then I'll cut, cut off the sound, sound. yes. For the holding slide. Yes. For YouTube. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, two, one minute to nine, guys. So open the camera and the camera. Oh, okay. Laptop. And audio. Uh, I want to test. Uh, hey, come for the. Oh, yeah. the. Oh, the. Oh, the. Oh, the. Oh, the. Oh, the. the. Yeah. And what is it called now? It's called USB. USB video. Oh, okay. I think that's for oh, so projecting. If join the, I think we're broadcasting this as well. So please join the link. Uh, the, the, the Zoom link if you're going to be projecting. And then okay. just share this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Then we'll be able to, yeah. Okay. All right. Just have your sound and your mic. Okay. Oh. okay. Oh, now we yeah, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here to check. One, two, one, two. Can you hear me? One, two. Lift so long, sing for Gunye Gubili. One, two. Thanks.
uh, honorable members, uh, I'm suspecting uh, we must start. Can I welcome everyone who's in in this meeting, which is honorable members, uh, our staff, our advocate, because I'm not in my iPad, hoping that SAIDS is with us, hoping that a department today are with us. I'm, I'm not sure, because I'm not in my uh, iPad, because we are meeting physical. Uh, I do welcome honorable members uh, and saying that uh, we are about to done with what uh, we've been doing since uh, November, December, January, until now with this uh, amendment bill. Uh, so, like, do we have uh, apologies? No, Madam Chair. Oh, uh, what I know, uh, Honorable Maloman uh, is on her way, will join us. He didn't get a direct flight, is connecting. So I'm having that apology of Honorable Maloman. Any other apology within us? I don't have it. Uh, Honorable members, can I ask members to adopt the, the agenda? which is that agenda on the screen. Honorable Mtetwa. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Um, I move for the adoption of the agenda. Thanks. Honorable Adams. Good morning, Chair. Chair, I second on the adoption of the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable members, uh, the agenda has been adopted. Uh, can now uh, go to number two, where we are going to give the chance our advocate. Uh, can advocate take us through? Uh, hoping all what we have raised to me, we have got a right uh, to raise in this committee of ours. Thank you, Adela. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, honorable members, and good morning to my colleagues. He doesn't want me to switch it off. It's fine. Okay. Chair, honorable members, um, Zuleka has shared on the screen the draft proposed um, a list for the amendment of the introduced bill. Um, if the I'll just reiterate, as I explained before, this document will be used um, in order to print a B version of the bill. So what happens is, is that the printers take the instructions as contained in the documents and they will print our B bill, which will then contain all the amendments. Um, if honourable members, if we, if Soleka, if we can go to page one, um, and then there are a few outstanding issues as we are going through the A-list that we can discuss. Um, so clause one is the, the, this is the amendment of section one. Um, and, and as members are aware, we will read this A-list with our introduced bill. So when we refer to on page two in line three, I'm talking about on page two of the introduced bill in line three. So the first change over there at point number one, it's it's a it's a drafting mistake, and that is just to refer to um, the 
the, the subsequent amendment to our Principal Act, and that is Act 25 of 2006. Um, if I remember correctly, it was a question that was posed yesterday. Do we not refer to all other amendments. Yes, we do, and that is the manner in which we do it. We're actually indicated on the Principal Act. Um, again, it's just a, a technical error that was picked up. Um, on pay, uh, point number two, uh, you can just move a little bit down. So like, uh, on page two in line six, um, after the word definitions, we will be inserting the word interpretation. And that ties into the proposal that has been made that the definitions clause will now also contain an interpretations clause. And the interpretation provision in, in the proposed section 1-2 is just to confirm that any interpretation of this principal act should be aligned to compliance with the code. Um, point number three, this is the insertion of the word anti-doping organization and the definition thereof. This was proposed by WADA and um, SAIDS. Um, so, so, so this insertion is a compliance issue. Um, on page two, uh, and this is now point number four, um, there's a proposal to remove the definitions International Olympic Committee and International Sports Federation. And the purpose for that is just that it's not used in the principal act, nor is it used in our bill. And a rule of legislative drafting is that we do not define that which is not used. In other words, having those definitions would serve no purpose. Um, it hasn't been raised as a compliance issue, however, just for the purposes of having um, correctly drafted legislation. Um, point number five, uh, it's and this is on page three, in line five of the introduced bill, the proposal is to omit the A and to substitute that A with the word the. And this refers to the prohibited list. Um, and this is a compliance issue. WADA um, says, and WADA has indicated to us, that the definition of prohibited list should be, um, we should refer to the prohibited list and not a prohibited list, and that is in accordance with the code. Um, point number six, and this is the definition of sports confederation. Um, and members would recall there was some confusion with regards to this definition of sports confederation. Um, and this is replacing SASCOC now instead with the sports confederation. And that would be its general term. Um, and the department, I, I hope they are online. I'm uncertain whether they're online. And the department um, has indicated to me this morning, they've emailed me and telephoned me, and they've indicated to me that in the National Sports and Recreation Act, there is a definition of sports confederation. Mm -hmm. And the definition in that act, it refers to um, the sports confederation um, as appointed by the minister, uh, I'm sorry, I just need to, to, to open it up again. I've lost the... So it's the National Sport and Recreation Act. And that act um, defines sports confederation, and I'll read it for the committee. Sports confederation means the confederation recognized by the in the terms of Section 2, and that is Section 2 of the National Sports Recreation Act, which is a representative of sport or recreation bodies, including Olympic National Federation. Um, now, um, honorable members, chairperson, as this definition that we have now, um, it adjusts the definition that we have in the Principal Act. The constituent components from paragraphs A through to, I think it's E, are retained. However, we the proposal as put forth by the department is that we use a general term of sports confederation as we understand that SASCOC is in the process of amending its name. Um, members, um, Honorable um, Chair, Chairperson, Madam Chair, there seems to be some confusion with regards to this definition. It is not a compliance issue. It has not been raised by WADA, nor has it been raised by SAID. Um, 
I, I put it to the committee, perhaps we can consider and apply our minds with regards to the definition. Um, the department is online as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Uh, I'm suspecting uh, the most of members yesterday uh, were uh, arguing about the, the very same point. And if now uh, it was not uh, included in the compliance issue, so I'm suspecting honorable members, you have got a right uh, to, to engage in order that that confusion that we were in a bit on it uh, of the SASCOG, of the, if now it was, uh, uh, it is in the principal uh, act and, and now was introduced by then minister. And the, the, the fact that it was not the part of the issue of e-compliance. Can I give it to the honorable members to say something? Honorable Van Dijk, honorable uh, Mtetwa. Uh, thank you, Chief Person, and thank you also for your input. Um, personally, I would say that while it is not a compliant issue, that we should leave it as is. It might create issues, um, and while SASCOC is still in the process to change their name, um, that can always in afterwards be corrected. But for us to now, we just need to be compliant with what they expected us to, um, the technical clauses that they want uh, us to amend. So from my side, I think we should just leave it as is. Thank and then also, um, I also just want to get clarity. The same with that... Um, uh, point four, where we sit uh, in terms of the International Olympic Committee and the International Sports Federation. If that was also not raised, why would we change that? Uh, just a moment. Uh, I have also the answer for your question, but I will give it to, to Arnold. Uh, point taken, Honorable um, Tetwa. Thanks, Chair. Um, I don't have any serious concern with what we have done in terms of retaining uh, the Sports Confederation. And, and the definition is not really a, a serious issue that we could say. If it is in line with the compliance issue, no, we're fine with that. My little challenge is Olympic. What about Paralympics? We're not yet there. Uh, let's let's do it step by step. Uh, but the question it's it's irrelevant. They must come to that. Oh, okay. Yes, yes they must come and explain. Thank you, thank you. You still want to off? Yeah, no, I wanted to check. Uh, in fact, to suggest that do we have to put Olympic in the national, the South African Sports Confederation? Because I'm looking at the situation like your LGB, it started as LGB, now we are on LGBTI. Don't you want to leave it open and not put Olympic? and just pick the confederation so that it allows any change in the future. So it becomes very futuristic in the approach. So that tomorrow, if we have something else apart from Paralympics that is added, it still, it is covered. We don't have to come and sit and then amend the law to, in order to have that inclusion. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable um, Mtetwa. So far, uh, let me come back to you, our legal advice. Um, I, Chair, honorable members, um, I, with regards to um, whether we are going to refer to Olympic Committee or not, um, I 
the, this is more a policy decision mm. for the department. Um, I cannot av advise on that type of content and substance. There seems to be some sort of confusion with regards to SASCOC. What are they going to be called? Um, and and as far as law is concerned, um, I can only advise on the legality thereof. Um, uh, a point has been raised with regards to the, the Paralympic. I do note, um, and again, you know, that the department might be best placed, but I do note that E of the cons of, of, of the current definition does refer to national federations catering for athletes with disability. And I think um, with regards to, to that, that is part of the discussion with regards to SASCOC. They are trying to decide whether they have Paralympic in, in their, their actual name. Um, but yes, I, I cannot advise with regards mm -hmm. to that. Um, I will reiterate that it was not a compliance issue that has been raised. Um, the definition as it stands in the Principal Act um, appears sufficient. Thank you. Honorable uh, Van Dekeer's question. Yes, Chair. So um, point number four was not raised as a compliance mm -hmm. issue. It was a drafting technical issue. And I am okay to to omit that change and we leave it in um, and not 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 make that change because it, it has not been raised by WADA or SAIDS or any other stakeholder. Yeah, honorable members. Uh, maybe even our good selves, like the like the the states department and our legal advice, let's refrain to want to change things which were not uh, mentioned that uh, they are making this uh, water bill this bill to be not compliant because if we're starting to do that. Uh, maybe they will be referring back, but as 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 what discussed with the legal advice, uh, she was suggesting, and I was also tabling to you that uh, immediately that we finish all what we are doing now, uh, they must uh, as they've been doing uh, refer to WADA in order that it's either Tuesday or, or Wednesday and uh, adopt a, a clean bill that was shown now that there are no other uh, hiccups that will ca come around. But there's nothing wrong that we must propose. But uh, even myself, I'm feeling that if some other um, uh, wedding or words which were not referred to uh, to us and and to the two states and department, Let, let's not temper. Uh, I'm suspecting it's going to be easy like that in order that they must not have something saying that, why did you temper with this? We didn't say this is not compliant. Uh, I, I don't know how do you feel, honorable members, but this, that's my proposal. Can 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 I give the hands to the uh, honorable members? Honorable Fantik, Honorable uh, uh, Adams. Chairperson, I support the proposal. It's right what you say. We don't need to make changes that's not um, put before us to look at for um, making amendments. We just need to do what they expect us to do, and that is comply with the technical issues that they had. And as um, and therefore, I would also like with SASCOC the name that it should be kept as it is because that was not part of the uh, issues. Thank you, Chair. I Thank support. You. Thank you, Honorable Fante. I support. <laughs> Hon Honorable Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. Sorry. Uh, Chairperson, I totally agree with what you said. Uh, let's keep it as it is. Um, and I agree with you. Thank you. Uh, we do have uh, our content advisors, our researchers, I'm suspecting when we're dealing issues like this, you have a right that if you you feel like contributing, uh, we are not going to limit you. Uh, Arnold? Oh, okay. Uh, anyone from the department who want to say something? Sorry. 
Sumaya. Yes, good morning. Good morning, Chair. And good morning to the members and uh, colleagues. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and thanks for all the work that has gone into finalizing this. We really appreciate it. Just on this last point, uh, Chair, with regard to the the definition of SASCOC, I, I agree fully, uh, Chairperson, that we shouldn't tamper with anything that is uh, you know, going to detract from the main purpose of us giving a getting a compliant bill. But I just want to suggest if at all we really want to be inclusive, you've got under in that clause, the sports confederation, you've got a whole list of organizations. If if at all, if if and I know you've taken a position on that, that yes, everybody wants to I keep it as it, I agree. But if you really want to be inclusive, I would suggest maybe under A, where you've got the Olympic National Federations, perhaps you put the Paralympic National Federations. Just one simple name of uh, uh, collectively of, uh, of the Paralympic uh, organizations. Um, I think that will be then uh, make it more inclusive. Uh, but I, I respect and I, uh, and I agree that, you know, we shouldn't be making major changes uh, to the bull that may not uh, be technical and uh, cause it again to be non-compliant. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, DTG. Uh, Honorable uh, Mteto and Honorable Dennis. Honorable Mteto and Honorable Dennis. Thank you, Chair. Uh, precisely my point that it's not in setting new ideas. It is to say that let us allow the inclusivity even in the future, taking into consideration our political mandate to address the, what, what was in the past wrong, the exclusion of people with disabilities, the exclusion of women, it could be something else tomorrow that comes in and says, instead of saying Olympic National Federations, just say National Federations. So that in the within the umbrella, which is your SASCOC, that is now the South African Sports Confederation, you allow SASCOC, that's that confederation to then structure itself according to what the needs of that time. It could be the confederation. Under the confederation, we know that there is the para, uh, Paralympic uh, branch. We know that there's Olympic branch. We know that there's international, whatever, whatever. They will then they structure themselves according to the needs of the day. We can't be coming back two years later and say, oh, there's a need to focus on women, for instance women in sports. Now we must have a branch of women in sports and then we must come back and sit down and amend the law. Let's allow inclusivity by just simply saying South African Sports Confederation period. And under the Olympic, you say, just say the national federations. Thank you, Honorable um, Mteto, Honorable uh, Van Dijk. Chairperson, um, on the matter of SASCOC, the paraplegic that, that does not stand alone. It's, it is included in the Sports Confederation, the A to G, where it, it, it includes the people with disabilities. So my suggestion would be, I hear what uh, our department says, but according to what we understand, SASCOC is in the process of changing their name. I think when they do that, then they can include the additional uh, component of the name, because as it is, in that uh, description or that uh, definition, it already do add people with disabilities. And they didn't ask us to comply to that. They just ask us to comply to other components, and that is where we need to, do, do, to work on. When SASCOC changes their name, that can be added. Mm. Honourable members, uh, uh, we must agree on, on what we want uh, to do about this bill. 
uh, we nearly not have our flag flying up. And the reasons were uh, given which clauses, what made it not to be compliant. Now, other things which we are seeing, are we not agreeing that we must not temper uh, with anything, even to you, department? As yesterday, we have reflected that uh, if now uh, uh, they, they, they are thinking that uh, come other time, that they want to change Saskok. And the argument was very strongly, even yesterday, that let's not tamper with Saskok because we don't know what animal are they going to come with. Maybe this animal will come without horns. Let's leave that Saskok as it is. So we all agreed because it, it, it was our discussion. And this morning we are saying uh, we must not tamper with whatever that it was not uh, asked us to temper because the compliant uh, issues were presented and the legal gurus of the tree, uh, it's uh, our legal advice, it says legal advice, it's our uh, legal advice. They did come back and they were interacting with the word. I'm, I'm not uh, saying what I'm saying is is cut and dry. But what I, I wanted to say that whatever we are proposing, uh, we must, when we're coming Tuesday on Wednesday, we are giving them again the mandate that we have been taught by themselves that whilst three of them as, as legal advisors of South Africa are sitting down, making sure that uh, the bill is being compliant and coming to the stakeholders who did present uh, their views. We must not forget that there were stakeholders also. And then this committee, we have got a right what we are doing. Uh, we are sharing our views and our views are also important. But uh, let's give it to Arnold now uh, to, to talk to us on what Honorable uh, um, Tetua and Honorable uh, Fandeke is saying, and then finally we are giving to you, and 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 we must respect that uh, you need uh, to redraft, and you need to come together, three of you, and then back to water. We don't want uh, after this good work that uh, we'll be having new uh, errors or to our input. Uh, Fiona, I've seen that you want to say something before you are not. Thank you, Chairperson. I didn't indicate that I needed to say anything, but um, I would just like to perhaps ask Ms. Arnold's opinion on this um, and check if it's not similar, if this situation with the naming of Saskook is not a similar situation to um, having in the Principal Act SRSA, the Sport and Recreation South Africa, I mean, amending that to the department. I mean, so is that not a similar situation here where we're trying to um, avoid in the future, you know, I know this is the debate that is, that's happening. In, in the future, we're avoiding a name change resulting in um, the need to amend legislation again. Thank you, Chairperson. Before I give you an honorable Dennis. No, thank you. Can we just... Yeah. Thank you, Chairperson. No, I think... Um... The department must just explain to us then the word confederation. In my understanding, means the umbrella body that embraces all groups and parties currently. I think if the department can confirm that, then we are, as you propose, chairperson, on the right track or as the legal advice were given. 
uh, not temper with it. But I think that is what the word confederation means. It is in inclusive. The problem has just confirmed that for us. Thank you. Uh, it's more clear uh, when the the bill was having confederation. Uh, do we want to to be specific? Which is nothing wrong. What Honourable Mtetwa is raising, but uh, can I give you the platform to assist us and the department and you say it's, we have got a right uh, to to talk. Uzolega Ujabu, they will look at your hands. Who's now want to be in on the platform? Anon. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honourable Members. Um, the definition SASCOC as opposed to the Sports Confederation, um, utilising the general term Sports Confederation is legally sound. It does cater for um, issues of having to amend the legislation again. Um and the opposing argument is that if we leave it as SASCOC, um, we, it, it is the safer route in the sense that it has not been raised by WADA. There seems to be some sort of confusion. Um, essentially, both options are legally sound. However, I do think we may solicit final input from the department as well as SAIDS to advise on the content specifically with regards to the name of SASCOC or utilizing the general expression sports confederation. Thank you. Uh, did, did you can? Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and thank you to the colleagues, uh, to the members as well, for all of their input. Chairperson, I hear what everyone is saying, and I even look at I look at this bill and look at all the things that are there in terms of all the clauses of, um, you know, the Sports Confederation dealing with the Commonwealth Federations, the All Africa Federations, but they all, if you look within them, it's the same people. It may just be the same people because you have athletics within all Africa, you have athletics within Commonwealth, you have athletics in the Olympics, you have athletics in the Paralympics. So, Chairperson, I want to go back to the Principal Act. And the Principal Act is very clear. It says sports confederation. It means the confederation recognized by the minister in terms of Section 2, which is representative of sport or recreation bodies, in, including Olympic National Federations. And then if you look at Section 2, it says the minister must recognize in writing a sports confederation, which will be the national coordinating macro, macro body for the promotion and development, development of high-performance sport in the Republic. And then it goes on to explain. But I think if you just look at that clause, it's, it's all encompassing, Chairperson. It speaks, yes, SASCOC, it is the promotion and development of high performance sport, but it's the coordinating macro body for the promotion and development of high performance sport. And that's all encompassing. It caters for all the codes of sport. It caters for ability, disability, women, everyone. So I would go with that if we have to make any changes, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, finally, we we'll all agree. Tell us what I will agree upon again. I want that everyone must be clear that uh, we are agreeing on what just all the, the majority of the contributions. And that point, I'm suspecting Honorable Mtetwa can be covered on what just now uh, Uti, Uti DJ Khan is explaining, whilst you have explained even your good self. I want us to uh, pardon this uh, point now, saying that we are fine. Chair, Honourable Members, um, 
I think we are agreeing that we will refer to the Sports Confederation as contemplated in Section 2 of the National Sports and Recreation Act. That act sets out in sufficient detail um, everything with regards to the Sports Confederation. I think let's keep it concise and to the point. Um, thank you. Honourable members, can we allow now or that you must go on uh, to the further presentation of yourself? Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Honourable Members. Um, so that that is clause one. Um, I'd just like to draw, we, we had a discussion with regards to um, inserting additional things and section one, two, um, as contained in uh, clause one, and that is the interpretation provision. That wasn't suggested by WADA or SAIDS. However, the purpose of that provision is to possibly avert a situation that we find ourselves in currently. Um, Zuleka, if you can just scroll a bit further down. Thank you. So, one, two, when interpreting a provision of this Act, any reasonable interpretation which is consistent with the code, and that is the WADA code, must be preferred over any alternative inter interpretation which is inconsistent with the code. Um, WADA has not proposed that. However, um, I'll reiterate the purpose thereof is to possibly avoid a situation that we find ourselves in now. If there should ever be a question, um, hopefully Section 1, 2 would... Um, um, assist us and go a long way in avoiding an allegation of non-compliance again. Um, thank you. Honourable members. Uh, can can I raise a further question? Uh, we have just taken a decision that anything which was not presented to 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 say department uh, by water um, and by uh, maybe the the stakeholders. Uh, do you want to tell us that you can temper with other clauses uh, out of what we've just agreed upon? And and what uh, what are motivations on that? Uh, Honourable members, when I've, I was uh, ma making a summary, I was saying anything that uh, we are inserting or making changes, uh, we we are proposing as this committee that come uh, today, Monday, Tuesday, three of you, uh, you must present what you inserted, which was not raised by water uh, to themselves in order that we must not come back, and I'm I'm suspecting that even the uh, the stakeholders, especially in Section 17, they did put so many things, and then we allow that it must be uh, inserted. So uh, if we are allowing such things, uh, I'm 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 proposing that uh, if three. Uh, Gurus call lawyers are uh, seeing that uh, to insert this section, this clause number two, was in in clause seventeen, which was the D clause, which was not compliant, and so many input from uh, the stakeholders was was put on. Uh, you'll assist us not to come back 
and cheap and changing uh, come Wednesday. Uh, um, th that's my 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 main worry, and then I'm proposing that uh, we are relying to you. So far, you have been doing well, but can I give it to the honourable members, honourable Fandek? Chairperson, I agree with you. This exercise is to comply with what the water code. So I'm not sure if we need to say that. Uh, the interpretation should be according to the water code. That is what we're doing here. Um, and that code will be the guiding code. So, yeah, that's just... Thank you, Honourable Fandek. Honourable uh, uh, Zondi, Honourable uh, Mteto. Yeah, sure. I, I, I think we, 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 we are all in agreement uh, 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 that... Uh, if we change so many things uh, in a bill that you are amending, it is because you want to meet uh, certain requirements. And this bill, we are amending this bill because what I said, it's not compliant with the with the, with, with, with the federation. But changing many things tactically will 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 open can of firms. And we don't want that. Uh, and you were correct to say there are clause that we that 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 water might say. Why did you change this? Because we said this is what unless Unless water was not explicit in 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 what the 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 compliant means when they want us to 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 change the to amend the bill, but if they were explicit on this or on the compliance and the clauses, I I will say I I don't want to repeat what you said, but. We should stick to what Wada uh, uh, requested us to do, and uh, Honorable Fantek uh, was correct also uh, to uh, so to 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 raise that. Other than that, chair, uh, so we, we, we can let them, them soon, and uh, we are not going. We don't want to go there because uh, it will come back to us, and by then we will not be around. Unfortunately, thanks. Honourable members, I'm going to give it to Honourable Mtedwa. Uh, I'm suspecting we we took it very light uh, this day. Uh, uh, we must not forget that there are candidates who are waiting for us. Uh, this is 10 o'clock, uh, but I'm not saying uh, we must forget that. Uh, we are finishing this business today, which is a very important, but we've got another agenda that we must with immediate effect. If we're late, we must at least quarter past 10. We must start. Uh, Honorable Mchatu. Thank you, Chair. Thank God that WADA made the comments it made about our bill. It is a South African bill that we are dealing with that must govern the sports in South Africa, not to govern WADA. It's an opportunity for me to say, let us not lose this opportunity of making a better future for the sports in our country by saying, oh, it is only this portion that was raised by WADA. If we are getting an opportunity to change and better our bill, I thought it would be because there are costs attached to this. If we don't take the advantage of this opportunity to amend and make better of it, next year or two years later, people will be sitting again looking at the same bill at the same cost or even higher cost. But this is just for noting. I'm not saying that we should change. I will rest my case. What I know in law is that whatever the law leaves or whatever the law is silent on, people take advantage of that. That is why many companies are run by lawyers because they are able to manipulate the situation. They see that there is a 
the law is silent on a particular thing, so it is subject to anybody's interpretation. You will not say this interpretation is wrong because the law is silent. And that's all I was saying, that if we have the opportunity to say, I made an example of LGBTI. It started as LGB. Today it's LGBTI. Are you going to keep on changing? Because now you mentioned Olympics. But in the definition, you mentioning Olympics in the definition of what the confederation is. Unfortunately, that's what it's going to be until if something else pops up that relates to women, that relates to children, you will have to come and amend it so that it then says the definition. I was just saying on the definition, let us not, we're not going to be punished for not mentioning Olympics in the definition. The Olympics word was an insertion of us giving ourselves a name called Saskok. We are not we're not we're not given that name as a prescription that we should use this name. We came up with that name. So there's nothing wrong with us omitting that Olympic so that it allows any insertion in the future. But for noting, Chair, I rest my case. I'm not challenging. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Saints, I thank you, Honorable Mkato. Um, but uh, I would I would love that members when we pass in 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 an issue which we deliberated and then we took an a decision. You must not go back as if we didn't uh, take a decision. Uh, we, we we dealt with this the name of confederation and uh, the DDG can explain and Arnold uh, explained and we all we were all said as a committee. Okay. We are agreeing upon that, uh, but now uh, on, on this one, Honorable Honorable uh, Van Dijk, Honorable uh, Zondi, Honorable Joseph, and and Honorable Mteto, uh, we are saying that if they are thinking that whatever they have proposed, I'm suspecting they are covering you. Uh, they are thinking that it cannot uh, make it uh, that uh, again saying that it, it's not compliant. Uh, we 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 are saying what they are proposing in in section two. If they are thinking that by um, improving, as we are saying, it's going to be okay with the weather. As this committee. We, uh, until the 22nd of May will be still a committee. And as as we are going to be called, um, but the only thing, uh, there are time frames of this water. Uh, we are not governed by water, but uh, we we affiliated to the international bodies. Uh, they they nearly made us not to have our South African flag fly, but we are not undermining any contribution, but it m must be within uh, uh, on what uh, we were asked. But as we are seeing that even the, the stakeholders, they were having their input, uh, different inputs, and as committee, we have our views, which are very important, but we are saying that taking views uh, uh, outside the compliant issue, uh, they must not make that water have any other issue again. Uh, I'm suspecting by, by saying that, can we give it to uh, what states, which is uh, they are on the platform states, Morning, Chair. Morning, Honourable Members. Um, to address the insertion of, um, well, the amendment of sports, insertion of the word sports confederation and um, Article uh, 2, um, when interpreting a provision of this Act, any reasonable interpreta interpretation which is consistent with the Code, must be preferred over alternative interpretation, which is inconsistent with the code. I would just like to inform you that there was a draft that we provided uh, WADA last week, Friday, 
and they provided their feedback to the working document on the 12th of March. WADA did not um, flag or take any issue to those um, insertions or amendments. I'm I'm hoping that that um, eases everyone's mind minds with regards to those amendments. Um, uh, I uh, from Sage's side, I think it's a very uh, clever insertion provided by uh, Ms. Arnold's with regards to um, interpretation um, being consistent with the code in the event there is a misinterpretation at any point in time in the future. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Wafika. Uh, Ms. Arnold. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Honourable Members. Um, the purpose of Section 1-2 is, like I said previously, to avoid a situation that we find ourselves in um, currently. It's just to clarify that um, the interpretation of our SAIDS Act is to be aligned with that of the code so that there can never be any confusion. Um, if, for example, one of the definitions and and WADA comes to us five years later and they, and they say, oh, your definition is missing, um, and the members have seen your definition is missing an S, for example, and it's thus non-compliant because we need to remember that the code um, changes. Um, what are SAID's rules changes on a continuous basis. Um, so if ever we, we have a situation such as that, then um, Section 1-2 is aimed to assist us in interpreting going forward. Thank you. Honourable members, uh, Honourable Judge. Thank you, Chair. Uh, personally, I do not have any any problem with the insertion on clause two, because those are currently our laws in terms of 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 um, accountability. It ensures us that there would be accountability. In terms of the insertion of South Africa, I do not have any problem because Republic is not the Republic of South Africa. It can be Republic of anything. So it is good to clarify it and insert South Africa. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, Honorable uh, Funding. Chairperson, I do accept that explanation, and especially as she um, also explained that the code is changing continuously. It makes sense. Can we thank you, honourable members? Uh, Arnold? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, honourable members. We shall retain it. And as Madam Chair has indicated, um, and Wafika is online, we um, Wafika will be for one last time um, sending the work, this working document, and she will be sending it to WADA to solicit final inputs because we also have we also need to complete our work as parliament um, and Wafika will be undertaking that and she will indicate to them the urgency as well as the fact that um, this is sort of a last bite at the apple. Thank you. Um, perhaps Wafika can just confirm. Thank you, honourable members. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, thank you, Ms. Arnold. Yes, I do confirm. Um, it would be in everyone's best interest. Um, the final version is sent to WADA. Um, we we ideally do not want them to be sending any proposed amendments um, while the bill uh, while the bill is with the NCOP. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Honourable Members. We now proceed to Clause 2. Um, clause 2 is an amendment to Section 2. Um, point number one is just a technical error that was in the introduced bill. Um, that word and needs to be there. That's grammatical, purely grammatical. Um, and then point number two, it's just to refer to the entity that is established in terms of the Public Finance Management Act. And as the Honourable Member has correctly indicated, 
implemented the Public Finance Management Act in the Republic of South Africa is our law which regulates accountability. Um, and when when I'm when I refer to the entity, I'm talking about um, SAIDS, the institute. Um, point number three, um, this was a submission or a proposal by WADA that we refer to the Republic of South Africa. Um, thank you. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Clause three. Uh, clause three is an amendment to section section 10 of the Principal Act. And there's a proposal to amend paragraph D. Um, and WADA and SAIDS has explained to us that paragraph D, uh, the way it currently appears in the introduced um, bill, creates the impression that athletes may obtain advance notice prior to testing. And this is, in fact, not the case. And this proposal has been submitted by WADA, and we have now um, captured it in this A list. And I'll just remind members that Section 10 does provide for the objectives of the Institute. So one of the objectives of the Institute is to promote and ensure the adoption of a centralized doping control program, which focuses on implementing intelligent testing, both in and out of competition on athletes over whom it has authority. Um, you can scroll down, Zuleika, thank you. Um, so point number three. Point number three is um, this is then a consequential amendment because we are now referring to the Sports Confederation. Um, honorable members, Madam Chair, you will remember that we have now redefined Sports Confederation and we've made a cross-reference to um, the National Sport and Recreation Act, but that point number three is a consequential amendment, which is necessary as we are no longer referring to SASCOC. Thank you. We're still uh, together so far. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honourable Members. Um, clause 4. Clause 4 is a proposed amendment to Section 11 of the Principal Act. Um, and I'll just draw members' attention. Uh, we had uh, quite a bit of a discussion with regards to paragraph L, Section 11 to um, L of the introduced bill, and that is with regards to registered testing pool. But um, last night, I, I think that confusion has been cleared. Um, so in our A list, um, uh, members will see on point two, we say on page four from line nine to omit paragraph C and to substitute. Um, so, so this is very technical. And if members can bear with me, in the introduced bill, we start speaking, we paragraph C, um, and this is clause four. We say by the substitution for paragraph L. So members will recall we are no longer amending paragraph L. It is okay as it is in the principal act as explained by WADA. So paragraph C now instead amends paragraph M of section 11. And the amendment to section 11 is accordingly to refer to testing pools as WADA has indicated to us and SAIDS has confirmed that it is testing pools in the plural and not just one testing pool. Um, point number three, this has been proposed by WADA that um, after the, the the use of the word therapeutic exemption that we include in brackets TUE and TUE is understand with, understood in the sector to mean therapeutic use exemption. Um, Point number four, similarly, WADA, um, and as confirmed by SAIDS, has proposed that we do not refer to Therapeutic Use Exemption Committee in small letters. Instead, we refer to Therapeutic Use Exemption Committee in capital letters. And as members can see, some of these things are very, very technical, but they have been proposed by WADA and commented on by WADA. Um, point number five, 
Again, this has been a proposal that has been brought forth by WADA and SAIDS. They have requested that we do not refer to exemption in the singular, but instead that we refer to exemptions in the plural. Again, here I'm referring to the therapeutic use exemptions that may be granted. And then lastly, point number six, um, just to insert again after the word th words therapeutic use exemption um, in brackets T-U-E. Uh, thank you. That's what uh, you explained to us yesterday. Are we still uh, on agreement, honorable members? Still. Yeah, they are nodding. Thank you. Pass on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Honourable Members. We now um, approach Clause 6, and Clause 6 um, contains the, the the bulk of the amendment, and this regards um, the Appeal Board um, and this version, and I think I will just read it to the committee um, for the purposes of the record, as we've discussed it, but we We've not yet seen it in words. Um, and I'll just remind the committee that WADA's and SAID's complaint as per the commission, as per the submissions, was that um, the introduced bill does not um, make a differentiation or does not um, uphold the concept of institutional independence, as well as the fact that Section 17, as contained in the introduced bill, has too many administrative provisions which should instead be contained in SAIDS's rules. And many of this, these things are indeed contained in SAIDS's rules or the code. Um, so section section 17 one is now entitled results management and a results management um, encompasses two steps. It's first um, a preliminary um, first instance hearing, which is the independent doping hearing panel. So section 17 one opens and it explains that the results management shall be the responsibility of and shall be governed by the procedural rules and anti-doping rules of the Institute aligned with the principles of the code and relevant international standards. Um, this, the, the purpose of section one is to, to, to confirm that IDHP, um, you, the detail thereof, um, the administrative steps, what kind of matters can be brought um, are to be found in the Institute in SAID's anti-doping rules as well as the code. Um, Section 2A, the proposed Section 17-2A provides that the Institute shall establish a first instance hearing panel named the Independent Doping Hearing Panel, which has jurisdiction in the first instance to year and determine whether an athlete or other person subject to the anti-doping rules of the Institute has committed an anti-doping rule violation and, even, and if applicable to impose relevant consequences. Proposed Section 17.3a goes on to speak about the Anti-Doping Appeal Board, um, which has been defined in our bill. There is hereby established an, an independent board, which shall be known as the Anti-Doping Appeal Board. The Minister shall appoint an appeal board which shall consist of not fewer than nine persons possessing special knowledge and expertise relevant to anti-doping and dispute resolution. The members of the appeal board are appointed for a period of five years and are eligible for reappointment. Paragraph D, the appeal board must consist of no fewer than four practicing attorneys or advocates, two sports medical physicians and two sports administrators. Um, paragraph F, and I think there is a, a typographical error. It's supposed to be paragraph E. So section 17, um, 3E, the minister may terminate the appointment of an appeal board member for serious misconduct, incapacity or incompetence. Um, section 17, 4. A party to an appeal shall be entitled to be represented by a person of his or her own choice. Um, and then Section 17.5 provides that the procedure to be followed in connection with appeals shall be determined by the Appeals Board. And proposed Section 17.6 provides that appeals involving international level athletes shall be heard by the Court of Arbitration for Sports, CAS, in accordance with the relevant provisions of the Code. Um, 
Honourable Members, Madam Chair, as Wafika has indicated, she will be um, discussing the this proposed Section 17 with WADA. My understanding from Wafika is that she has um, shown them um, a working draft of the Section 17, and they appear to have no issue with it. Um, she will, however, um, check with them um, because as indicated we as the as parliament as the national assembly as this portfolio committee we also need to complete our work um so 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 there is a certain amount of urgency with regards to this um i i would just pause to mention that um in a previous draft i had seen that uh what i had raised an issue. Um, I'm uncertain whether it was just a comment or a proposal um, on se on on section 17.4 as it appears now with regards to a party to an appeal being entitled to be represented by a person of their own choice. Um, if I understand what is input correctly, it was simply that um, that detail is already contained in SAID's rules. But like I've indicated, um, they seemed at present not to have an issue with it. However, um, um, we, Wafika, will be in discussions with WADA on an extremely urgent basis. Um, that is Section 17, titled Result Management. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Honourable Members. Thank you, Honourable Members. Uh, I'm suspecting yesterday uh, with a uh, discuss uh, and Section 17, it was the the section where we were told that there was no compliant in our bill, and especially the the in our oral submission, uh, so many instructions have been made. Uh, here it is now, the product of all these days and until today. Honorable members, are you are we in agreement of this section seventeen? Mm -hmm. And the the I'm still I'm still on the floor. Are we in agreement in whilst we're hearing that uh, the the states will be meeting uh, this uh, people of Iwada uh, as they've been doing like that. Uh, honorable Do, Honorable um, Mteta, Honorable Mbangan uh, and Sond, Honorable Smi, Swas Kosh. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm just checking. It says um the the the, um, the minister will appoint. It, uh, it talks about nine members of the board. Let me say the the ninth one died. After how long will the minister replace that board member? Thanks, chair. Thank you, honourable Sibia, honourable Ted. Thanks, Chair. I also wanted to find out uh, the term. How long will the term of the the board be? Unless I missed that. that. But also, um, how do we prevent a situation where the minister or minister can have a a particular uh, a particular problem with an individual outside? And uh, he then uses his power because it doesn't say that the minister will appoint in collaboration with or, you know, the balance of power. Uh, if the minister has got so much power to appoint and, 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 and decide whenever that he wants to take somebody out, wouldn't that be abused? That power be abused? Um, I would have thought that it would be easier where you say the committee and you know, 
there will be a process where the committee will appoint or where the committee will recommend and then the minister endorses the, the names that have been so that we, we guard against people being pitched out of certain entities because they are not in good books with certain individuals. Thanks, Chair. Honorable Zondi, Honorable Adams. Yeah, Chair. Honorable Svea triggered another question, but I was not uh, going to ask. Uh, uh, but let me say it because I'm, I'm on it for. If the minister uh, meets the requirements uh, of the of the of the legal framework and uh, and the timeline of that particular uh, uh, term of a board, I think there is no 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 problem uh, with, with with that. I think I we are we are we are still in agreement. I don't have a a, 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 a quick question. Thank you, Honorable Zondi. Honorable Adam. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, on the explanation of 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 um the appointment of the of the uh, appointment of the minister to a board. Um, my question will be, due to the appointment of, of, of the board, will it be advertised? Will there be an interviews or what processes will be followed? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Adams. Arnold, I don't want to say anything. Um, Matt. Madam Chair, Honourable Members, with regards to the, I'll just firstly touch on with regards to the appointment of the board members um, by the Minister. Um, section 17, um, 3, paragraph C does provide that the members of the appeal board are appointed for a period of five years and are eligible for reappointment. Um, with regards to having other persons or other bodies involved in the appointment of the appeal board members, um, and, and the introduced bill actually refers to um, the appointment of appeal board members on recommendation by the institute, having the institute involved. And um, WADA has come back and explicitly indicated that we require institutional independence of this appeal board. Um, the appeal board is appointed by the minister. The appeal board will thereafter um, determine its own um, um, procedure, the procedure, and this is section 17.5, the procedure to be followed in connection with appeals shall be determined by the appeals board. Um, the point the, the point that WADA is um, really emphasizing is that they require institutional independence with regards to the appeal board, and this is a compliance issue with regards to the code, and this aligns itself with the wording of SAIDS's rules as well. Um, with regards to um, whether there will be advertisements or how the process will happen, um, that detail I don't think can find its way into this bill because another complaint that WADA has made, and they haven't made it specifically with regards to advertisement, but the complaint is that we should avoid heavy administrative provisions in this bill. Um, such type of things are to, to find their way into say as rules, um, and I think it's much easier for states to amend their rules than it is for us to amend our legislation. Um, as to who is appointed and whether the and, and a scenario where perhaps the minister abuses its power or their power. Um, I, I would think that on appointment, there would be sort of terms and conditions. Um, so appeal board member, you are appointed for a period of five years. If you do X, Y, and Z, you um, would lose your appointment, um, obviously ensuring fairness and such type of things. But again, um, as what has indicated to us, heavy administrative procedural provisions should not um, preferably find its way into um, this 
piece of legislation. Um, thank you, honorable members. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so, so much. Uh, the time frame is five years. The issue of the minister does have ministers do sometimes they do have those powers and within this uh, the the principal bill there's nothing say that minister cannot do what uh, the the this bill is saying so uh, can can members confirm that uh, now we are saying that the bill must go to a state's department, a parliament of South Africa, and they must take it to WADA. Uh, can can we can I see members agreeing upon that? Honorable Honorable Ngosi, Chief. <laughs> Thank you, uh, I, I, I support that uh, the bill must go, go to the parliament. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Honorable Member. Honorable, uh, Honorable Adams. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Chair. Um, I second on the proposal. Thank you. We also support you. Um, can we finish uh, the remain, remain clauses? Thank you. One was a very, very close that everyone coming to e, e oral a submission and written submission, it was, uh, uh, I can say the D a clause. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Honourable Members. Um, we now proceed to Clause 7. And Clause 7 is an amendment of Section 17A um, of our introduced um, bill as contained in the Principal Act. Um, point number one, that is a consequential amendment. Um, as members would recall, we are now utilizing the expression sports confederation. Um, point number two, um, so on page five in line 46 to omit as it deems fit and to substitute within a fair, transparent, just and, in and equitable manner. Um, honorable members will recall that bodybuilding South Africa had um, in, in their submission, they had explained that the department um, on the written recommendation of um, SASCOC, but we, we won't be referring to SASCOC, on the written recommendation of the Sports um, Confederation, may cause an investigation to be conducted as it deems fit. And Bodybuilding South Africa has explained that um, as it deems fit is a very subjective concept because it would be as SASCOC deems fit. And they have proposed that instead of referring to as it deems fit, we refer to... Um, in a fair, so the investigation conducted by um, by by the department would be in it would be in a fair, transparent, just, and equitable manner. Um, point number three is a consequential amendment, and that is our um, use of the expression "sports confederation" as opposed to "SASCOC." And point number four, this is another submission by Bodybuilding South Africa. They have explained that when there is an identification of non-compliance by the department, that prior to doing so, that there first needs to be a finding of non-compliance. So um, point number four seeks to incorporate that suggestion. So um, I would just read what it would then read if this amendment is taken on board. The department must, after consultation with the Institute and SASCOC, um, as we, we know it's not SASCOC, the Sports Confederation, um, and after the department has 
as as found um, subsequent to the investigation referred to in subsection one, um, non-compliant National Sports Federation, then it may take the action which it which is authorized to take in terms of the Principal Act. So bodybuilding submission essentially turns on um, requiring that investigations be fair, transparent, just, and equitable, and that prior to a finding of non um, compliance, uh, rather that we first need a finding of non-compliance before um, anybody can be found, be, before there can be action that is taken as authorized by um, our Principal Act. Uh, thank you. That is Clause 7 of our introduced bill. Uh, thank you so much, Honourable Members. Uh, we manage as this committee... <laughs> That yesterday we were arguing about the ins of removing of Saskok and inserting whatever. Are we not happy now with the this clause clause seven? Uh, Honorable Mchatu? No, I'm happy, Chair, but I think it is the issue of consistency that in the first part where we we suggested that it is South African Sports Confederation, not just Sports Confederation. This is just an issue of technicality. Just like on your TUE, you can put next to Sports uh, South African Sports Confederation and you can put probably in brackets SASC so that when you continuously use, you want to use the short, uh, I don't know how to call it, but you use SASC instead of Sports Confederation because Sports Confederation is not South African Sports Confederation. The consistency in law, Chairperson. There's nothing that changes. It's just that she has used, in the first part, she has used South African. We said it is South African Sports Confederation instead of SASCOC. Okay. But when you go down to the document, it keeps on saying Sports Confederation, Sports Confederation. Thanks, Chair. I don't want to respond. Uh, let's, let's give it to the legal advice. Uh, uh, we can't uh, respond to each other. We've got uh, the, the lawyers here. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the definition um, of sports confederation, um, we are referring um, to the sports confederation, means the sports confederation as contemplated in section two of the National Sport and Recreation Act. And it is section two of the National Sport and Recreation Act as explained by the department that gives all the detail with regards to the sports confederation, the fact that it is um, appointed or nominated by the minister. Um, including the bracket SASC, um, I would advise to rather err uh, on the side of caution with regards to that because um, that definition is contained or rather it is it is encompassed in the National Sport and Recreation Act. And the National Sport and Recreation Act, so our act is making a cross of reference to the National Sports and Recreation Act. And that act says sports confederation means the confederation recognized, sorry, it's recognized by the minister, not determined, means the confederation recognized by the minister in terms of section two, which is a representative of sport or recreation bodies, including Olympic national federations. So um, our act will simply make a cross reference to um, the National Sports and Recreation Act without having to um, redefine anything, without having to use too many words, we will then be concise and to the point, and it will um, eliminate any uncertainty or vagueness um, that is tending to crop up with regards to this definition of SASCOC versus Sports Confederation. Um, thank you. Uh, we are talking uh, with my colleague here. Uh, he, he nodded immediately that 
uh, you explained, and I wanted then to explain what she is explain, but I was aware that she, he was going to say, you are not a legal advisor. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Honorable Mtetwa. Uh, you can pass it. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mtetwa, for, um, for indulging me. Um, so our next clause um, is Clause 8. Um, if, if members will allow me just to, to, to go through the entire document, because the rest, the, the rest of the clauses are purely... Um, technical consequential amendments. So um, clause eight, clause eight of our introduced bill um, contains the long title of the principal act. And um, that proposal there is just, so point number one on page six in line 13 to omit appeals and to substitute result management. That is purely consequential as members will recall, we are not just referring to appeals, we are referring to result management and that is encompassed under section 17. Um, the next clause, and this is a new clause, however, this is also purely a consequential amendment, um, and this is an amendment to the arrangement of sections in our um, in our principal act. So members would see at, at paragraph A there, so the arrangement of sections of the principal act is hereby amended. And um, point number one, so it's not just definitions, it's definitions and interpretation. Um, number B, the deletions of items 11A to 11C, that is deleted in our introduced bill. There is no issue therewith. It's however just to make sure that our arrangement of sections is congruent to what the work that we have um, done here as a committee. And then number C, we're not just dealing with appeals, we are dealing with results management. So that is purely consequential um, technical amendments. And it's just to keep up with the development that have occurred as we have uh, discussed and deliberated and agreed upon. Um, and then uh, the new clause, and that is number 10, the principal act is hereby amended by the substitution of the expression SASCO wherever it occurs with the expression the sports confederation. I think there's just a, a technical mistake there, grammatical error. Wherever it occurs with the expression sports confederation, um, as members um Recall, we, we've now settled the definition of sports confederation, and that's just to indicate that in the Principal Act, um, the we, we no longer refer to SASCOC, we refer to the sports confederation, which we have now defined. And then the very last new clause there is an amendment to the long title of our bill. Um, and I think this point was raised in yesterday's deliberations. Our long title currently just says to amend the South African Institute for Drug-Free Sport Act so as to delete, amend, and insert certain definitions to provide for consequential amendments in certain provisions and provide for matters connected therewith. While our current long title is sufficient of our bill, um, it doesn't encompass all the other changes. For example, the proposal here is to, to say to amend the South African Institute for Drug Free Sports Act so as to delete, amend, and in certain, and insert certain definitions. Um, to provide for consequential amendments in certain provisions to clarify that the Institute is a public entity and is the national anti-doping organization in the Republic, to provide for results management, to provide that investigations by the department must be conducted in a manner that is fair, transparent, just, and equitable, that punitive measures may only be imposed by the department after a finding of non-compliance, and to provide for matters connected therewith. Um, again, as I've indicated, the purpose of that amendment as contained in our A-list is simply to um, just indicate in summary form what this bill all deals with. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Honourable Members. That concludes uh, our A-list. Honourable Members, uh, do you want to say something on the last presentation of, uh, of our last bill? Uh, are you agreeing that it must go to be refined in order that uh, come Tuesday or Wednesday 
uh, it must come back to us. Uh, I, Honorable Mchato, Honorable Zondi. I move that it must go. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable, Honorable, Honorable Zondi. Second, that chair. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Arnold. I'm, I'm, I'm aware that uh, you have seen that it was not just an easy uh, committee. They don't want just to agree, agree, agree. Um, but uh, you have done a good work with uh, uh, this uh, committee of ours, Zolega, and all who were behind uh, assisting that we must come to this point and uh, not yet to the end. We've taken the time of the next uh, uh, people who are waiting for us since 10 o'clock, but uh, fortunately, uh, everyone, because this is it's live, they are saying that uh, we're not disrespecting themselves, uh, we're finalizing, hoping for the best. Uh, it's not yet done until it's done. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, young uh, woman. You strike a woman, you strike a rock, yes. Um, with this, let's adjourn uh, and then stretch our, our legs in order that the next a uh, not easy item also is coming. Uh, for now, we are breaking. I thank you. Let's, let's take 10 minutes. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, members. Goodbye. Oh, forgotten. Bye, bye, TTG. Bye, Sait. Ah, Shem, you are not in front of me. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Chair. Chair thanks Thank so you. much. All the best. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Nice to have been part. Okay. Thank you for allowing us to be part of this um, process. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.
Uh, honorable members, can I take this opportunity uh, on behalf of you, good selves, leadership of this committee, which is honorable members, uh, to apologize uh, to the first uh, candidate of ours, Doctor, uh, we started uh, at nine o'clock. We were finalizing some sort of the work of this committee. Maybe we uh, underestimate uh, uh, the the question of time. Uh, we don't want that. Next time we will be saying that hey, these honourable members, uh, they are still. Uh, they don't keep time. Uh, we were trying our best. Uh, it's not uh, a secret. We were dealing with a, a very uh, crucial bill, which which that bill is having time frames. Being a South African doctor, you were aware that uh, the bill, which was nearly put us uh, in a crisis that we must not fly our flag. Uh, we are apologizing. Uh, our staff are telling us that you were there since nine o'clock. Is that nine o'clock that we were starting uh, that um, session of uh, looking at that bill? Uh, you, I do welcome on behalf of the committee members. Uh, we have committee members here uh, we have Honorable uh, uh, Adams uh, with us. Can just raise your hand, Honorable Adams. Uh, she's the member of this committee. We have Honorable Van Dijk, who's a member of this committee. We have Honorable Joseph, member of this committee. We have Honorable um, Tetua, member of this committee. We have Honorable Sibia, member of this committee. Uh, we have Honorable Zondi, member of this committee. Your hands, uh, Honorable Zondi. Uh, we have Honorable uh, Lutuli, uh, who's our chief. We are blessed that in this committee, we also have a chief. And then uh, we have staff of parliament. Uh, there are those two who are sitting with me, and there are those others uh, who are sitting on my left-hand side. They are our support staff. We cannot do these interviews without them preparing uh, this work. Uh, can now tell you why are we here. Uh, uh, in December 2023, the Minister of Sport and Arts and Culture issued a call on the public to nominate individual that would serve on the Pen South African Language Board. Uh, we call it PENSLAB. The call was regulated by the provision of Act uh, 859 of 1995. Thereafter, a selection process identified 25 nominees uh, out of the list of so many. I've forgotten how, how many were you. Um, and then uh, the selection process where we identified 25 nominees to be shortlisted for interviews to make recommendations to the minister. It must be noted that section five of the act indicates that a minimum of 11 and a maximum of 15 people must constitute this board. And to this end, uh, the interviews that we are conducting will shortlist no more than 20 candidates that will recommend to the minister for appointment. As the act detects nominees and interviews, uh, interviewers to serve in Panzler board must possess an array of expertise, including language, legal, human resources, and financial skills. 
These are necessary skills that will enable PenSlab to achieve its ultimate strategic objective of promoting a multilingualism and social cohesion. To conclude, uh, I congratulate you for having shortlisted for these interviews and hope that you will uh, convince the panel that you are the right candidate for Penslab Board. Also, I extend my best wishes to the members of the Portfolio Committee that are conducting these interviews. I trust that we will find the best candidate uh, or best candidates from amongst the shortlisted candidates and amongst the shortlisted nominees. I thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Doctor. Uh -huh. Now I'm, I'm taking this opportunity to give it to uh, the first uh, member. Uh, oh, I've forgotten. Can you introduce yourself, Doctor? I nearly forget that. I thank you. Doc? Doc Oden? Which I've been seeing that Doc is online, but uh, he must be called by phone, maybe. Doc? Dr. Janji? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dog will be speaking English and Kosa. So we have got interpreters. Now, go, Mr. Kuha. For that, we does lay on. I be sir, in the Amanian. We have got Mr. Bohad, Bohad, Kohada who's our interpreter, because Udoctor is going to use English and Kosa. Uh, we've got a challenge, she can't get in. Oh yes, I want to open the bridge. I look at the tape, I love the connection to the camera.
Doc, Dr. Janji, Dr. Janji. Yes, I do. Yes, honorable. Hello. 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 Yes, we we do see you, Doc. We we do see you, Doc. But you can hear me now. Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. 
Uh, is it okay on the side? I can hear you. Okay, well, uh, hello. Yes, doc. Please listen now. The 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 member is going to ask a question to you. Please listen very careful. Please listen very careful. Good day, doc. Good day, doc. Good boy. How are you, sir? I'm 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 well. And how are you over there? Well, I can't complain. I lost the luxury when I joined the presidential hotline. So I can't <laughs> complain anymore. <laughs> um, Thank you. Let me just cut it to the chase. Um, congratulations for being selected, first and foremost. Um, Thank you. I just want to know your understanding of linguistic human rights and its linkage to the linguistic diversity and multilingualism. Why would it be important for you to argue for multilingualism in SA? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the question is, is scientific in nature. I thank you very much. Look, the evolution of South Africa it has never stand. It kept on growing. <clears throat> Number one, because of the, 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 the mixed marriages, we have developed the number of languages in South Africa. What I understand, South Africa has given birth to a different number of languages which need to be respected in terms of uh, uh, con of the constitution. All those languages that people that are residing in South Africa, they need to be respected. They need to be protected by PESA. They need to be given a sense of understanding of each other because they are sharing <clears throat> the same land same wealth. Now, that is where the birth of multilingualism comes in to say now, one nation, many languages. Though there's one nation and many languages, it is each one has to know the rights of the language. The coherence that grips everything together is to say now, we're living in one land, but we need to uplift the, especially the languages in which there were disadvantaged in the previous era to uplift them and restore confidence for people of the minorities whose language did not have the peak of, 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 of the mountain, of the mountain. That is to say, again, again, in legal terms, these languages need to be protected and given enough space, not to say they need to be taken above the other language we've given, we been given a chance. No, it means now we check the language together. Now, when we, when we reach the constitution, the constitution in terms of monetary, it is registered in section C to say, languages need to be protected language need to be in a safe space and languages need to especially languages that are inherited we need to respect the people of the same languages thank you thank you doc honorable members thank you doc uh, doctor we have forgotten because we were having a challenge we, we, the first point, we were supposed to give you a chance to introduce yourself. Can you tell <coughs> us about yourself? Thank you. And after that, uh, I'll give Honorable Zondi to do a follow-up question. Uh, thank you, Doc. My, my visionary name is Vuyong. I, I started to join the Department of Education in 1990 of which is I was giving languages and uh, different uh, subjects like um, natural sciences. 
my experience with the uh, education, I've got 33, 34 years. Then I've moved uh, on the other side. Though I was in the Department of Education, I was with the union. I started with the union uh, that is SATU. I've moved to PSA. From PSA, I've moved to a new union called um, <clears throat> Public Service and Commercial Union which is a union that is diverted to commercial and public. And the uh, other thing in terms of my qualifications, I have done um, education. Thereafter, I furthered my studies for a BA. From, um, after I've got the, <clears throat> the, the diploma in teaching, I got for BA, honors, master's, and doctoral degree in the University of um, CUT in the in the free state. Though I found that was not enough, I went to the issue. Or I, I did labor with the University of the Free State. What what my mission was? I played a role in um, in in different situations. In the community, I was playing the role <clears throat> of being a member that protects the community in our communities. Those forum societies. Then I move, I work for the society in terms of labor. Then I've worked for the society in terms of education. From there, I have uh, an opportunity where I had to move and being a member of the legal uh, <clears throat> committee and governance in, um, in an in, in, um, <clears throat> Government Employee Pension Fund, which I was there for a period of four years. I was not sharing in that committee alone. I was also sharing in the Committee of Social and Ethics, which was a very interesting uh, committee in terms of contextualizing uh, South Africa. Then when I Honorable members, seemingly has got a, a network problem. Uh, dog. But so far, uh, we had uh, your role in so many things as written in your in your CV. Can honorable members uh, go to the what you call? follow-up question because also in our files uh, we do have uh, his CV. Honorable Zon, can you try to ask a follow-up question? Maybe uh, he is going to hear you, but we are depending. Uh, Dr. Janji? Dr. Janji? Dr. Janji? I can hear. Okay. Uh, no, thank you so much. We'll we'll uh, further look at your CV. Uh, can you now listen for a follow up question, please, Doc? Yeah. Uh, honorable, so, honorable Zond, uh, please listen to the follow up question. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good good day, Honorable uh, 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 Mister uh, uh, Chang. That uh, and, and and thank you for your 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 response to the first question. My uh, follow up a uh, a question on the first question will be: in a cultural diversity of our country, how is previously disadvantaged child from Guanongoma is going to benefit? from the programs of this entity, in your view? Thank you very much. <clears throat> in my view, as long as children of Kwa Nongoma, we don't work very close that we take the project to the people of Nongoma so that to grow. 
not to centralize the project because of not looking at the remote area. Then for me, for people of Nongoma, the project must go and stay and grow with them so that they can grow with the project and grow with the understanding in terms of, uh, of, of, of responding to the question. But as long as we have distanced ourselves, we're sending messages via media, via newspaper, we are not sorting out the problem of the people of Kwanongo. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, doctor, can we take uh, on behalf of these members of committee which are, are here today uh, that uh, we are still going to get some other questions from another member now. Uh, the, the Honorable Member is Honorable Adams. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And good morning to uh, Mr. Yanki. My name is Honorable Adams. My name is Honorable Adams. And I have a question for you, Mr. Yanki. How are you this morning? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, my question is Section 62 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa acknowledges that indigenous languages are facing a challenge, challenge of diminishing, and this requires the state to take practical steps and positive measures to elevate their status and advance the use of these languages. What is your opinion on this section? And then what measures would you like uh, to put in place to ensure that the state, including provinces and municipalities comply fully with this constitutional requirements. I thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Let's talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This question is really also the question that I'm getting that very scientific. I enjoy them. Number one, if you look at that section in terms of protecting the 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 the, 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 the other language, the indigenous language. Number one, I'm going to discuss it by setting example. I won't take time. Number one, if you look at the dictionaries, you would find all the 89% to 99% of dictionaries, they will say an indigenous language, Sesotho, and it's a combined dictionary, Sesotho and English, Isikosa and English. Africans and English, Sitonga and English, which is now the other languages, they have never been given a chance to restore themselves and grow. All what is happening, they grow on a side way because they grow in this sense. Here is the language Ishikosa. There's no dictionaries for Ishikosa. You look at Isutu and other languages, there's no dictionaries. But the, 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 what what does not augur well with me is when you would not find what I'm bringing a solution to, number one. I don't want to let something without a solution. Number one, dictionaries should be like this, where we have a number growth of dictionary, where government can, uh, can have an increase in terms of funding, to have number of dictionary in terms of creating some project where people will be saying, this dictionary will only combine Sisotu and Isikosa, or Venda and Siswati. Now, when you look at the culture of dictionary, it only you attach this language to one language. Now, the other thing, uh, you look uh, uh, at this, the issue of protecting languages. Some of the language is like they are reaching, they've reached the ceiling. 
and which is not the case because there's no project that gives growth and restore that to the communities to say grow here is the job number two there must be job that should be given because it is a challenge when there's no job that makes growth for those languages um in in, in correction to that the research is very limited it needs to be a project that runs to really uplift these languages. For instance, I'm citing an example. If you go to, um, if you you move from one language to another, other language, there are some of the words that are used in another language. Which other language they feel that no, they are deprived. Which is also one of the things that a government should do, uh, uh, to look at it to say. We cannot deprive a certain weight from a certain language. I am citing a, 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 a word here now to say this, this word in Isikosa, Okunyoba, to, uh, to another language, it doesn't mean the essence what the Kosa they mean to it. Now, it causes conflict, confusion and conflict in, in, in different languages. And the other thing, the project must be there to... to to, to have even sign language, which they would be challenged to bring about giving an interest to this language because the birth of these people that are coming from the community, then the community must take that language very serious. Further on, interpreters must a uh, government inculcate them from the beginning that we grew up, we don't catch interpreters at the level of the university. We need to catch them at the level because these people in the society, they live with these people. They need not to understand this thing of uh, uh, languages when they are in a certain level. To regroup, to say, to regroup the, the, uh, the schools, to regroup the schools that these children must understand on the basis of a, a, a level of the foundation phase. But now if we start to meet these people with different language at a certain level, that is also creating a, a problem. It means now, one, start to say, no, my language, to market the language commercial. What do I mean by marketing the language commercial? To, 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 Pensalp has to do a say in terms of broadcasting, that the language that is broadcasted, it could be the language of the people, and as well as the books that are written are given. It should be on the basis of commercial basis. It should be on the basis that, that is the correct language for the people because there is a complaint that people say, what has been advertised? It's advertised on basis of commercial. It does not respond to really to, to our language in the way in which we understand it uh, correctly. Let us review and get it right in writing la uh, 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 books, review it, get it right interpretation, of, uh, of, 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 of languages, getting project, getting a research that does not stop, that continue to help people. To, what I want to uh, not forget, to create new words. The language, whenever, all the time, when there's a language, I am citing an, a, a, an example. When there's an English word, we always in different indigenous languages, we, we would say a stool. We say isitulo. We always converting our language to other language. Uh, we need to have a call. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you are too detailed, and and I'm suspecting yes. members. Uh, uh, there's an interpreter here. You did uh, mention okay. a word of isikosa. So ukunyoba. So yes. I. I wanted the interpreter to tell these members uh, is the the interpreter is with us just a, a, a little bit pause doctor okay thank you chef i just want to interpret the word that he used when he was uh, explaining uh, the question so gunyoba means to bribe in english yes. thank you yes. Thank you, Doc. So far, I will ask uh, members whether they still uh, want to further ask questions. And but first and foremost, uh, there is 
a, a, a time when we want a member want to do a follow up maybe in in these members who are not were supposed to ask questions because uh, our time is 45 minutes by a, de a detail which is we are accept it uh, we we don't have a uh, more than 45 minutes uh, to to another member uh, without asking a follow up question uh, can uh, one member ask another question in order that uh, they must have a chance uh, without asking a follow-up question. Uh, let's go to Honorable Van Dijk. Good day, Dr. Janti. My question is as follows. Section 6.4 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa empowers government, both the national and the provincial to regulate and monitor the use of official languages to ensure that uh, they enjoy parity of esteem and are treated equally. What legal and operational measures would you put in place to make this to come into effect? Thank you very much. The you measures try that to are brief to the point okay. because we okay. still have uh, to raise other questions. Thank you, Doc. Okay. My, my 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 direct question, my direct answer would be this: We need to restore committees that would look after this uh, provincially and national, and national and um, provincially. There must be this system of giving each other that relationship to say we're building this. This is what we get. We research. Then number one. I believe that we, we need to research from the committee. Then we have projects that are there to assist that work together with the <clears throat> with the government. Thank you. Thank you, Jock. Uh, the another question number three, uh, Honorable uh, Sibir. Mm, thanks, Chairperson. Greetings to Doctor. Uh, following the publication of the language statistics released by State South Africa for the census 2022, Pan South African uh, Language Board has expressed some concerns about the sharp decline in South Af African la sign language. This is a significant as SASL is now recognized as an official language. Additionally, Pen Salp highlighted the decrease in the number of East Indebele speakers in schools and noted that the metric class of 2022 marked the first class without a single learner registered to learn Siswat in the Gauteng province. The proportion of English Sizong, Shivenda speakers has remained relatively stable. However, the statistics show a decrease in the number of Africans and Isikosa speakers and a decline in the use of Khoi and Sun languages. My question is, what is your analysis of this situation if you were to be appointed to pencil what measures would you put in place? I think. Thank you, Honorable Sibia. Doc. Number one, I I would shelf in place to create employment for such languages. That's number one. That these people can be able to restore uh, uh, their language to growth. <clears throat> number two. What I would understand, I will make sure that to improve them, to open a, a, a project where they would write stories about their language, where these languages to be taken as part of the award in the winning award for PENSAP, to assist and be consistent helping those people that within that language, to be vocal, to take them to, to write the, uh, something newspaper that 
they to go to media in programs in media where they can feel their language is not disadvantaged. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Uh, is there any uh, member want to ask question? Number five. Okay. Uh uh, you cannot repeat. Honorable oh. Sondi. Um, Doc, can I take this opportunity, Doc, uh, uh, to say I will ask any member which is a uh, chief who wanted to, to do a follow-up question. Uh, I thank you. Uh, uh, hello, Doc. Hello, Doc. Hello, Doc. I'm good. What role can your language what what you what role can the language awareness campaign play in the promotion of the multilingualism and the development of the sign language uh, and as doc thank you thank you chair thank you chair the the yeah. role that could or the role that could play is to bring the all together. Once we exchange, knowing this each other language, we'll be able to respect the language, we'll be able to speak the language, we'll be able to write the language. We will be able to advertise the language to say, let's make sure this year. The campaign for this year is for this language that we can organize and rally against that language to promote it. Thank you. Honorable uh, uh this is the, the last follow-up. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the question around the promotion of languages, considering that there is a state of diminishing languages. In your CV, you've stated that you've served in the board of NSALP before. Are you familiar with the strategic plan of the organization? And in view of that, what can you focus on in terms of the strategic plan of the organization? What you will do to promote the equality of languages. Thanks, Chair. Doc and the Honorable Doc. I, I would make sure that language, if we don't research about language, and open, in this research, we also open a project of building more words in the language. Because we, we feel that our language or all languages, especially the indigenous languages, they do not grow because there is no research, there's no building up of new words. Let's look for different, uh, our indigenous language. You'd find there's a language, there's a word like Isizulu, they've got this word. Sisutu on Twana does not have this word. If you can link that word to join and accept as a word that we can use, we can grow. Not stick to say now, we don't have words. Let us have one a project where we'll develop making new words for certain, for different language. Two, and promote those words to be accepted by pencil that the community to accept. Then we're building the development of people scientifically in their knowledge. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, the last uh, follow-up question is from Honorable Van Dijk. Chair, 
short question. Um, I just want to verify um, on your CV, there's a, under publications, there are various um, publications that you put down but I cannot find your name as one of the authors. And I just want to uh, verify whether you act, uh, actually did, um, um, if any of these documents were published by yourself. Thank you. Uh, uh, let me correct. I did not give any publication. I'm sure that is not me. That might be a mistake. I don't want to take someone's uh, as job. Thank you, Doc. Um, honorable members, uh, the 45 minutes is over now uh, for each candidate. Can we take this opportunity on behalf of these members? But thank you so much, uh, Doc. Uh, the, the work of this committee is not yet done. We are the first candidate and we have to call 25 candidates and then We'll get the information uh, when we've done to to the ministry. Uh, we can release you. Thank you so much. Uh, we are again apologize to start late that we have been waiting for us. I thank you, Doc. Uh, if you can say any word uh, uh, accepting our apology. I, 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 I really strongly accept it. I do not have any problem with it. Thank you very much. My last word will be, thank you very much for the questions that I've received. They were thought-provoking questions. I would say, I wish whoever candidate have decided on a good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Go well. Thank you. Bye. Forty-five minutes, because other members are putting too detail. So, how do you feel about that? Because if uh, uh, I'm restricting, uh, they will say that which happens in in those inter not you people who doesn't know that uh, we've put forty-five minutes. For instance, Udog exceeded his forty-five minutes. But uh, uh, let's try to be patient. Uh, that patience is going to take our own time. Uh, you have seen uh, somebody who knows the, the field is going out and taking his time. And we cannot say, please stop now. Uh, I'm, I'm suspecting it's not going to give us the credit. Can can I hear your views? Okay, um, I think forty five minutes is sufficient. This and let's have. I rather have more time to then discuss after, so that we consolidate our thinking and not just uh, score people unf unfairly. So, thanks, Chair. No, thank you, Chairperson. But the reality is also if if we allow a, a, a candidate to speak as long as you want. You can spend an hour on a question. So are we going to say nothing? Uh, we can't, we need to, we need to manage the time. 
sort of to get through the five questions. So um, I think the follow-up questions uh, answers should at least not more than three minutes, then you should be able to say thank you if it's a follow-up. Um, but I think we want to, you should, uh, you as a chair should able to know when you feel you want to intervene. You know, after seven, eight, nine minutes, person still speaking, then I would, I would think you should, you should guide uh, all of us, but particularly the candidate. So yes, one doesn't want to prescribe exactly, um, but yes, I agree the 45 minutes is enough to get all the information out of out of a candidate we want. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I agree on what you said, but if I look on the interview uh, uh, document, the documents with the names on, there was uh, time attached to each and every uh, candidate. So if I must propose, I will propose that when the candidate is, uh, uh, in front of us, can we then share his time that he will be allowed to 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 respond on his questions? Thank you. Yeah, uh, Chair, I, I I concur with my colleagues. Uh, the, the 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 first candidate always we we have hiccups in every interview, but uh, we we will try to or let us try to make the interviews flow. Uh, it's upon us to do that. And the, I think uh, on, on the time, it's a maximum 45. We can take less uh, because a, a, a person who can elaborate a, a, a point for 10 minutes, others can elaborate that point uh, in two or three minutes because that is the content that we want, uh, not the time to just stick on for uh, ten minutes each, but if we can just try to to make it flow, it will assist us uh, to finish on time. But at the same time, making a, a, a the justice for all con candidates. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, let's have the next uh, candidate, Doctor Lavane. Doctor Lavane. Lavane. D-D-L-D-L-A-V-A-N-E, Dr. Javane. Let's go and, and, and look at our files. Um, uh, do you hear me, Doc? Yes, I can hear you, <laughs> um, Chairperson, Honorable Chairperson. Okay, thank you so much, Doc. Doc, uh, you are the second uh, uh, candidate. Uh, we can we tell you that here we are with these honourable members. In order not to take your time, uh, let me not introduce uh, uh, honourable members. There are too many. Maybe when they ask a question, and a, a member will uh, tell you. Uh, that I'm honorable beauty Zulani, as I'm chairing now, I'm beauty Zulani. And then uh, we are going to ask you five questions. And in in all of those five questions, maybe members, they will want to do a follow-up out of each, or maybe not in some questions. Uh, but yeah. you have 45 minutes. I thank you, Doc. Uh, now, uh, I'm, I'm giving the first member, which is Honorable um, Tertua, uh, to do that. And then before that, can you introduce yourself? Oh, okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Zulani. Uh, my name is uh, Dolly Zavani. Um, um, I am the Director for Center for African Languages. Um, the position which I acquired from July 2023, I'm attached to the Faculty of Education, Northwest University, and I am currently the board member of PENSAL, uh, also sitting uh, as the chairperson of the core mandate committee of, of PENSAL. Uh, thank you very much. 
Thank you so much, uh, Doc. Uh, Honorable Mtetwa, uh, any question that you want to raise? Thank you, Larry, sir. Uh, you are at Lipat and other members, they will take questions which are not yet uh, asked. Hey, members, any question uh, to those who will be follow uh, Honorable um, Tetwa? Thank you, Chair. Um, and good afternoon, Dr. Lavane. Lavane, uh, how do you pronounce? Good afternoon, uh, Honorable Tetwa. Thank you very much. How do you pronounce your surname? Lavane. Lavane. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, what are the key arguments expounded by the National Language Policy Framework and enforced by the use of Official Languages Act Number 12 of 2012 in relation to language use? Have you identified any gaps between language policy and implementation? Thanks. Um, thank you so much, Honorable Mtetwa. Uh, yes, there has been, there is a little gap between language policy and language um, implementation because um, of the, the challenge of institutions in terms of the uh, budgetary constraints, in terms of skills, in terms of uh, human capital. But let me say that um, uh, the, the challenge that is there between policy and, and, uh, and, and, and implementation is that there is, no, there is no monitoring and evaluation. That is, that is the, 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 the current situation uh, within the implementation of the language policy and, and, and uh, um, language uh, policy and 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 uh, implementation. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Doc. Uh, Honorable uh, Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Doctor Livani. How are you? How are you, Doc? Thank you, fine. And how are you, uh, Honorable? I'm also fine. It's huh? it's a uh, it's a pleasure to see that we uh, have um, a female in our uh, uh, candidate list, and we appreciate the fact that you are part of this uh, panel. I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, Doc, Following the pu publication of the language st statistics released by uh, State South Africa for the census 2022, PANSOP has expressed some concerns about the sharp decline in the South Africa sign language. This is significant that uh, SOPS uh, SASL is now recognized as an official uh, language. Additionally, PENSOP highlighted the decrease in the number of, of Ndebele speakers in schools and also noted that the matric class of 2022 marked the first class without a single learner registered uh, to learn Siwati in the Gauteng province. The proportion of English Isisonga and Tivenda speakers has remained relatively stable. However, the statistics uh, show a decrease in the number of Africans and Isikosa speakers and a decline in the use of Khoi uh, and Sun language. What is your analysis of this situation? If you were to be appointed to PANSOP, uh, uh, what measures would you put in? I thank you. Um, thank you, Honorable Adams. Thank you, Doc. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Member, for the question. 
Um, fortunately, uh, my interest in the language enterprise is uh, both educationally and, and, and socially. So my language uh, expertise is is, um, is 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 boosted, I must say, by the societal uh, knowledge that I have uh, in terms of language. Uh, those statistics uh, that were released by the Statistics uh, South Africa uh, are, are, are true. Uh, there is a great decline, and let me say the decline is caused by the rising recognition of English within the country. And this rising uh, 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 recognition of English in the country, it's, it, it has been fueled by the recognition that the Department of Higher Education has on English and also the Department of Basic Education. But fortunately, currently, the Department of Basic Education is working on implementing the multilingual mother tongue based bilingual education, where in the mother tongue of the learners will be recognized in parallel with, uh, with English. Now at social spaces and not now at school level, the, the, the challenge that is there is that uh, Communities regard English as easily accessible language to communicate. And uh, research has shown that the decline that is there in African languages, in South African sign language, is lack of material, is lack of social material, is lack of academic material. By, by, by material, I'm referring to uh, books, I'm, refer I'm referring to uh, magazines, I'm referring to even the media, because media gives a limited time to the African languages. Sassel is even, is even uh, worse, it's not given enough platform. And as Pencil currently, we are working at closing those gaps in order that all languages start to recognize themselves as languages of identity, as languages of learning, as languages of living, as languages of um, the other thing that we that 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 um, we should be mindful of is that um, English, even if statistics South Africa says English and as Swati and the third one are in decline. Uh, if you compare the three, English is higher than the two, and the two are African languages. So the impact that English has in the country linguistically is, 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 is very huge. And Pencil, I must really say currently, as the core mandate committee, we have uh, in on our in our strategy on how these issues should be should be should be addressed uh, advocacy is one of the most important issues that has come up to say people don't know their language they don't know themselves anymore so what is pencil doing about it and uh, 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 being successful with the department of basic education by the new policy of multi mother tongue bilingual based uh, bilingual based education and the new policy of 2020 of the uh, public institutions of higher learning uh, those two policies are going to assist a lot in stabilizing this decrease after which the increase will be evident once those uh, once those policies are 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 are, are implemented uh, correctly so currently what is happening at university level uh, the research that i am currently engaged in 
on multilingualism. Some of the data that, uh, that is shared there, you come to realize that people have really lost their, you know, their in interest in their languages and which causes them to lose their, their identity as well. So, so it means the, 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 the universities together with the PENSALP and other uh, organizations and bodies that are in the language space, uh, coming together, collaborating, partnering in addressing this to make sure that advocacy happens and that information reaches to the grassroots of the of the communities. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if I have responded to your question, uh, honorable member. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Doc, uh, you, you said a mouthful. Uh, can I give it to honorable Van Dijk? Yes. Third question. Sorry, Third question. Person. Next question. Third question, not follow up. Third question. Sorry for that. Um, section 6.4 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa empowers government, both national and provincial, to regulate and monitor the use of official languages to ensure that they enjoy parity of esteem and are treated e equitably. Hmm. What legal and operational measures would you put in place to make this to come into effect? Um, thank you so much, Honorable Member. Um, you know, uh, the operational effect. Uh, I, 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 I can say uh, PENSALP um, has drawn a plan to, to, to train, to workshop, to inform the 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 the, the, the government uh, departments because it has come to the attention of the institution that out of so many governmental departments only a few uh, responded to uh, to compliance of submitting their language policies so so at operational level uh, it can be done through training, uh, conscientizing, advocacy, and you know, uh, going physically to the governmental departments to make them aware of this uh, legislative mandate of pencil. And at a higher level, a legal level, now when they don't respond, uh, I would say pencil act gives the board the powers to deal with such departments. And such power I interpret as subpoenaing the department, uh, subpoenaing the departments to comply. And if there is no subpoena, uh, pencil is, is, is becomes toothless because government departments will do as it pleases them and, and not comply. So my approach will be the legal, the, from the legal perspective, uh, a pencil can, 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 can um, relate, have a relationship with the government de departments in terms of making them aware uh, communicating with them, approaching them, discussing issues, you know, uh, because at times you find that the governmental department did not submit because of several reasons. So before uh, being being hurt legally on them uh, is, is to really uh, understand what challenges are there. And um, th that is what we have done at Pencil to, to check why out of so many uh, governmental departments uh, was there compliance of only less than 10 departments. And after a follow up, there were, you know, inflowing of uh, language policies. 
So at legal legal status, Pensalp is 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 has got those powers to 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 compel to to to, to force the departmental um, governmental departments to to comply with the language policy, because if they don't uh, comp comply, uh, it means the communities who uses the services of those governmental departments uh, may end up being their linguistic rights being violated, and a linguistic uh, violation is a human violation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm not sure if I have responded to your question, Honorable Member. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Okay. Uh, Honorable Sabia. Thanks, Chairperson. Greetings to you, Madolana, Dr. Lava. <laughs> Thank uh, you so much, Honorable <laughs> Member. <laughs> okay. If you were to be appointed to Pan South African Language Board, what legal systems would you put to place to ensure that fraud and corruption does not take place within the organization? I thank you. Uh, thank, thank you so much. much. Remember. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> um, can you repeat that question again? You said legal. Okay. Legal. If Yes, if you were to be appointed uh -huh. to Petzal, what legal systems would you put to place okay. to ensure that fraud and corruption does not take place within the organization? Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, you know, uh, talking about fraud and legal, legal, uh, systems. Um, I would say if Pencil uh, gives me opportunity to serve again as the board member, the Audit and Risk Committee, uh, let me say the board of Pencil through the Audit and Risk Committee looks into matters of a uh, of 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 legal as well as audits and risks that are there uh, but come to your question what legal systems will be placed in there um you know if if the board has got the legal minds or a uh, one of the board members as the as as as, as, as legal specialists uh, they will have that responsibility to look into the, together with the finance committee, to look into the financials. But when there is fraud, there should be a, a, a legal, a legal, a, say repercussions that will that will that will follow there, and. Um, the systems that that will that will be there uh, will be in terms of the in terms of the 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 board member in charge uh, who who are in who serve in the committee for finances who serve in the committee of ARC and uh, uh, reporting to the board uh, at large and. Um, the committee of ARC especially is the one that detects, uh, is the one that uh, you know deals with these uh, the issues. And as a member of the board, uh, with the with the with the with the uh, the fraud that will that will happen, the legal the legal system will 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 have to be you 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 have done fraud. Let us uh, start by taking it up legally, prove you guilty or not guilty. Uh, proven guilty, it means there should be uh, uh, some kind of being answerable to the, to the fraud. 
uh, in terms of expulsion or in terms of retaining the money or in terms of uh, whichever way the, 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 the members will, will agree to that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Honorable Member. Uh, the sound is, is is off. The sound is off. The sound is off. The sound is off. I just hope that this is. The sound is off. The sound is still off. Yes, Dr. Lavani. I'm also, I can, I'm not part of the committee. I'm also online. I can hear you, but I don't think they can hear you in parliament. So uh, I'm they sure can, they'll return. I can see, uh, I can see the, uh, the lips of uh, the chairperson are moving. Yeah. We've lost the feed from parliament. So I'm sure they're yeah. going to return to us. Oh, okay. Should I wait? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Hello. Hello, Chairperson. Chairperson. Do you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. Honorable members, any follow ups? Honorable Ted. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Doc, you yes. seem to be having comparative advantage. I suppose you are familiar with the work within Pensouth. Let me take you outside Pensouth. Okay. Um, in the former other date era, mm -hmm. we used to have what we called language laboratories. What's your take in terms of that? Do you think it was contributing to the development or it wasn't contributing. Is there anything that you think could be done if it if it did contribute to equal to that and improve on that? Um, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Teto. Um, yes, you have really taken me out of pencil, but not. Totally, <laughs> not completely, because anything that has to do with language is uh, about pencil. So if I have to respond to that one, uh, I would say the language laboratories uh, were very good in that era. And uh, what we want to do at pencil, I may differ with you, Honorable Mtetwa, or some of the honorable members uh, that uh, pencil is looking at, you know, um, having a, 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 a kind of publishing hub. We are not talking about machinery here. We are not talking about the machines for publications and, 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 but publishing about languages and 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 uh, uh, improving, developing. Let me say, the writers, especially of previously marginalized African languages. Currently, the the the, the authors of our books are 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 not as good as the authors of the books in in that era. You read a novel of Setswana today, the language is a little bit thinner than the, the previous one. And if I have to, 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 to mention again, um, the language laboratories will assist the, the, the African languages specifically. I want to refer specifically to the African languages because those are the languages that are currently suffering. We can see with the publishers, what is happening with publishers currently is that uh, they, 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 they don't really publish African languages 
in in bulks like English and Afrikaans. Uh, why that is done? Uh, it is not it is not clear. The language laboratory uh, would engage the the writers, the potential uh, writers of books. Books, I refer to literary books. I refer to academic books. I refer to research articles. I refer to media material. All these four, you, you will not find a publisher currently, maybe one or two, and but not even considering the same publication as the English and the Africans. So I want to lean more on African languages because I'm in the space of understanding what is what is happening in the country at large in terms of lack of uh, development, lack of use, lack of commitment by both communities and the publishers. Uh, interestingly enough, the, 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 the universities uh, are responding very well to the call for uh, 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 for the development and, and use of African languages through their use of 2020 uh, language policy of higher education. So those language laboratories, uh, Honorable Nteto, they would be very, very extremely, I must say, extremely helpful, especially for the for the writers of uh, uh, African languages. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if I have responded. Thank you so much, Doc. Uh, you responded, and the honorable member was saying that it was out of the pens lab, but uh, it's related on on what yes. we were discussing. Yes. Uh, honorable yes. members, uh, by this time, can I release Doctor or uh, any other uh, follow up? Doctor, I don't see any other follow-up. Can you say that we are hoping that uh, we didn't delay you too much? We started with the uh, fully-fledged committee meeting, but uh, good luck. We're not sure what is going to happen, the process. The process, after we finish this, will uh, forward the recommended names back to the department. From there, we'll hear from the department. Thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Before I leave the space, I would just like to thank the the committee, the portfolio committee for this opportunity that I was, uh, I was given uh, for the interviews. And uh, uh, if I come back to pencil, I'm sure I will be able to um, you know, look into matters of language countrywide in a more strategic uh, uh, direction. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, honorable members. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doc. Thank you I so much. I appreciate. You are released. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Uh, members, uh, the third candidate, uh, Mr. Male Boloa, I indicated that he's going to be in the interview today, when in fact I checked now, I invited him for tomorrow. So now we will go to the next candidate, who is uh, Dr. Tagalani. Um, she's already in the waiting room. Apologies for that, members. I just checked now. I didn't see the candidate in the room. That's why I checked. Apologies. Uh, we are welcoming Honorable Malomani. Thank you that you landed safely.
Dr. Dagalane, can you uh, switch on your video and your mic? Language. Uh, Dr. Dagalane, uh, you are welcome. Uh, yes. Can you introduce yourself to the members? We are just in Parliament of South Africa. He's uh, <laughs> laughing at me. And now these are honorable members and the, the staff of a committee section. They are all here, our secretariat, our content advisors, our researchers, the interpreter also. So uh, can you introduce yourself? I thank you. Hey, uh, uh, oh, oh, now we have been trying to uh, uh, to be in your uh, space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are right. Okay. Masiari. Can you introduce yourself? Please relax. You are within the Parliament of South Africa. This uh, now talk to us. The Masiari Batuote Nanfi Dakaro Takarani Zuran Wanada Pretoria Ndo Toma Punza Zangaka University ya Mpopo. Nga 2005, ndi shukwita BA. Just, just a moment, just a moment, Takalana. You are right, you are allowed to speak your language. So now this interpreter, she is outside. We don't know why. Uh, uh, waiting uh, that person to get in. I was not even sure why they are staying outside. Sorry about that. Should I continue or are we waiting for? No, please wait. Wait a moment. They are not that far. They're just next door. Uh -huh. Okay. You are out of order. You are late. You still a uh, greeting your friends. There's nothing wrong to greet. But why were you outside? Thank you so much. Uh, apology accepted. Chin. Kutelela bangwan lusi sinifalele nbandu. 
lions that we want to leave them to this parliament but they were supposed to be inside they are taking your time and the time of the members we don't know why they are sitting outside but uh, they've asked an apology the apology is accepted uh, we are giving to you doctor i thank you Okay. <clears throat> I thank you. Uh Zina and the P Jagaro Takarani. Nga Zurandu wana Pretoria. Um uh, Tumangu Dodzanga University ya Limpopo Ngangwa two thousand and five. Ndichikoita B A yeah, ads. And I da media studies, English, Chivenda, translation. Ushika ka ka mwa brando penza ndi chiko u ita Chivenda na translation. Dizo ne zenda penza ngazo. Ufa honenda isa penza zanga panda. Nga chera baru chukweta nga choho ba usi na karukulam ya onas. So kwa tebe wa fedza nga chupi nga 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 wa 2007 ra tiseru waka masters ya ads. Ena honda. And we need a, an interpretation. Just a moment. Uh, interpretation please. Thank you so much, Hassan. My name is Dakaro Takarani. I am from Pretoria. Um, I started my tertiary qualifications in 2005 at the University of Limpopo, former Teflop campus. I enrolled for BA in arts, and then that's where I specialized in media studies, Chivenda and also translation as my major subjects. And then as I was doing my third year, I specifically focused on Chivenda and translation, which were my core subjects. Um, as I wanted to, I was about to proceed to the honors level. Unfortunately, the all the learners who, or rather the students at that time could not proceed to the honors level due to some challenges with the university. Good translator. Thank you. Uh, come back, Doctor. Sorry, there, there's a last line which I missed since the, mm. we had technical glitch, glitches. Okay, Takalana, come back. Okay. Takalana, come back. Yes, thank you. Um. Machidani or the Ach got a chair Chaburine, then Rogzori Re and Rodle Form Masters. Mara Yera to Manga Kosweke, each cover on us. Yera Sikono eater. Then the Pasadzi Kosweke Zote, Rakono Poker Car Research. Then the Shukpezangangwa twenty ten, the May. Thank you, interpreter. Thank you so much. Uh, we were then told or asked to enroll for masters since we couldn't have uh, enroll for now. We were told to enroll for master's degree, which I feathered or I completed in May 2010. Thank you. Thank you, interpreter, doctor. Takala. Uh Uvane Kondo Doyan later internship Bukam Hashawa Siranam Vered or Pilot Pane. Dichukoshuma Pasiha Events Management. They have an internship program in Wam T. Sorry, Chilasan. 
maybe if you can ask her to repeat what. Please Sorry. repeat it. Try to be yourself and uh, come closer and be free. Gamram Sindono graduator. Noya Andawana internship program. Kamu Hasho wa Utsira Namberere wa Pulukwan. And Abanduko Shuma ka events management. Interpreter. After completion, I then got an internship opportunity, uh, program opportunity at the Department of Arts and Culture in Bulukwan, where I was specializing in events management. Thank you. So far, uh, honorable members, they will look at the your CV. It's in front of the honorable members, but now I'll be giving the first honorable member to ask you a question. Thank you, Doc. Uh, honorable Mteto. Thank you, Chair. Um, good afternoon, Dr. Dakalane Dakalo. Masiaru. I would. Um, it's quite impressive to see a young person, particularly black and a female, with the kind of academic advancement that you have done. I take my hat off. Having said so, I want to find out from you what role can language awareness campaigns play in the promotion of multilingualism and the development of sign language? That's question five. Interpret. Thank you. Thank you, interpreter. Ruamboru Namshumo Murane Kumaka Chichava Chashu, where I would not you to Chinachanga Tea, who's Naruam Utrova Kabu David Zani, Ha Mutini, Ushika Mishumoni, Ushika Kachumisano Yamugu, so he never eat an achichava. So the Ziva Zaiti and Gamambo are warm. So the Rwambo and the Rwanda Mabukum, Gauru Faram Vereri, Yamutu and Emune, Yadova Radova Raita Uri, Mutu Asiwane Ochera, as a Divu Wunne Hawe. Er, she to Chandeme Karwambo, the Chaurumutu Diva Panero, Yarwambo. Rawe Sazine Murayo Kana Nayotewa Yashu Ya Republic ya Africa Chipembe Ya Ziteangaya eh, Kasi ya Lafuro La Zinyambo eh, Uchitadza Shango Lashu Wabu na Richinga Unosa ila Murawus Tukutuku Gari, who never two and never about to divan de me and Yambozavo, whenever cut the two and never chico descend the gang and Yambozavang. So Masia Afuro, Lord Divisa Rambo, no very disanyambo, I should remass Furo and the Mepuma and Angasia, Russia Gorashuruko Vered, or I see Zitus of Tesunam to Angakono Stark and Yachkushim Saram for a moment. When I might fear a ne, happy Taruchezo, Yimonga Uri. And then I'm so a one and a rumble at them only loud. Thank you, Doc. A uh, interpreter. Thank you so much, Chairperson. Um, 
the language plays a very important role in our society because it's a form of communication. It's a form of connection between families and different structures of governance. That is why most importantly, we should know the rights of our languages as it is enshrined in our constitution, in the Bill of Rights. The biggest challenge that I've foreseen is that um, there seems to be a challenge when it comes to language promotion or promoting our own indigenous languages. That is why we find most people uh, finding comfort in conversing in other people's languages than their, than their own. I thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Interpreter. Honorable Adams. Uh... Thank you, Chairperson. Welcome, uh, Dr. Dakalani. Welcome, Dr. Dakulani. Uh, I have a question for you. What are the key uh, arguments expounded by the National Language Policy Framework and enforced by the use of Official Language Act number 12 of 2012 in relation to language use? Have you identified any gaps between language uh, policy and implementation? I thank you. Sorry, if you can... I repeat the question again, just the last part. Have you identified any gaps between language policy and implementation? Language, uh, national language policy framework. You know, in our the Morayo, you know, what's Nyambo Washango now on, and the Zupios in there, one of the Thais, a cannabis top order, Sakai, do Zuchera and Amrayo, you know, me. Who now it is about our Yanas Nando no stop order. Namanda zuichi biyaka ushu misiwa. Amrayu. Nga uri, eh, uchi seza. Ndivo. Kana mishumo wa bodonyanga redzi. Kati na muhashe wa mbereri. Wabtira na mbereri. Nduri muzirapo munga na munga wa Afrika chipembe. Adu wana ogo kolo wa msechi. Apetu munga na munga. Namanda kazu imiso zo mbusu. Obo polo wakao shumisaru amboru ne afuna ene mune kana rune afo obo polo wako rushumisa. Rune gamanda ruwa mboratamu. Uchi seza zingwe wako zine ndono zivona ndizwa uri. Uchi sika kazu imi sazwa mbusto kana kami hashu. Rikadiwana batubachika dituso wangaruwa mboru nero asiperu wako. Awa hutu wana watu wane wotori wa uri wa badoroge, wachu kwa doroge la watu wada utoda chumero za mwuso. So ndi jitu jine jiko ri, sari risa jitu kumura unga ri. Rengari implementation niyo sari la. Na ngwezi wane zimbeka nyama itere na mira yoyowe wawo. Ya usumbe zori mwana munga unafanele yoshumi saru amboru ni afuna kana rotamuni. Ape tu mwana hume. Kana ushumi so hacho mezo janta nyambu. Uite na mbele ziso ya rushaka. Ri kadiba rosa ni rajitu. Tawwe nga uri. Fanero. Za nyambu. Kano watu abatu divori nyambu za shudzia ringana. Sazweswa sumbe disozo nekanda yoteo. Ura una rambolo renta rumwe mwana mwufane ufa obo kolo wakao shumisa rambolo. Ura akona wana chumero ya mwuso na tuso inea itodi. Ngaribu. Thank you so much. Maybe um, I, I, I would like to state the following as uh, some of the challenges that I've um, 
experienced or that I've uh, picked up. Um, especially with regard to, mostly it's about the implementation of language policy as it is the responsibility of the Department of Arts and Culture. Um, it is in the act or in the constitution that all languages are the same and must be used equally. But when you go to government structures or government departments, you, we still find that there's only one language which is dominant and the others are not being used. So it is vital or it is of importance to have interpreters so that they can be able to interpret whatever is being said by the dominant language so that all the languages can be in par or they can be used equally because there's no, all languages or rather, are the same and we should use them in the same way equally. I thank you. Uh, Honorable Fantik. Thank you, Chairperson. Welcome, Dr. Takalani. Um, before I ask my question, I just want to check, I think I missed, um, what did the doctor uh, say in what um, did she do uh, honours before she approached the master's degree? Um, you can just hold that and then I'll um, follow up with my question. Section 6.4 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa empowers government, both national and provincial, to regulate and monitor the use of official languages to ensure that they enjoy parity of esteem and are treated equally. What legal and operational measures would you put in place to make this uh, to come into effect? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Van Dijk, the interpreter. Tango eh dogo tala wata karani ndani chikumbelo re tango bato dogo ora zeva amba muziba chikwa mbanga ori abongo chako na uita onas mara bado fursera kamastas level banga tori dogo bara talu chaza stuko tungo re zozo umpu panya na pe zindi chisa panda pe zindi chisa panda ndai otewa iamba na usumbe disaka na u tutuweza ushumiso adi nyambo. Zote, fezi, nikonya go faka wane uri. Ni zipiyo zuneza wore zikuwa mana na mafungo amorayo na kushumi sere kwa nyambo. Zune wa wono ngari, vadori ezu wono dine wachikara. Vakono wono rizu ya tebezi wakana zi ya shumi suanga ndira yote yao. Unfortunately, just a moment, Doc. Honorable, you started with a follow-up question. So before we finish the questions, but let's give her to answer that follow-up question. The sequence we have saying that questions and then follow-ups, but never mind. Uh, there's nothing wrong. Uh, but uh, le le let's follow uh, what we agreed upon. Okay, Doc. Um, so it is on this already program here on us here. Have you it? On I go to know. Structure reward it didn't miss anga yo to your incorporative come masters. The apple and the best or to me song a cost work. Then cost work each better recognize research. Then as you focus if you want to go now who's in a honest yet the miss anga yo. So you all incorporate to a car masters. Thank you, Dr. Dagalan, interpreter. Okay, uh, to answer your your, your question. Uh, I've indicated that um, the honors program was not well structured. So that is why the reason why we only did the coursework and the rest of the program structure was incorporated into the master's level. That is why in the CV that you have in front of you, I've indicated uh, uh, things like those. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The next uh, question, Honorable Sibia. Mm, thanks, Chepesi. Uh, greetings to Dr. Dakalan. Section 6, clause 2 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa acknowledges that indigenous languages are facing a challenge of, admi of diminishing and thus requires the state to take practical steps and positive measures 
to elevate their status and advance the use of these languages. My question is, what is your opinion on this section? Second question, what measures would you put in place to ensure that the state, including provinces and municipalities, comply fully with this constitutional requirement? I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sibia. Uh, uh, there was um, a second part of the question uh, asked by uh, Honorable Fandik. Uh, interpreter, it was not uh, answered. But now, uh, can you give that uh, forward this, the next question? And then the re remind uh, the doctor that there's a second question that... Uh, Honorable Van Dijk ask, uh, maybe it's upon you that did you interpret uh, everything or if not, we'll ask Honorable Van Dijk to repeat. Thank you. But now um, translate the question from Honorable Sibia. Okay, uh, thank you so much. I interpreted everything. She got the question. Unless if she just want me to repeat it, I will do that. But she got the question. Yes, you can repeat. Um, apano ni ukwambi wanga mbuzi so ilani ye ya tebele na na ye ba ba chiko ambanga ori zuchi daka mafungo a onas abongo chai itangan thani ori wodo kuseroka kama stars ung ung thani ori university yoba is number chair wakana. Mbeka nyam shumo yo ima onga or kana yo kutse zwa o ine banga kono uito riva kono itam ona spezi vari banga di pindura kana vai pindura ngamu ra o ona taizo spezi mbuzi so iyo tevera o zasino ino kopa kavo siwe andi auri uyanga chitemwa chavora tichanda yo tewa chipida chavuili nyambo zashu ziko tanga na kai dukuranes ngauri ziko uwa. Aziko shumi siwa. Zenezo, wone, wawo rimini, nga muumbolo weno nika na, nga chitetai mwe chino ni. Mbuti soya uvili, ndi ya uri, ndi bukando bufiyo, wone wone ba dobu beya, na wone ba wona zori, wubu bukando, wate vile li wanga zimi so zote za mbuso, mi asho, na mi masipara, zichi yerana na makungo au shumi soa anyambo za ashu, kana ututuwe zwa, au shumi soa anyambo za ashu, hazu imi soa soa tezwa mwuso, uva, kama mwuso wabati, utapasi kama mwuso ya hapo. Ndi alivu. Honor, can I clarify what made that Dr. Dagana saying that he didn't answer the question? When she introduced herself, she did indicate what happened uh, and then now, what happened about the owners? So let's try, honorable members, uh, just ask questions. Uh, and then the time of a follow up, we must give that time, not mix issues. So uh, we are fine here in front uh, because we are assisting each other. Uh, there's nothing wrong so far. Please go on. Tangu doko tala wata kala ni doko niyako tosumbe zisa ori au na choka kia o basongo kwa watu uza kana boka kama usipa songo pindo rambo ziso elani yeye ya ziso a ichikotebera ya maruga na na ori ndinga ni basongo ita kana basongo tapu za mfunzo za boza onasi re zera wana ni zori riko rita boka kina rina ngenge no ziso yeye ya yote ya isongo daka wone. Gauri wone wazo sumbezi sa matumoni yangu ba chitoma ba chitamvula chinga orizo chimbili sahani na onendinga ni ba songo iita zene zo ba songo fa una cheva kaka watu ba watu zingange no diaribu zene zo watu sana na ba shumi sana na nafano ni wondo manta yebe ba sumbezi sa zori wewe pindo la mrao wange ini zene zo ndiko diaribu. Okay, diaribu. And chipindo la mbuzi so ya mowori sebus busbusi ya. 
zvinova uh, kuamba ndi zone nyambo za shiziko sumbe za zichiku upele la muyani au uh, kubana nyaruo kana mpele ziswewa nyambo za shu e, nibono ngari chitu cha kwine chine changazi vele zisa kana uchi uzibuisa kachimo chanta chitu chine cha kote iti otoma ndi todisiso ya uri ndi chine chine cha kubanga uri riwane nyambo za nyambo za shu zichiko sumbe za zichiko tsela pasi ngamu rao musi ho ito wa yoto disiso rito kono wanorindi gai une akoba na kutuzi ezo ringa zi itanga u ya mihashoni kana zi kazi misa zote za mbusu roya na zitu zonanga zi kweshene kana mafura au to chimbira richuko <coughs> u diva za batunga ha ana ubali mu isanga ha uh, nde meya rwambo ndibona nga ndihone una ra do wana uri ndi ngani zwinwe hapo ndi zwa uri na zwikolo ni rekoteo ya ngamanda ka zwikolo zwa pfunzo ya mutheyo ri wana ri sore ndi gai hune vadedzi ba shiva kutudza hone Ninga ni vana vashiwa na madhuwa vashi ya todo shumi sanya mbo za tamu. Zimwe futi ndinga uyaka, ringa yaka nyanda za mafungu. E, vana vashu, hano madhuwa hii, ndi watu wa the social media, hapo hune wa feze sa hone chipinga. Ndi hona uhune ringa chumbi zisa hone mafungu. Ututu weza, na usumbe zisa ndeme, ya luambo. Nyanya mbo za shudzada mungu. E, kaya ubiri, ndingari, abu ubofi wa ubu dipi nduriri, au wona uri, uve na ushumi shwa haizinya mbo. Nga ulinga, nandizupi yosu nyeva kweita. Endendi maga afiyo ane akujiwa, kana ndivu kando devu nyeva kujiri wa honi. Nga mura umisibasa ngoshike razweba mbiru urevaite zoni. Ndisa kubunonga arari, Banga jero wa bukandu. Ngawari mutu achi ndi duwari ka kazi misa shwa mbusu. Ngana chimiswa chingwa na chingwa. Ngawari chitoma mtu wa simbezi sore eno kunyago shikera zi. Zi tushibonera unga indi. So arali mtu wa asongo shikera. Gemole ali simbezi rudoli shikera. Lo u wona uri. Nyambo za chofi siziko shumi siwa. Nyambo zeze wa zotu zero wakari ziko shumi siwa kabu ima hote ya muguso. Merado yote ya muguso kabu ima upio na upio. Iku ura na shumi siwa zinyambo hezo. So niso kubononga kungo la bukando nilio na linela dorutu sa uri. Ayama kungo achimura ungo tamayi. Ndaribu. Thank you, Dr. Interpreter. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Sivia, for your question. I certainly agree with that notion that um, our languages, especially indig indigenous languages, are diminishing. Um, what I can put through as a suggestion is that I suggest we do thorough research. We need to conduct research so that we can find the root cause and then that can be done by engaging the departments. Maybe we can go to these departments with questionnaires and make people fill and complete the questionnaires. The other thing that we can do, we can go to the villages and engage the public. And also schools, especially the ECDs, Early Childhood Development uh, schools we need to start with the youth i mean with the youth let's also use the media especially social media because this is where the youth spend most of their time in the other thing is that in different departments there are people who are mandated to make sure that this uh, languages are promoted and they are used. So 
Let us engage them. Let us find out what is it that they are hired to do if they are not promoting these languages. Let's have consequence management. Because if a person is hired to promote a certain language and is not doing that, we need to sit with that person so that he can show us or tell us what is it that is actually doing or what that is actually hired to do. I thank you. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Dr. Tukelan and, and our interpreter. Uh, the next uh, uh, question asked by Honorable Malomani. Thank you, Chair. Greetings, Dr. Takalane. My question, it will be based on the language and their use in South Africa. As in your CV, I've seen that your home language is Savenda. You can speak other languages, which is English, Tsonga, Sotho, and Setswana. The question is, Following the publication of the language statistics released by States SA for the census 2022, PENSLAB has expressed some concerns about the sharp decline in the South African Sign Language. This is significant as South African Sign Language is now recognized as an official language. Additionally, PENSLAP highlighted the decrease in the number of Isindebele speakers in schools and also noted that the metric class of 2022 marked the first class without a single learner registered to learn Siswati in the Gauteng province. The promotion of English, Shitonga, and Shivenda speakers have remained relatively stable. However, the statistics show a decrease in the number of Africans and Isikosa speakers and a decline in the use of Khoi and Sen languages. What is your analysis of this situation? If you were to be appointed to PENSLAP, what measures would you put in place or strengthen to ensure that indigenous languages grow? Thank you, Chair. Dolibua, Dokotara, Wotakarani. The current teacher of the Sapanonica CV, Abo. The Kowana Uri Zuranes and Gonyago Ambanga Luambo, Nakushumi Serre. Kwaru, kana nyambo, na kushumisele wazo. Ndiji sa zafano ni kasivi, ya wanduko wana zori, wone vamu venda, ane udoraba na zingwe nyambo, zine uakono ziamba, ufana na shitonga, sipedi, na zingwe. Zwanezo, mwuzi zuchi tawele la ubisi wa haa, to disiso, nga muasho unu ni wa zimbara watu, kana wa, 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 wa statistic South Africa. Uko sumbe tisaori, una utera pasi, shidaka kushumisele kwa zinyambo. Zo tike zwananga, hababa bodo ya luambo, waniwa borendi wa pensalbu. Waniwa kusumbe tisaori, luambo rononga isindebele, luko utera pasi, shidaka makungo akushumisele, rase za chivenda na shitonga, zone zikadibra zoi mazwavu dinyana. Fezi ranga seza luambo rononga isiswati, hangi ikawte ngi, rowana zori luo utera pasi, nga manda, nga uri, a una na mwana na muti we rawana achikoru gudoro ruambo chikoroni rabana ruambo rononga africans na shi oh, isi prosa zine na zone ziko usumbe za urizo terapasi na hezi na uru ruambo wa koisani adidoro rabana ruambo uru nweni wa ababo nwamba nga zichayo kana rune raru vizore ndi sign language ziko usumbe za uru kubo shumi swanga ndira yote yao zene zo muzi rose za zonezi Ndiya piyo maga musi wane wa chidotoliwa. Ane wa doa shumisa. Urezi nyambo. Zote. Zikono wa zijiko tutu weziwa. Zikono takule ranta. Zishumiso ngandere yote yao. Thank you interpreter. Uh, Dr. Tekala. Ndolibuwa. Mm. Nidatumanga pungola. Ruambo razwani. Zenda 
wana zone ndi zauri arina zvimiswa zvibonalaho zvine zvakusumbedza zvichikofundedza vatu ushumisa rwambora zvani zvine zvikadisiya hapa vatu mbona ushumisa rwambora zvanda vachi pa vachingabotudzerwa kule ngauri namusiranga ari rikosedza dzimbeka nyamushumo dzaka tv asi mbeka nyamushumo dzothe hune vadowana hapa vatu vachikodorogerira so zvine ndingata mawana ndisa zvine ndi zvauri auna ndira ine rangaita uri huve na magude dzina ofundedza vatu vane vavana dzangalelo lo guda rwambo roshumisa nga zvano uri vakono uthusa vamwe vatu ndisakobononga zvidosiya hapa vatu vachifana vo 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 katereya kana rwambo rwako ruchingana na rwashu zvichi dzaka rwambo rwadzi koi kana dzisan ndi rwambo ndi nyambo dzine ndikare dzotudzira kule and uri dziwana re dzichi kufanda nga uri huchena uh, vaambi vadzo vanje una rwambo rwa nuru ne utoba na muti muti vane vava va uma Katrina vane ndivone mhonde kosalawo vavhote pedzi chinotaka dza ndi chauri muhasho wa kusira na mbere wajena ka fulo la uri rwambo uri ya recording so zvine zvanga ite yake dzinyambo dzine adzina vathu vanje va bano dzishumisa ndizo ri kadzi recordiwe udo wana uwana re zwire rudzi kana chomedzo za technique kana za digital dzine dzanga shumisiwa ka u recorder hedzo nyamu ndiyo nendere na ranga ishumisa ka dzivulunga no dzivhelidzisa eh robana mushumo we rava rina one nda shuma one ka kudedzi la university of africa chipembe rava ro ramba wo o makadari so basumbe dzauri uri alwambo rukobulungi wanga ko recorda na mutana ko vatu so recorda zvitu zvothe so vatu vone vosara asi vanje mara vana vadhuru havana vadhuru arali hasa vana wengedze alushaka jambo rwambo uri aluko dofa pedzi nga uri una mushumo na ukaitiwa wa u recorda no uve a chimwe na chimwe zvisiya uri alwambo rusanga dzito fachote Baduru ba vona zvidhuru zvidhuru ane zvitokona wana uri alombo ruho. Richisedza mbalambalo dzese dzine dzakwambiwa. Maybe china ranga thoma uita chone ndi to this is. Eh arali richi koto va realistic. Eh rwambo rwachiswat aruna va vathu vanje. So ringa situlaverera uri huve na vana vanje vane vanga ruita pano hakuti. Sasa zvese simbetsa zvone hapano nika kakanda yotewa nangwe mwana mwe ana pfanelo yo shumisa rwambo rwawe una une vasimbetsa arali zvichikona dze so arali upano how thing usedzi wa kauri ndi dzipi yo nyambo dzine dzambisiwa how thing ende chiswati chinga siweleka nyambo dzine dzambisiwa pano how thing una ichizulu una chitswana kana chipiti ndizo ne nyambo dzine dzambisiwa so zva zvino mosa autu vana chomedzo dza u honori chikoroni chimwana chimwe huve na mudedzi wa nyambo dzothe dza fumiti dza chofisi spedzi zvine zvanga ita ndi zvori arali roko todori nyambo dzi edane Ari ya petu nea hafu ukwa mbu wachiswati. Riseze uri. Shukoro za mbuso. Kwa shukoro za mbuso. Chiswati chuko shumiso kwa shukoro za tena. Wana wote wako ita na. Au na mbibi ya noko da chiru wangasa mbuto chiswati. Awe tewa mburu kenina. Ndi zone zine zongari tusa. Nka ukini paza kano veri zis. Chingwa futi richisa zaka la shukoro. Rifuno hafu uzulapasi na babibi. Ba bibi, ba ba ya shira mre nje kwa riva na wa situ tuwe zeye kwa uguda zinyamu. Tangwe wo seza ikonome uri 
uri muthu achikere zvikara zvikara zva economy uba osedza uri rombo rinoda kushumisiwa ndo rombo rwaisima mwananga anga guda chivenda chivenda chidomisa gai pedzi ri ezo uri ri wine yondo ri khote ya u dzura pasi na ba baby rava sumbedza ndeme ya rwamu uri mwana kufunza wanga chivenda ari kwa mori ru isimane arunga vihone uko funda jonga rivenda adova sumbedziwa ava araruna buku achuko pfore ako zvipese sanga rombo uba una buku ya isimane ine yanga muthusa utarusa kana udiva zvine hello ipilamba zone line ya pfore hali pese sanga rororwa ndiso kobononga zvimwe futi zvine zvanga jerwa ntha eh ndi pungo la u digitize dzinyamo arari azifani na kare zva zvino richika fourth industrial revolution chimona chimwe china chavo chove wa muyani achikonokhera ndinga tutuweza uri kari vulonge dzinyamo dzashu nga ka digitization kana kadzi cloud uitero ri na vadao vadi vori kuna rwambo rwero va hone fedzi ndo ina rakoto yero sandi zvori usongo vana nwana wa africa chipembe ane apfa uri ene uwana kukuda ka rwambo rune rusiberwa rwambo ra damu ne karuvero ne rwambo ra ntesa ka vana vashu na museri mahaya ni ashu ndiribo Thank you, Doctor. Uh, the question was long, and uh, we're supposed to uh, also uh, look at that. So, uh, even the interpreter uh, is not going to be sh very short. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, not uh, Chairperson, but I will try my best to summarize, if I may. Um, first of all, I would will, I will, I will like to state that what I've observed is that um, we need to have people or organization organizations that will teach our people in general, on the use, usage of uh, these languages, like our, our indigenous languages, especially the sign language. Even on television, if you can check, not all programs have sign language interpreters on them. So I will suggest that we establish organizations that will promote the usage of this language. Now, when I look at the Khoi and San languages, unfortunately, this uh, is one of the marginalized languages. And to be honest, even their representation, it's, it's, it's worrisome because we only have one person who represents that language. In one of our uh, events at UNISA, we had a person like Omar Katalis, who indicated that, unfortunately, due to lack of population growth, uh, population growth, most of the, the they don't have <laughs> kids who can record and archive some of their indigenous language. So, because of that, we risk in the future to see this language diminishing completely. And also, uh, if we look at the dominant uh, languages, now I'm coming to the issue of uh, Isiswat that was mentioned. Uh, if we look at the dominant uh, provinces like Hauteng, as the speaker has uh, given as an example, 
if Gauteng doesn't have a lot of Swati speaking people, the dominant languages in Gauteng are Zulu, Spedi, Swana. So what I can suggest is that that is according to Stats SA. So what I can suggest is that we need to go in areas where there are Swati speaking people, and then we encourage the usage of Isi Swat there. Then let's also create awareness to the people, especially the parents, because the parents, if you check nowadays, they are the ones who are contributing to this factor because they are taking their kids to schools which do not speak or teach their kids um, their mother tongue or indigenous languages. So we need to create awareness to the parents to say, let them buy study materials for their kids that are in their mother tongue so that these kids can grow up knowing their languages. The other thing, we need to look at the issue of digitization because we are in the fourth industrial revolution. So what needs to happen is that uh, we need to have book clubs and then have information digitized. But our main fight should be to encourage our kids to learn their mother tongue. I thank you. Uh, thank you, interpreter. Thank you to doctor. Uh, honorable members, any follow-up questions? Honorable Mchato. Thank you, Chair. And I hope it will be a very short one. Considering that she's very adamant, even in her own language, which is what we seek to achieve in the future. I want to find out what she thinks would be a, what would she do in order to achieve, for instance, when when you speak in your language and you have to teach, for instance, science, there are certain terms that you cannot uh, translate into your own language. For instance, he spoke about statistics as say there's no name for statistics. What would you do to achieve that? Do you think it is achievable that you would be able to speak in a language and teach in a language and develop terms that are not currently available for, for indigenous languages? Thanks. Interpreter, you know, even these members, they are having a different languages here. Even their follow-ups, their questions are in one a official language, which is English, is official language. Agogo no gazamenje wuta katete is kosa so wabuswa no ganye in. That's the problem that we are creating even in our homes. Uh, uh, thank you. No, that is so true, uh, Chairperson. What about era? Bishkoto the Sambut so young up and only out every land. They got to worry. One of our bonara some to an abori, va, va, be say, young Amanda, Mapunguanoni, Aushumisa, Ruambo, Zuanes, Aruambo, Rabo, or no new Rachivenda. Now on a Riazuana Zori, va, Arufu, Nangamanda. Zenas and Dugunya would give up an uning Antaniori. Eh, Unama, if he any canyambo is no nizashu, which donia tumbonga chivenda. Ah, hoka kana matemo a hone mangwe a hoka science. Zino musi rechiko funza wana nge zikoroni. Redoto zuiti saanu rikono talucheza matemo ayo ane. Ha hoka chivenda. Rechiko tiyo ria talucheza nga chivenda. Wone, badobo na hani uri. Ezo zitu. Zia tutuwe ziwa kana matemo ayo aya itiwa. Uri, ukono wana ushumiswa aluambo. Ngandira yote yao. Rechiko ushumisa na matemo ote yao. Nah. Ah. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> so it's not the tender is yakona ze. Unam shimo munji wei tua hunga baufi serva muhasho wa sira nambere unashumana nazar wam. What there is the terminology in jizo yanga masio pambana. 
una zi terminology zo se zo ka science zo se zo ka health ka tero zote zine arali wanga jena ka internet wa ziwana pedzi huna mutu wa sako ita umushumu wawo arali wa dede ziwa shuvo wa wana zangarero kana bachi nga tutu we ziwa uri wa shitome udo wa umushumu uri wanga man zi vocabulary zira wane hako ka ka internet zina taru chedzo uva ka ka mathematics uya ka geography maipi othe aone and uh, muhasho futu udoba waba na 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 watu wane watanga nanga shpinga waba wachi ku u shuma kapungo la lo vereza zi taru sa maipi zi yonga famba na wunji ya zozi wazi ku vakaru amboro Ruisimane zichi daka nyambo za ashu kana zichi vaka nyambo za ashu zichi akawa Ruisimane. E zila zitaru za maipi zi shumi nga chote wazira zichi kuviri ziwa. Zina zote zina ratoda. Rori ariko uya kazo. So shine za kutia idea ndiza kutia shumi sana kumana muhasho wa wafunza. Namanda kafunza ya mteo. Zia kondanya na utoma watu kama tinde ane ono mele. Pezi ya raa ranga wa choma wa watu. Raa wa sumbe zisa uri. Ifi lungo na lungo li na taru chezi. Kama ifi ane hatu wa na taru chezi. Ria umbele muhasho wa utira na mbelele. Urivari tuse nga taru chezi za yoma ifi. Rose za una unit. Ine iwa ichu kutu shuma nazo. Ange ndi zi dictionary unit zinezi wanera kama fundo othe. Abo batu bako ita mshumo muhuru. Ringa sira abako shumo utobori. Una gepe ya kwa katiline aliko kona uvariwa. Nga uri. Una bane baka difauri wa mboru keneru nta harumu. Pezi. Nisoko funga fungo la ujia bukando nilo nilina la doita uri. Ritawa nyeri shikere ele. Zina rakuto da zoni. Ara ranga sezara na mwana mwana mingi. Hei bodo yose mwana wanga 1995. Nana musi. Ari yatu wana. Zui nji zina ranga sumba. Una mshuma mwana mwana itu wa umara. Ari tu pereza. Rune rangari ya. Rushikere ya ndivo ya shu. Kana zine bodo ya. Ya nyambo. Ya ya tama zuchi nga pereza. Thank you, Dr. Takalane, interpreter. Thank you so much. Um, the question that you asked is about terminology, um, Mr. Honorable Mutetwa, is about terminology development. And I can put it to you that it is possible that we can develop this terminology. In fact, we have them already because a lot of work has been done already by the Department of Arts and Culture in different subjects, be it mathematics, geography, history, but all the school curriculums, all those subjects, they have terminology lists in the Department of uh, Culture. The only challenge or the only problem that we have is that people are not visiting that website, but they are there. Another thing that we must do, let us encourage the teachers, because teachers are the ones who teach our kids, and they are the ones who need to know these terminologies. So we have a tendency where people just feel like one language is more important than the other. So it, it, it creates... A, a confusion or something in our minds or in our uh, children's minds that there's no need for me to know this particular language. The better language that I can know is this one as compared to my own. But if we can encourage the teachers to learn and know this terminology, then we will be on the right track. Another thing is let's incorporate the Department of Basic Education 
so that they can help us in this fight. Um, the, the Department of uh, Arts and Culture language experts are there and they sit on regular basis to develop these terminologies, but no one is using them. They just go and put them in the shelves and nobody cares to visit them. I can state that since 2005, the board has done a tremendous job in developing these terminology, terminologies. So let us help them in implementing their recommendations and then we can see the development of these terminologies. I thank you. Thank you, interpreter. Uh, Dr. Dagalan, we are coming to an end. Uh, no further questions. I we'll wish you a good luck when the process is uh, done by the committee and then we'll submit our work to the department. You'll get it there. But thank you for your time and thank you that you decided to do these interviews with your own mother tongue. There are very few people that they can do that. Uh, fortunately with you, uh, you are learned, but some, they just always thinking that if they are using their mother tongue, they will, the people, they will judge uh, them. Uh, if I can use my language, uh, so thank you so much, uh, young as you are, you are promoting that we must not be afraid and ashamed of using our own languages. Uh, uh, can you say your closing? Uh, Oh, yes. Um, the chairperson was saying that uh, she is proud that uh, the interviewee was able to articulate uh, in English, and uh, sorry, in, in her mother tongue, which is good that we promote our indigenous languages. And uh, there are no longer those days whereby if you speak your own language, you are regarded as illiterate. Thank you. Go, Dogote Ratakarani, and Ricofa, Richo Valley was a Uru, Zurane Samson Rosetza, or Rivone, Wofunze, and Amanda. Now on a Vam Divi, Macone, Walu Ambo, Zenezo, Wo Bangbatwane, Wariba Cab, Wimo, Away, Vanango Vachidapa, Nuniba Deva and Benga Chipua, Kananga English, Ezivone. Wonangorba Pizzi, Dingato Tama Uri, Varin Nekedzema Kumeja Abo Aufara. Doribua, Tabatuote, Dinga Tama Uri was from the Chenda Pua Chone, Na U Rendokondo Poroa. Mustn't you wait a interview your the Auna and Afa? ndo kakisa ya hone muyani watu kote mbuzito zote zanda ziwana au unana nchi yenda fori e, inga mfisa biko uh, ndichiko doba ndari wachikara chanda piwa dhaftuburu za sunguriru wa u nanguru za watu waneva diya uvashpita cha hei interview ndari wo Uh, thank you, Chair. I would like to thank you for the opportunity given and also thank everyone for your questions. Your questions were simple and straightforward. So I would like to take this opportunity and appreciate you for making me feel comfortable and relaxed as I answered my questions. 
Um, I thank you so much. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, now we are coming to the end of this first session. Thank you so much. Uh, you are released. Honorable members, we are thank going you. to break. Okay, we are going to break for 30 minutes.
Uh, honorable members who are all here, let's not waste time. Uh, the next uh, candidate is Dr. Rasana. Uh, let's uh, Oh, thank you. Hey, my daughter, and the Hanuka. I really. Uh, I I online. Dr. Hassan, good day. I'm trying to was a parliament. Oh, 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 uh, as interviews, uh, these are members of parliament and uh, the engine of the committee is staff uh, until to the interpreters. Uh, here we are now uh, after lunch, we've started in the morning. Uh, we'll give you the chance to tell us who you are just briefly, because we do have the CVs with us, but it's a procedure that uh, when you are greeting us, can you tell us what uh, and Thank you. 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 Jungum Tandi, num fundisi, num soshi, num Bali, num Pandi, with the Lim. I teach at uh, Nelson Mandela University. There I lecture African languages, uh, languages in terms of philosophy. And also, I taught Isitosa as the second language for those who are coming from Model C schools and English or African speakers who never learn or uh, be taught Isitosa. Also, I'm a language specialist in terms of designing the curriculum and also in terms of uh, making sure the language related policies are learned by my students and are used to ask questions to those who don't comply with this um, language policies or multilingual policies at university. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, interpreter, there's nothing much because what is what is nice about our doctor, uh, she is mixing e -E language. So uh, brief to those areas of Kosa, I thank you. Uh, we do appreciate that uh, our doctors also, they do speak their languages. Uh, to you, interpreter. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. I am Noma Kosazana Hasana. I am a pastor. I am also a writer, to name but a few of the things that I do do. The, the introduction was very brief, Chairperson, so the rest was said in English. Uh, the doctor can also correct me if I left some of the accolades that you, she, she, she does hold in the, in, the, in the introduction. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, interpreter. I'm not the pastor, I'm the teacher or lecturer, not the pastor. Yes, I wanted to correct you that. My apologies. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you, Doc. Doc, um, honorable members, they do have your CV. 
and you were briefed to the point because you were aware that you did put everything off your good self. Now, Doc, I will uh, start uh, with the uh, first member to ask a question to you, Doctor. Uh, the Honorable Mr. Mteto. Thank you, Chair. Sawona Dogodela Hassan. Sawona Mnumzana Mteto. Uh, when it comes to linguistic diversity and multilingualism, why would you why would it be important for you to argue for multilingualism? Uh, thank you, thank you, Honorable Tetua. South Africa is a very diverse country with many official languages and also other vari varieties of those languages. Therefore, it's very important for us to raise awareness about our diversity in languages and also the importance of giving parity to all those uh, languages so that everybody could feel free to be a South African using his or her own language whenever she feels like. I'll take you to a situation whereby one of my students in my class, in my honors class, because in that honors program, it's for languages. Whether you are English speaker, African speaker, Sikosa and other African language speakers. So one of the students from a uh, I think it's from Bizana, because they were looking for language-related uh, topics for their research. And she raised this question, Dr. Why are uh, the African languages varieties are not taken into cognizance, yet they are spoken by a number of people in their own communities where Isitosa is taught as the standard language. So I had to take that student through the process, process of standardization of languages. And I also gave her the critical lens to look at how important it is for language development and language use in our schools and what she can do to take up this uh, challenge to pencil board. And I also said to that child, uh, student, I am also a, a PANSAP member. So you are giving me homework to look also at language varieties so that we can allow them to develop, to be used, and also not uh, be at the periphery, just like um, the Sen and the Koinama languages, which are now have been identified to be close to um, extinction. But fortunately, PANSAP has managed to come in and uh, revive them in many ways than one. So multilingual uh, education is very important. And I'm also happy because through pencil uh, structures, PLCs, especially the Eastern Cape one, which was uh, spearheading the use of uh, many languages in the classroom, whereby we ended up with the Minister of Basic Education, um, launching a, a, a mother tongue or mother language bilingual, multilingual education, which is about to roll out as soon as we could. So those were the inroads that were made by the PLCs, especially the Eastern Cape one, through a strategic uh, advices from the board, as well as a great uh, partnership between Department of Basic Education and PANSAP together with the province. I think the MSCs are also playing a big role in the Eastern Cape to make sure that that link between PANSAP basic education in terms of languages is acknowledged 
and is implemented. So multilingual education is very important. And even in my class, I always tell them, teach them. I have a module on multilingual uh, and multicultural uh, education. So it's very important. And I'm looking forward to see the rollout of the biling mother tongue uh, bilingual multilingual education. And that will give me a great pleasure to be at that stage whereby we are assessing now the implementation, not we're still saying, here is the policy. How about adopting this policy? That policy has been adopted. Thank you to PANSA, as well as the Department of Basic Education and the Eastern Cape uh, Province MEC, who are hand in glove with uh, PANSA and also other structures in other provinces. So it's going to be a very important event to see the rollout of all these uh, languages as being at the center stage in education. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Um, now I'll use my uh, uh, okay. I, I, I'm, I will use my discretion in giving the honourable members, uh, honourable uh, Maloman. Thank you, Chairperson. Greetings to you, Doctor. Greetings, uh, honourable Maloman. Hello, and was on right now. Maloman, you are right, Doc. Maloman. Yes, Doc. And Doc, my question it will be, what role can language awareness campaigns play in the promotion of multilingualism and the development of sign language? Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you, you, Honorable. You know, within PANSOP structures, they have a role to go around. It's early February when we go around for language awareness. And they're doing a great job because that is the core mandate of PENSAP. We need to make sure that our languages are known by their citizens in their prospective areas. For instance, because I'm in the Eastern Cape, I'll always refer to the Eastern Cape because I know Eastern Cape more than the other provinces although all of these activities are taking place also in other provinces when it's an, a language awareness month. In each uh, province, we make sure that there is time allocated for language aw uh, awareness raising. Also visiting those schools in those areas where some of these uh, languages what, which are still at the periphery for instance, in Port Elizabeth, we have a NAMA school there. We have, we have also a deaf school there. We always go there and make sure that we motivate them to develop, use their languages, and also go to the taxi ranks to tell the people at the taxi ranks that there are these languages in the Eastern Cape. You need to know them. You need to learn about them. You need to speak them. Even if you are a Kosa speaker, there are other languages within the Eastern Cape that are supposed to be learned. So we'll also go to the universities because the universities, that, that's where we have teacher trainers will be go back, will be going back to their communities, communities to teach these languages to other speakers of other languages. So language awareness is very important. Uh, can you repeat the one about sign language so that I respond to the correct question, please? Thank, thank you. Can I check? The, the, last, the last question is about the development of sign language. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. You. I'm sure all of you honorables they are aware of the fact that sign language was not uh, incorporated in our uh, number of official languages. I don't want it to be the 12th, it's not the 12th, 
It's one of the official languages. We championed that. We made a point that the, the charter is uh, tabled to the parliament and it was accepted. And as a result, now we have a South African languages, South African language as the 12th language, which is official. During that process, we were also busy setting up uh, structures that will assist the sign language community to have their NLBs, uh, NLUs, that is national language uh, units, uh, unit, uh, national language board. And now we also have the PLC provincial uh, uh, language uh, unit. So that they also share the same parity as other official languages and they can be kickstart to be on their own and do what other languages are doing. So everything is in process, but now what is important is to en enhance it. And also what I have uh, identified when we went to the one which is in uh, Gabeja. In that school, I ended up uh, interviewing just a, a randomly a teacher and a, a principal just to know where do their student students go after they have finished metric and they realize that limited planning is there to take them to higher heights whereby they can be able to become doctors become engineers or become other professions that are there for all other languages and i felt that is the gap as the council board supposed to look at and close that gap because I don't see them in the higher trajectory of becoming an academic or becoming a skilled a, a, a citizen. I think also the question of having limited a subject areas, it's a call, it cause causes a, a, a concern to me because I think when I ask them about their subject areas, they offer from a, the, the basic, the entrance of FET phase. I realize that it's, it's very limited and that limits their growth in terms of choosing how best they would be in the world to serve their sign language community. So those were the areas I feel they need, they still need some a, a, a attention, but be that as it may, now they have the power to develop their language, to use their language, and also to be at the center stage, just like any other languages. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Doc. Uh, now, uh, Honorable Joseph. Thank you, Chairperson, and uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Honorable Joseph. Dr. Azana. Thank you. And welcome to the interview. I would like to ask the question on that refers to Section 6.4 of the Constitution that indicates both national and provincial that may regulate and monitor the use of official languages to ensure that they enjoy parity of esteem and are treated equ equitably. Yes. What legal and operational measures would you put in place to make this to come into effect? Uh, thank you, Honorable. We need to differentiate between the board members and the executives. If I happen to, as I was before, to be the board member, operationals are for the managers. So I'll give them a a strategic a advice, as we used to do when we were still board members, to make sure that, one, they understand their role, two, they know when to submit reports according to their roles, and also if they don't understand. I think in one of our um, 
previous meeting, we realized that they don't comply. Therefore, for them not to be seen as not complying to their duties, uh, the provinces, uh, the provincial managers uh, uh, promised to give them workshops so that they understand the role of um, Ayola in, in, in their entities. Because most of them, be it the government entities and uh, the private sector enterprises, they don't uh, 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 follow the Ayola uh, principles or Ayola prescriptions. So before and who can't comply to an extent that he or the, the entity understands that this is what you're supposed to do. And then thereafter, if they don't know how to do it, you take them through workshops, through meetings and show them how to. And then thereafter, uh, you can take a step further for not complying. And I think at the end of the day, they need to give us reports timelessly on where they are, whether they do have a, a, a language policy in their entities. If they're not, then uh, the, 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 the provincial managers were willing to uh, assist them in doing so. But it's a question of complying. They have to comply because they're supposed to have language units in their uh, departments. All the government departments are supposed to have a language unit and they're supposed to implement that language unit according to what is prescribed one by the constitution two by pencil board and then thereafter pencil board act sorry and then thereafter uh, take it into their environment or constituency and be able to craft it uh, craft it accordingly so that they can be able to use it and people must be trained on what is in that policy and how it's supposed to be implemented. Sorry, I had a flu. So I have just some challenges here and there. So that is very important. And they have to report annually to this constituency so that they are able to be seen as complying and doing what it is supposed to be done. Remember, in each province, they can use at least three provincial languages in their offices and in their day-to-day uh, -day work. And unfortunately, in many cases, that doesn't happen. So that's why the, 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 the managers are supposed to uh, take role and survey who is not complying, who is complying. There are those uh, institutions that are complying, but there's still some which are not complying. And now we are coming in with assistance, but after assistance, we'll be forced to have a, a, some recommendation on how best can we make them comply. Remember some of them, they always say we are toothless, but we are not toothless at all, but we're trying to assist them before we can become that bulldozer that can be able to uh, enforce law because law is supposed to be uh, uh, abided by every citizen of the Republic of South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. The next question, it's Honorable Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. And good afternoon, um, Dr. Rasana. Good afternoon, uh, Honorable. Thank you. My question to you will be the following um, question. Uh, what are the key uh, arguments expounded by the National Language uh, Policy Framework and enforced by the use of official language, Act Number 12 of 2012, in relation to language use? Have you identified any gaps between language policy and implementation. I thank you, Doc. Thank you, uh, Honorable. I think I'll start with the gap. There are many gaps there. Take, for instance, a, a rural 
person going to court, even though they are interpreters, but the document itself is written in English. Go to any departmental organization, even though we said, according to the IOLA uh, Act 2012, that we're supposed to use um, provincial languages at the least three. And what one of those three is supposed to be an African language of that area. There's still some gaps. So the policy in other uh, 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 institutions is there, but they don't use it. And they don't even feel ashamed when people of the uh, language community comes in to give it to that people. How is that person going to interpret that if it's not written in his or her home language? So there are many areas where they fail to implement the, 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 the policy, be it here at the parliament, or governmental institutions, enterprise uh, 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 institution, private, public, private enterprise institution, in hospitals, in clinics. I've never seen even a, med a, 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 a bottle of uh, a medicine from one of these clinics or hospital written in Isitosa. I'll use my home language because I'm an I'm, I'm Isikosa speaker. Everything is written in English. So that is one element of not complying with this policy. So there's a lot of issues that are out there. And I think if we could have people in all these institutions who are speaking our languages, it would be easy for us, or for them, sorry, to uh, uh, translate whatever is going to be used by the public in languages of those uh, provinces, so that at least one or two people may be able to understand, not one or two, people in that area may be, un be able to understand one or two African languages in that area. So language is still a huge barrier. And it's up to us as speakers of these African languages to see to it that we take them into center, center stage. And also we, 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 we become academic in making them developed, used, and also be in all uh, uh, platforms of South Africa, whether it's media, because even in media, even it's in Sitosa, uh, Dr. Chamolo is working very hard there to, to reprimand the um when they mix and sometimes take over the English, even though it's a Tosa a, 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 a station. But they are trying very hard, but they still this love of English above all other African languages. So it's a huge uh, a challenge, but you are able to see to it that we take it by its horns and be able to make things happen in our African languages. What is nice again is this is the decade of African languages. And if you can use this decade to develop, use, and make sure our languages are also captured in digital uh, um, tools so that they can be preserved Whoever wants to know or learn the language can be able to have that access and the language in that way will be developed and used. So IOLA still has to go a very long way. And fortunately, we do have powers to enforce it to be used in all these uh, institutions of higher learning, a uh, governmental organization, public uh, enterprises, and so on and so on. So, we need to take those cudgels and make sure that we make sure the 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 policy is enacted and 
is Im implemented in the way it's supposed to be implemented. Thank you very much. I'm not sure whether I've answered your question. I've taken so much. Thank you, Doc. Honorable Sond. Thank you, Chair. So I want to tell you, Tambama. Tambama, Tony. Tell us of Melana Namuguti. A stronger board means a stronger organization. Yes. The current governance structure in place has resulted in an organization foc focus on its core mandate. Mm. If you were to be appointed to this entity, what steps would you take to ensure that development of human resources are prioritized to improve the functioning of the organization so that the stability of the organization will always be intact. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ian Um Governance is core in everything. And corporate governance has its own principles. And uh, most of the time, we made sure that we look at those principles and uh, use them in our entity and give strategic advice as to how best can we change the status quo. If you can understand, uh, Pansar comes from a situation whereby it did not have uh, any board and at some stage there was a lot of instability in terms of uh, having uh, positions uh, filled, especially the strategic position CEO, CFO, who um, head of uh, languages, executive head of languages, and also many uh, uh, staff members that uh, that were not there before we came. As an HR uh, chairperson, with the committee, that is the HR committee, we made sure that we come up with skills audit because we realized that there's something that is doesn't add, add on when we have our meetings um, and uh, when we ask this question, certain things are not uh, answered fully. So with that skills audit, that made us to understand that people are coming from different le levels of one, education, two, competences and skills. And then we came up with the plan of making sure that whoever works at Penn South in any province is trained for the duty or the work he or she was appointed for. And we also made sure that through the managers, we'll be able to see whether they do attend those uh, training, they do assign um, to universities to take up a new degree that is related to what the, the personnel is doing. Secondly, we made sure that all those who need some guidance in terms of governance, that is a, the executive. They do attend um, the, 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 the Institute for Directors a, 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 a workshops so that them as well can be aware of what to do, when and how that information could trickle down to their subordinates. So, we will continue a, a, a enriching our our personnel, enriching our 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 executive uh, managers, so that they could lead with competence, and that competence can be able to make things happen at, at a pencil at pencil. Remember, pencil before has never been as stable as it was during our tenure. And we gave it our all to make sure that it's 
a functioning institution and it is known by many people in South Africa because before us, they used to ask us, what is Pensal? We don't know anything about Pensal, but I think now so many people do know what we are, what we do, and how we do it because we are very visible, not only for, how can I name it, bad things, but how we are willing to develop our languages. So governance is core and applying all the principles of King for a uh, code is what we plan to do and even do it better when we come for the second round of our tenure. So I would say, yes, good governance, ethical leadership, as well as uh, make sure that we integrate our tools, human resources, a uh, force, and other materials so that we can achieve the core mandate of, of PENSAL. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Doc. Um, Doc, uh, we are coming to the end of the questions posed to you. Can we take this uh, opportunity to thank you whilst you are sick, having a flu, speedily recovery, but uh, thank you for uh, the time that you have taken to come and present your good self. If you want to say anything, uh, but uh, I'm suspecting you know that this committee will just doing scoring and taking to the department and the department will notify your good selves about the results. Uh, we are going to interview 25 candidates. So thank you so much, Doc. Thank you, Honorable Ma'am. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to express myself and how best we can take this organization forward because it is in our interest to see to it that PEDSAP serves all the South African languages with parity and respect and making sure that multilingualism is lived, not only on papers, but we can see it everywhere we go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doc. Siakulula. Nkoskakul. Nkosmam. Nalekat. Where do I live? Uh, honorable members, uh, we are going to call Dr. Koshis. I want all the members now to put in front of them all the questions in order that you must know uh, which uh, type of questions uh, as I'm doing these surprises, uh, sometimes other questions which are not for for this are being asked. But uh, thank you to the veterans that uh, they've answered those questions because they do have knowledge. Uh, I'll start with Umamuslia, this Ngongosi. Chief Lutuli, uh, can choose any question. Uh, 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 leave it to me. Uh, and, uh, and I must come uh, also to Honorable Mteto and number five, uh, Honorable Joseph. 
uh, we are noticing una repulsivia, una repul nutuli, una repul fandeik, una repul teto, una repul Joseph. In that order. Yes. Is this confirmed who's coming in now? Just thank you. Kosiko, Thank you. Let's give a chance to Dr. Kosiko. Video uh, and your mic, Dr. Koshiso. Um, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Koshiso. We are good Parliament. Of, yes, we are the Parliament of South Africa as this Committee of Sport, Arts and Culture. Uh, in this room, you are having honorable members. Uh, who are going to ask questions to you and who have uh, our encourage of uh, the engine of the committee, a uh, secretariat, uh, and then the researchers, content advisors, and all uh, what you call interpreters are here and our administration is here. So uh, this is a full house. Uh, if you can uh, tell us who are you, you must not forget that we do have your CV. We'll just uh, try to, just to summarize uh, because we have these big files in front of us of 25 of your good selves. Uh, Afternoon, Dr. Kotliso, to you. Good afternoon, Honorable Chairperson, um, and uh, the House Honorable Members, and uh, the entire colleagues uh, in the panel. Um, as it indicated in my name and the CV written, uh, I'm Olan Kotliso, um, originally from KZN, but I'm currently based in Free State uh, due to work um, by profession. I'm a teacher. Um, I did my B. Ed. at the University of KwaZulu-Natal, where I did um, specialized in Isizulu as a language education. Um, I did um, um, uh, honors in curriculum studies, and um, I did my master's uh, in language and media studies. Uh, Honorable Chair, what is outstanding about um, this uh, particular qualification is that the entire document or or masters is uh, presented in Isizulu. And of course, my doctor of philosophy, the PhD, my research was done in Isizulu. Um, the entire document, if you were to download it online, you will find that um, I'm one of the few that has taken a bigger step to um, not to talk about multilingualism or to talk about um, um, mother tongue education, but also to practice it. Honorable Chair, I'm currently uh, based at the Central University of Technology as the Deputy Director for Curriculum and Academic Staff Development. Um, as it would have been be reflected in your CV, in our in my CV, and also I'm heading Scholarship of Teaching and Learning. Uh, recently, Chair, the institution took a decision to appoint me as an institutional institutional coordinator um, for language development uh, plan as per the call by DHET. Uh, DHET wanted to allocate some funding for all the universities in South Africa. Um, I am leading that particular project and I'm also uh, instrumental in our center as we are busy working with uh, matters of lexicography uh, development. Uh, we have already done civil engineering. We've developed, um, uh, you know, um, what you call uh, uh, booklets uh, for human resource. Uh, we have developed that for biomedical technology and so on, Chairperson. Um, maybe one is honored to be here today. Thank you so much. 
hey, I felt that you must not uh, end whilst we are having <laughs> your while. Um, it, it's nice uh, to listen to the young ones. Uh, uh, now I'm going to give the Honorable, the member, Honorable Sibia, to uh, ask a question to you. I thank you. Mm, thanks, Chairperson. Siagwemogela, Dr. Kolis. What is your understanding of linguistic human rights and its linkages to linguistic diversity and multilingualism? The question is, why would it be important for you to argue for multilingualism in South Africa? I thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chair. Understanding of linguistic human rights and their linkages to multilingualism in South Africa is a very uh, important um, um, aspect of our uh, livelihood. Um, Chair, maybe one must start by indicating that linguistic human rights ensures that individuals and communities uh, have the right um, to use their own language freely um, which also includes the right to access to education in their mother tongue and um, the right to use one's uh, language in an official uh, maybe government interaction like this particular pl platform um, and the right to participate in also cultural life um, um, through your own language. Um, Chair, when we speak of um, a multilingualism, which we all understand that it refers to the presence uh, of multi multiple languages within our societies and um, in South Africa, with, of course, the 12 languages that are official uh, as per our constitution. Now, the importance um, of multilingualism in, in, in South Africa is uh, chair clearly to uh, protect the linguistic human rights, which, um, you know, speaks to upholding um, the multilingualism um, and the right of individuals to, to, to access um, various aspects of their life uh, in their preferred language. And also, Chairperson, uh, multilingualism promotes and, and fosters an understanding and respect between the diverse uh, communities and strengthening the social, um, um, you know, co cohesion within the nation. And also what becomes more important in this particular question is that of cultural heritage, because um, culture and a language, you cannot separate those two. So each language is, carries a unique um, um, cultural knowledge age and rich traditions that has to do with that particular um, um, a, a, a language and also in promoting multilingualism it 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 and it safeguards um, um this rich heritage uh, for the future generations because um um, um as we come in this ad uh, you know for us we we're born before even um um, um you know during uh, I don't know before apartheid or, 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 or so we, we did not experience it uh, as such, uh, but um, as we come in, we take the bait and to say, we need to transform, we need to change things. So uh, Chepesin, um I would argue uh, for multilingualism in South Africa uh, because it addresses um, the legacy of the apartheid, you know, as you'd understand that historically from Africans as it was the dominant and, 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 and you know, apartheid language that was enforced and uh, marginalizing other languages. So multilingualism promotes the inclusivity and um, uh, dismantles the language-based inequalities of the past. Um, Chair, uh, I, I would also further argue that um, it empowers the indigenous, um, you know, communities um, because it, it it creates a platform for active um, promotion of indigenous languages, um, which would uh, strengthen the cultural identity and self determination uh, of communities. And also, maybe in closing, Chair, in this particular question. Um, 
it um and hence is the educational equality and 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 you know in a sense um that chair and um, educations ones um, if you use your mother tongue and um, in education it improves the learning outcomes and reduces the risk of marginalization in the in the education system in one of um, um my chapters of the phd i'm arguing um for the right um, um of, of using your own language to to, um, um, to education and to receive education. Uh, Chairperson, let me maybe end there. Chair? No, in in a lighter note, uh, uh, I did, I did not to... capture. I did not capture that chair. I don't know oh, whether no, no, you didn't hear. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, to... your name, of course, <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, chair. As we get a lego, go to what they allow to call this. What are the key arguments um, expounded by the national language policy framework and enforced by the use of uh, official languages act number 12 of 2012 in relation of the languages language use how you identify how you identified any gaps between language and policy and implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Uh, uh, th thank, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson. Um, um, in, in this particular national language framework, policy framework, um, I, I would say the key arguments there is that of uh, equality and parity, um, 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 because the, it, it advocates for uh, equal treatment towards all official languages um, of the Republic, um, um, uh, which means that um, all these languages must have um, equal access um, in in government communication, um, in in education, whether it could be um, basic education, it could be a higher education, and then uh, public services, of course. Um, um, for example, you would find people visiting different departments from local government, provincial, and national. Um, so um, 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 members of the public uh, should have access, should have equal access to this particular um, um, to information that they would have required. Um, you know, as a, a chair was indicating that there is there are translators, you know, here and whatnot. I, I, I was thinking that how um, could it be so beautiful that even in a government structures, when we go there to request assistance, we find translators and interpreters as well. And also, chair, this particular um, um, a framework advocate for re addressing the past um, inequalities um, for the development and, of course, the promotion um, of um, uh, languages, especially those um, that were uh, marginalized um, or historically marginalized um, uh, during apartheid. And uh, the effort, therefore, needs to be directed towards uh, a, a revalid uh, revitalizing uh, the, in these endangered um, uh, languages, um, as we would know that in different uh, reports, uh, we we understand some of the um, the, the African languages um, they are at risk. Uh, so it, it, the, the the policy framework advocates for the promotion of those languages um, in supporting indigenous language communities and also promoting. Um, for multilingualism, um, 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 a chairperson. Um, I think in 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 identifying potential gaps um, for implementation, a chair one is that of um, resource allocation. Um, while 
uh, uh, legislation mandates, uh, language equality, um, um, but inequality in terms of uh, budgetary allocation can always uh, hinder the effective uh, implementation um, in a sense that Chairperson, it can um, uh, limit the development of uh, maybe uh, teaching material in, in all languages, uh, training of uh, um, multilingual um, uh, educators, uh, public awareness campaigns, and, and promoting language usage, and, and also share um, what also becomes important to note is that item or aspect of uh, monitoring and evaluation. Yes, we understand that uh, PANSAP as the board has that responsibility to ensure as well that different departments and different spaces within the Republic, they recognize and promote and, and respect all the languages. So in terms of monitoring and evaluation, the mechanisms um, are required to set, pro to assess progress um, uh, towards, you know, achievable language uh, equality um, objectives that might be insufficient. And uh, this can also lead to lack of uh, accountability for non-compliance from uh, government institutions. You, you know, as we read the reports, we understand that some uh, government, um, um, you know, um, um, what you call government um, uh, uh, institutions, they are not in compliance or they are not complying. Even um, uh, institutions of higher learning, as we're working on this uh, we are working on this project by DHET, uh, informed by the framework of 2020. Um, we got to understand that some institutions, they did not even have a language policy. And you could Im you can imagine that a, a, a space of, of, of higher education, if they are unable to address such um, uh, issues, it becomes a problem. You go chair um, to... Um, uh, to to Tivet colleges, um, you know, Tivet colleges in South Africa, if you look at their um, 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 language, um, uh, uh, language policies, they only um, speak about um, um, uh, English, especially those that they have, others they do not have. And when you look at the the, the, the framework that, the 2020 framework that was um, um, issued by uh, DHET, it, it does not specifically address issues of Tevet College as um, also uh, institutions um, within the sector. Um, I wrote another um, article where I'm critical on the language policy that framework about the, the, the Tivet space because I was serving there um, as, a, as a, a council member and um, we have identified a lot of um, the gaps around the issue of language um, which requires um, you know um, the, 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 the you know it could be PANSAP as well I would want to see PANSAP venturing into that space because most of the, the students there at Tivet colleges they um, and research would tell us that the dropout from university universities from high schools it's because of language issues so if they go to uh, Tivet spaces also they are not accommodated in terms of language um, um, it becomes a problem and you if you analyze the results they will tell you that the crisis it is beyond um, what we so called or termed as um, uh, issues of skills uh, maybe that um, institutions of higher learning uh, universities they are comprehensive and and they are not addressing the skills skills gap, but also the TVETs, they are heading towards failure because of uh, language issues. So it's, it becomes very important that um, uh, we think and also um, uh, consider this particular, <laughs> sorry, sorry, colleagues, um, the, the, the VC just walked into my office. I forgot to, to log. Uh, I guess he's doing the, 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 the round. So I apologize for that. So Chepesin, can I just uh, wrap up in that particular question? I believe I've answered this request. Thank you, Dr. Koshiso. Uh, honorable uh, Pandek. Thank you, Chairperson, and also welcome to Dr. Kulisu. In terms of uh, concerns mentioned by you, uh, Section 64 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa empowers government, both the provincial and the national side, to regulate and monitor the use of official languages to ensure that they enjoy parity of esteem and are treated equitably. 
what legal and operational measures would you put in place to make this to come into effect? And with you being in the TV space, how would you um, leverage technology and digital platforms to facilitate language learning and preservation if it's within communities? Um, th thank you so much, Chair. Um, Just, I'm correcting honorable members. We must ask one question. Isn't it? I'm questioning all of you, honorable members. I'm not saying anything. Yeah. It must be one it question. Sorry. Thank you. Talk. Yes, Honorable Chair. Yeah, the question. Can she repeat? I think in between I got lost. Um, sorry. Um, Section 6.4 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa empowers government, both national and provincial, to regulate and monitor the use of official languages to ensure that they enjoy partly parity or of esteem and are tre treated equ equitably. What legal and operational measures would you put in place to make this come into effect? And in line with this question, it's still the same question. It's just, uh, I, I'm just, um, Chairperson, I just want to add this. While you're being in the um, space, the TV space, how would you, um, from your side, leverage technology and digital platforms to facilitate language learning and preservation if it's within communities? Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Honorable Chair. I think from um, the firstly, I will address the like the legislative measures. Um, I mean, um, what becomes important, Chair, as the institution speaks of um, establishment of PANSAP as a, um, a state organ that is responsible for a promotion of languages, and 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 so I, I think strengthening the existing uh, legislation uh, would be key. Review and 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 potentially revise the 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 PANSAP Act. Um, uh, to explicitly grant PANSAP, you know, the authority to enforce uh, regulations regarding official uh, language use, um, um, I think, across the department, because um, as you would read now about different reports in the, from local government until national, there is no compliance in terms of language, you know, uh, implementation. So it becomes important for, for PANSAP to, to have, um, you know, um, a teeth to bite, you know, and, and also developing maybe um, a comprehensive language policy framework. Um, this, that, that would uh, outline clearly the guidelines and procedures for government institutions you know, from uh, local government to provincial re regarding the, the, the consistency and equitable uh, use of uh, all languages within uh, the space. Uh, Chair, I think what 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 is important as well. What I've noted, we have um, 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 a chapter nine institutions that, in my view, they are um, not assisting yet um, in terms of issues of language. Um, I would I would think that um, a PANSAP would leverage on these um, 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 institutions, uh, chapter nine institutions. Um, you would have a commission there that deals with a protection of rights of cultural and linguistic um, communities. So um, um, I don't see a, a, a role being played or the, 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 the collaboration between PANSAP and 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 and, and this particular commission and the Human Rights Commission, um, you would have Auditor General, um, which is um, existing. I mean, I was asking myself a question of um, why can, can't it be a finding for Auditor General when he arrives or she arrives at a particular institution, they cannot find a language policy. Um, uh, those measures should be in, put, put in place uh, to ensure that um, 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 you know, there is compliance. I, I mean, I think also in terms of operational measures, um, 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 PANSAP can leverage on 
um, um, uh, you know, empowering uh, or be empowered to monitor and evaluate government institution compliance in, in terms of language policy. Yes, so it, 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 it's supposed to do that, but as I've indicated, I find it um, not to have a teeth to bite. And uh, hence, I'm, I'm, I'm proposing that it should leverage on the existing Chapter 9 institutions um, to also do their work. And then there should be regular audits um, in government website, um, you know, public signages that are all over, you know, communication material to ensure adherence to the call of multilingualism requirements and also assessing the availability of um, official documents and, and service in all uh, languages. I think, Chair, um, what also becomes important as you touch the aspect of technological advancement, uh, I think it, it, it becomes important to invest in um, translation uh, technologies. I understand that SADILA is uh, currently in place to uh, push that particular mandate from the, the side of um, uh, universities um, and, you know, or, or institutions of higher learning. Um, so, but I think it will be important to introduce such, um, you know, um, translation tools and, 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 you know, at the level of communities and also in, that will ensure the efficient and accurate, um, oh, sorry, and also uh, include um, human um, uh, oversight like the body like PANSAP, uh, which of course, by its very uh, uh, nature of establishment, it has to to ensure the efficiency and um, um, accurate use of languages, and so I think share. Um, uh, developing, uh, you know, a multilingual communication platforms, it would become important. We we have chairperson a department of communications and digital technologies. I think we can leverage on that particular uh, department that how can we, uh, of course, uh, collaborate to come up with um, digital tools that can be used, that, that can be accessed uh, by members of the public and also collaborate with, um, 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 you know, um, um, uh, entities like CETAs who normally would have funding to fund such project and, and also, you know, create awareness around, you know, particular uh, institutions or different institutions. I remember when I was still a lecturer, um, I was teaching my second year's Isizulu methodology. So we would use um, the very same English apps and, and I would give them an assignment to say you must, they must go and explore uh, these apps and, 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 and include um, and language is, um, you know, change the content there, translate into Isizulu and upload the content in Isizulu. And then when we go for teaching practice, I want to see them, you know, applying those uh, strategies that we would have um, uh, discussed in, in, in the classroom. So also partnering chairperson with the NGOs um, in and community organization can ensure also effective, you know, outreach and address specific needs um, in of uh, minority language groups. Uh, Chairperson, can I uh, maybe pause there? Thank you. Thank you. We don't have any problem, members, because we did see him. So through illo trading, sometimes uh, members will feel to uh, switch off the videos. But at least we did uh, see him. Yeah. So, so sorry, chair. I think I the the sunlight. No problem. We don't have any problem. Uh, we did see you, Honorable Lunteto. Thank you, chair. Uh, quite impressed. I'm very much impressed to see young people educated in the fashion that you are. Um. Considering that you are one of the people who are very passionate about changing, uh, using languages, indigenous languages, as as an instruction, you know, of learning. Um, what is your take with the situation where you find uh, black children are expected to learn English and Africans? But white children are not expected to learn Sutu or Zulu. Um, Chair, yeah. thank you so much for that question. Um, I, I, I think I would say it's it it still um perpetuates inequalities, you know, um within um South Africa, and uh, I mean, um, it's it's an I would I would say. 
it's an illegal thing to do. Um, I I have seen that chair um, because I was working in multiracial schools when I was a teacher um, and uh, also when I, I got a promotion to be an HOD, head of Isizulu, I also have seen that, you know, and also through my studies, I've, I've seen um, such injustices that are being done. Hence, Chairperson, I think it, it is important that we um, 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 uh, revise or give pants up teeth um, to do audits and also um, and also look into um, the ways that these these challenges can be mitigated and also collaborate with Department of Education. I I know basic education has um, you know tried to introduce um, um, you know certain strategies like uh, there is this uh, particular policy. It's incremental into introduction of African languages in schools um, um, where they were um, uh, uh, pushing that um, you know um, isisulu or African African languages should also be taught. But what, what becomes more challenging, Chair, and what I've discovered in through my study is that um, issues of um, language, um, um, you know, African languages as first additional as they are pitched at the level of the school. Um, most universities do not have or have not trained teachers to teach um, African languages as first additional to those who are um, um, uh, who are um, not language speakers of uh, maybe Isisulu or Isikosa and whatnot. So it's it's only now I think from last year I've seen UKZ and they've started to introduce, you know, teacher training where they are trained how then to handle a classroom that is diverse and if you are teaching an African language because what you will see besides, you know, um, um, uh, learners who are not speaking Isisulu being, um, um, you know, unable or not given an opportunity to learn Isisulu or African language, but even teachers themselves, they are not trained to teach uh, uh, African languages as first additional to those uh, students or learners that are not uh, home language speakers of these languages. Where else, when you go to the site, it's Africans and English, you would find that most of teachers, uh, the curriculum already has been there um, as a person who works with curriculum as well has been there and teachers are trained to teach first additional and whatnot. And also we need to look into SASA because um, SASA um, 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 as a South African Schools Act gives, you know, um, um, uh, powers to SGBs to uh, decide on matters of language. So we really need to also have, you know, conversations and awareness campaigns with parents themselves. They must be educational around this particular issue because most of them will think that, no, um, they, 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 if learners, if they are their own, um, 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 uh, you know, children learn in English and they've got nothing to do with African languages, they think that is how education, or oh, that is how they will get education. So, uh, Chairperson, out in, in, in summary, say it is an injustice um, that needs to be addressed through policy guidance and direction. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dr. Uh, the next honorable member is Honorable Denise Joseph. I'm calling Honorable Joseph Dennis to ask the question. Chairperson, can I do a follow-up question? No, question. You want me to do a question? I'm giving you a chance to uh, check uh, <clears throat> the question that was not raised. Take your time. Bring them in. A question I'm going to ask, Chairperson. Following the um, question to Dr. Kolesho, the following the publication of the language stats released by Stats SA for the Census 2022, has expressed some concerns about sharp decline in South African languages. This is also significant in SAS 
it's now recognized, it's, uh, meaning the sign, South African Sign Language. Additionally, Pensop highlighted the decrease in the number of the Bailey speakers in schools and also noted that the matric class of 2022 marked the first class without a single learner registered to learn Swahili in the Gauteng province. The proportion of English is Korta, is Tonga, and Savenda, Sivenda uh, speakers has remained uh, relatively stable. However, statistics show in a decrease in the number of Afrikaans and is cause as speakers and decline in the use of Khoi and Sand languages. What is your analysis of the situation? If you were to be appointed to Sand Lab, what measures would you put in place or strengthen to ensure that indigenous languages grow? Thank you. Just a moment. Can you switch off? Uh, uh, Honorable uh, Joseph, I know the reasons why you wanted to ask the follow-up questions. Can you now uh, write with your follow-up question? Yes. Okay. Thank you, um, Chairperson. The follow-up question was basically on languages. And I do appreciate the doctor's explanation on on uh, what needs to be done, particularly with the uh, the inequalities. But I, for interest, I just wanted to know we are having challenges in implementing all the languages. But South Africa is now part of the global, um, you know, be part of the global village in terms of languages and so many other. Uh, countries come to South Africa and that is also children that are being born here speaking French and other languages. So I just want to know the fact that the uh, doctor is on the academic side, the highest institutions, higher education, what is the situation and the status on accommodating other languages that is not part of our 12 official languages to accommodate those learners or communities that are very strong, for example, in French, in a particular community, and there's a need or request for that. What would you take beyond that for our government to do about it? Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, uh, uh, Chair. Hey, these are long questions, but uh, um, I, I hope because I'm still young, my mind will uh, help me to recall. Can I uh, start with the follow-up, um, uh, Chair, through your permission? Um, I, I I think as it, it, it is rightfully said that um, global um, and South Africa is you know attracting most of um, international people um, who are coming here. Others you know they've uh, gotten the citizenship and whatnot and whatnot. So I I think chair um, it is important to firstly respect as per the constitution and PANSAP Act, these are the languages. Um, they must be given respect that they deserve. But um, we firstly need to work hard on our own languages that are official, that are, are, are gazetted or that are, are enshrined in our constitution. I'm saying this, Chair, because it would be very difficult to uh, pursue um, um, uh, you know, other languages. Now I'm talking from the curriculum point of view as a curriculum a person as well, um, um, without, you know, ensuring that we we have, um, um, you know, done the spade work in terms of our own languages and the community um, 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 uh, in South Africa um, understands and they, they, there is that sense of, you know, maximum in terms of uh, multilingualism. Um, because if we um, adjust just um, in in the name of respecting and also acknowledging other languages, we just uh, mix everything. We will lose it. Um, Chair, I, I I last last of last year I went to Kenya. We we're working on a project with other colleagues um, from University of Pretoria. We visited um, um, uh, Kenya. We visited Tanzania. We visited um, um, I forget this other um, uh, place, Uganda. Yes, because we, we wanted to understand from higher education point of view um, how they, they 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 work around issues of languages 
what I we discovered there, they 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 more on one language, which is Kiswahili, um, uh, which is now becoming dominant. And I understand that even in South Africa, it is one of the African languages that is coming in, and and certain universities like UK that and it is strongly, um, you know, um, uh, pushing it and also. It has introduced uh, short causes around this particular language. So my, my take, Chair, would be to say we, we need to firstly ensure that we establish systems and put systems in place to ensure that our own languages, um, you know, um, um, we, we know them, we have learned them, you know, to a certain level. And so that we are able um, to learn other languages. Well, research would tell you, Chair, that if you know your own language, language uh, well, then it is easy for you to know other languages. Uh, research is telling us, Chair, that most of the learners who are losing language or their language or language at, 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 at uh, you know, uh, in general are those um, uh, learners who are not being taught them through their mother tongue and their mother tongue at school. So it is important that we also uh, firstly ensure that our own languages, we level the ground around the and then um, uh, strategically and also uh, because we want to attract um, international communities in order for, to learn for the, their languages and also promote them, we must also know ours. Like currently in our institution, we are developing a sign language short, short course. I'm the one personal um, as a, you know, from curriculum development point of view, assisting colleagues, you know, in, 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 in faculties to develop that because we want to ensure that a language Languages that are in our constitution that are, you know, enshrined in the constitution are wildly, um, you know, um, 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 you know, people they get exposure to them and also they learn them. Uh, Chair, um, um, moving forward to the question about. Um, the, the 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 statistics um that is released by stat sa you will pardon me if i'm i'm losing some certain information uh, along the way but chair in my analysis um there there are factors that are contributing um, to to the decline as indicated one um you you'd have indicated a decline on and on, on sign language and indigenous languages if i'm not mistaken um, um which signifies the loss of um, um 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 cultural heritage and linguistic diversity in south africa which is very key and the moment we start to lose um our cultural heritage and and our linguistic diversity then we are heading for a disaster. So um, um, I think factors that, you know, might be contributing to the decline is a limited exposure um, um, to, as, as we know, that many indigenous languages um, might not be active um, 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 or be actively used in our daily life uh, due to the dominance of English, of course, especially in spaces of education. It could be basic education. It could be higher education. In media, chairperson, if you if you open radio station, you open TV television, how many stations would offer, you know, would offer, you know, their content in Siswati or Isindebele or, or Sitonga. You go to workplace, chairperson, how many workplaces um, um, are advocating to say, if we have colleagues who are um, 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 speaking this particular language, even in their official communication, they must write their languages. Let's have ways and system. Now we have um, AI. How can we leverage on AI to ensure, because I've seen that the board likes of chat gpt is now able to read african languages so we must advocate um uh, for for such and then lack of resources chairperson um, um such as inadequate funding for language development initiatives um such as teach um, also teacher training as i was indicating that what i've noticed through my studies that uh, teachers um they are only taught um uh, how to teach mother tongue you know 
if, if they are taught how to teach Sindebele mother tongue, so they go out and teach Isindebele mother tongue. They are not trained how to teach Isindebele first additional or second language, so which poses a problem um, for our society, for learners who might have want to learn Isindebele, even if they are not uh, Isindebele speakers, but if they get into spaces of education, they want to learn the language, but a teacher herself or himself is not trained to do so. Um, other things, Chair, person would be um, educational material that can hinder growth. Um, I, I, I think, Chairperson, what could be measures to strengthen the indigenous languages? We must start from the basics, Chairperson. Um, 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 recently, um, 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 social development and also um, a basic education. They have taken a decision to move ECD to um, um, to basic education from social development. So introducing integrated or integrate, you know, in, uh, in, uh, indigenous languages into the curriculum in the early uh, childhood development uh, centers would be very key. Unfortunately, in, in, in the South African context, uh, our parents, us or ourselves, we are so into um, the English to an extent that we believe that if our learners or our, our children learn um, 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 in English, uh, that is the best education for them. So I think ECD teachers should be equipped into um, um, uh, multilingual education methodologies, um, um, of course, in um, um, leveraging on the policy for incremental introduction into African languages that um, was introduced by DPE. I think educational uh, initiatives other than that of ECD chairperson is to um, um, make indigenous languages compulsory subject from primary school and and until high school um whether uh, it's a former model c school or whatnot but there should be resources channeled to uh, that particular course um and also uh, and another question that one may look into is the question of standardized teaching material and resources um uh, for languages uh, chairperson it would become important um, to, to, to have such um, so that um, the material that is pitched at the level of, um, um, you know, um, primary school, high school, in different phases. Now I'm talking from the curriculum point of view that the level that is Teach there the standard teaching material should be at the level that that is relevant to that particular uh, learner. I think Chairperson also uh, we should have you know community engagement, support community based language programs, um, um, cultural events that promote the use of indigenous languages. I, I see PANSAP has done a lot around this particular question in terms of multilingualism, um, development of dictionaries and whatnot. Um, it, it's quite a lot of work that is being done. It's just that I would wish it to be more visible to the community, to be more visible to um, 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 institutions of education, like um, of higher learning and also DPE itself in different provinces, because you would find, you would meet teachers, you would meet um, you meet teachers in, in, in spaces where we discuss issues of language. When you speak about PANSAP, you, you see that they are not aware, there are lecturers who are teaching African languages who are not aware of um, um, uh, this particular and this strategic uh, organ of state uh, which is there to assist us. So I, I also um, um, want to reiterate the, the, the point of leveraging on the technological advancement um, as I've highlighted issues of um, develop of, of AIs and we can we we can develop you know mobile applications that speaks to that. We have 26 universities in South Africa and I think more than 20 of them they have IT and those IT um, uh, you know hey, departments Thank you. Also, you are a passionate man, I, and uh, you know your things. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, your last uh, word, also are thanking you to come in this committee. No one can sleep. You always, uh, young ones, accusing us that you are sleeping in parliament. But today, even if there was somebody who were feeling asleep, not today, whilst we were presenting. Thank you so much, Ubamela uh, uh, Bandwabacha. The process now is that 
uh, these honorable members, they will be scoring to each candidate. I'm suspecting we are a candidate number uh, five today. Uh, and and from there, we'll take all, all our scoring uh, product to the department, and then you will be getting uh, the, the results uh, to the department. Uh, I wish that Bengino uh, Moyo uh, to have a whole spirit to look at the scoring of each member, but I'm not allowed to do that. Uh, it's <laughs> so by those words, we are saying that uh, now we are releasing you. If you want to say a few words, you can. Few words. Did you hear? Isn't this? Few words. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Um, I, I have nothing much except to appreciate this um, uh, opportunity. Um, um, you know, I was very um, um, uh, reluctant. I, I, I even wanted to drop. Uh, it's not a small thing to be interviewed by parliament. Um, um, as much as we always say you sleep, but when you have to uh, face us, we are um, intimidated in a way. Um, but one had to be reminded of, um, you know, various uh, boards and, and councils that is serving in, um, you know, as experience that one is gaining that it would not be a justice. I would not be doing justice justice if I do not pitch up um, to this particular house uh, for presentation and also ensuring that um, and, and indicating to you that there is hope for African languages. Uh, we are still here as young lions to ensure um, that African languages live uh, forever. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, go and have some very cold water to cool down. Hey. Thank you so much, Babu Makoshi Somnyan. Yes, yes. You need to do that. Definitely. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, Jabu, we are releasing him now. <laughs> thank you, Chair and colleagues.
Honorable members, we don't have a, a luxury of time. Uh, some other um, I'm sorry, some of other candidates who cannot, it's not even easy to stop them. Uh, um, and now this is the, 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 their time to come and present. Uh, if we can uh, tell you that there was uh, something which was uh, written to this chairperson through the office saying that um, uh, we must not call uh, people and then we must limit them. But as we've explained that there was ever no uh, interview that we cannot uh, determine the time. The time that we allowed, it's 45 minutes. But that person, we don't know why uh, she or he, um, I don't want to mention, uh, wrote to the office saying that uh, we must be careful in these interviews, not uh, cut people whilst they are still laborating. But we agreed uh, as this uh, committee that 45 minutes is 45 minutes. Uh, we want that we must be protected. Uh, uh, let's call Mr. Uh, Mr. Pewa. Uh, Mr. Pewa. Uh, please, the first in Palima Putingo, please uh, open your mic. Mr. Pewa. Mr. Pewa. Numza no Pewa. Ntatepewa, repewa. I'm trying to use uh, the languages. Babu pewa, Baba in Zulu. This is African Zulu, don't mean that. Menyar. Hey, I at least I'm getting there. I I call, I am suspecting he has got that problem of connectivity. Uh, let's uh, allow Ujabu to call him. Babu Pewa, Unotimi Kimi, are you having load shedding? Bulumboko, open the mic. Uh, Mr. Pewa, we can't uh, uh, hear you, and we don't know your challenge. If you do have a um, phone of our secretaries, please call and tell us the problem. Oh. Uh, Mr. Per, uh, log out and log in again. Uh, Are you alone in the office or at home? We are just alone. There's no young. Uh... <laughs> I know that no, I don't have a man, a pillar by a season. Do you hear us? Uh, Madam, 
Let you to call him and then uh, I don't want not to assist him. <laughs> Kanda Kan Sabona mi sepewa. Sabona sepesa sabona sabona. Siyabonga siyabonga ba. Ndinga kolisa kufuna nkinga nangala nga kolisa. Ah ya ya isikolele sikumele sikumele. Um eh uh, we are here as a committee of sport arts and culture apa ku national parliament. Uh, now we are, we, we are all here as members of parliament, our staff, our interpreters, uh, the, the house is, is full. And now can you tell us who are you? Uh, but don't uh, forget that uh, we have these big books in front of us uh, that uh, we, we have read and we are aware of who you are. It is a Kaba course, Okanye, Zamanje, Ungate, Ukulume Gonke, Gobasina, Gola, Gotwa, almost being a lele, a sibing a lele, Uchukutung Babubani, a Osuga, Gwenzegani, Gwenzegani, Igo Logo, Siabong. Open the mic and uh, I'm suspecting you will be fine if you switch off your veto. Yeah, but Baba, I've uh, just could... done that. Yes, go on. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks. Good afternoon, Chen. Good afternoon, uh, honorable members of the portfolio committee, admin staff, and everybody present. Thanks for the opportunity afforded to me. I'm Tulani Pewa, a practicing uh, attorney, former uh, lecturer, and uh, everything as the honorable chairperson has stated. Uh, is on my CV, um, passionate about our language, and in particular, in the legal sector. I'll go as far as that, so that I do not waste much time. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pegwa. Uh, the first question will be raised by Honorable Malomane. Thank you, Chair, and greetings to you, Mr. Pewa. My question to you. Thank you. My question will be What are the key arguments expounded by the National Language Policy Framework and enforced by the use of Official Language Act, which is Act number 12 of 2012, in relation to language use? Have you identified any gaps between language policy? and implementation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Honorable Malumani. 
I would just uh, match the two, the, 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 the policy and the implementation thereof. I, th I think, I, I think we rely too much on policies when it comes to implementation, when in fact it should be the other way around. Pencil, in terms of the act, must be the one who ensures the implementation of the policies. If we do it that way, then we'll be moving um, in the correct direction. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pego. Uh, uh, Honorable uh, Zondi. Chair, thank you very much, uh, and good afternoon to uh, Wabu Pewa. Wabu Pewa, please explain. Please explain why the Pan South African Language Board should have a member with legal expertise. If you were to be appointed board, what role would you play in this entity? Thanks. Thank you, Nanda. I, I do not think it was it was a mistake for uh, the the portfolio committee to um, advertise the inclusion of a person with a legal mind. Uh, firstly, because anything that uh, is happening in South Africa in particular is based on legislation, and therefore you do need a person with legal expertise, either as a practitioner and or as a, a teacher. Therefore, and also, by the way, um, the acts, the policies, etc., usually are framed in legalistic terms. Therefore, you need experience. Somebody perhaps who has also taught law, or and. Thereof, so as to interpret members um, are not a diverse would be to analyze the legal structure. Chair, honorable members, Mr. Pueb has got a very bad network. I was uh, going to ask him to repeat. I, I've had him saying that a uh, portfolio committee made a mistake. I don't know of doing what. I can't just let that go on in order that if really it was a mistake, we must cor correct our good selves. If you can repeat uh, immediately that you answer the, the, the question, your, your first words uh, that you indicated that we have made any mistake. I don't know of advertising or what 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 doing? Can can you repeat that question? Thank you very much, Chair. I was I I am when a whole concept was made. There must be a legal mind amongst the intended board members because um, the. The, the act itself is legalistic. The policies, most of them are legalistic, and therefore, for interpretation of the law, in particular, the act itself, a legal mind is always needed. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so I, much. I, I don't know. Yes, uh, we did hear you. Thank you so much. Uh, the next honorable uh, member, honorable Zond. Uh, Honourable Pandeik. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, section 62 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa acknowledges that indigenous languages are facing a challenge of diminishing and thus requires the state to take practical steps and positive measures to elevate their status and advance the use of these languages. What is your opinion on this section? And then what measures would you put in place to ensure that the state, including provinces and municipalities, comply fully with the constitutional requirement? Thank you. 
Honorable Mrs. Van Beek, I, I say unashamedly that for 30 years we have failed to promote our indigenous languages. Uh, I, I, I give a quick example of that. Um, English language was promoted by the United Party at the time when it was in power. And when uh, the Nationalist Party took over, it promoted Africans unashamedly. We cannot, at this point in time, still have not any of the indigenous languages being recognized in South Africa. Therefore, I'm a man of practicality. I propose that the ground, uh, the, 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 we start from the, the grassroots. Um, at schools, at schools, at the, at, the, at the foundation level, we've got, because the Africa. If the assemblies at schools, both primary and high schools, can start singing the, the national anthem, which is a glue of the diversity and multilingualism of our nation, it will be a good start. And just to, 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 to highlight uh, and with greatest respect again to your good self, look at the national anthem itself. It's got four uh, standards with multilingualism. Africa, and then it's what comes in Iswa, it's not Eva, Iswa in And then it goes on to Isisuta and this one, and then it goes on to Africans. It ends up with 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 with, with English. What more uh, multilingualism can go beyond that? That's where we start. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Pewa. Honorable Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Pewa. My question to you is Section 64 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa empowers government, both national and provincial, to regulate and monitor the use of the official language to ensure that they enjoy parity of esteem and are treated equal, equal, equitably. Equitably, what legal and operational measures would you like uh, to strengthen to ensure the indigenous language grow? I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I appreciate that. Um, I, I do not also the act itself, the section eight thereof, gives vast powers to the board to ensure the promotion and the development of the language. And therefore, if I were to be appointed, I would be analyzing in particular section eight because it is it's it's got sections that I direct the board to do certain things, and then there are those other sections that are peremptory, which forces that we certain things have got to be done to promote and develop the language. And therefore, in a, a nutshell, without wasting your time, is we've got the tool at hand. We've got to comprehensively use section eight of the act. It will guide us in promoting and advancing our languages. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Pega. Mshonisha, Ngosi, Yesi, Tswe. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Babu Pega. Yes. You were to be appointed as a pan South African language board. What legal systems would you put into ensure that the fraud and corruption does not take place within the organization? I think. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, 
because yeah, you see that, 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 that that's that's again is a very crucial uh, question that you're asking because uh, I am anticipating that you, honourable members, uh, having gone through our CVs, having uh, checked our standing in communities and in our various professions, are able will be able to select people including me, if, if it were possible, with integrity, with understanding, especially of the law, who are going to be transparent, who are going to have no conflict of interest, because that's another thing that brings corruption in, 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 into, the, into the fall. People that are going to be accountable, people that are going to work with stakeholders, people that are going to hold hands as a team going forward, people that are going to have stakeholder engagement going forward. In that way, we will be um, effectively uh, uh, bringing forward uh, our mandate and especially of accountability and transparency, thus bringing in the integrity of the board as a whole. Thank, thank you, Mr. Pewa. Uh, now we are coming to an end of uh, questions. Honorable members, do you have a follow-up question? Uh, Honorable Mtetwa? Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> Sawana um, Pewa. It, it, it is quite convincing that your CV reflects uh, such legal experience. Um, I assume, therefore, that in depth you have an in depth knowledge of the legislation that regulates the language landscape um, of the pencil. Do you have specific sections that you think should be amended? Or, or yeah, let me just put it that way. Do you have specific section or sections that you think may require amendment in the legislation? Thanks. Thank you very much, Jambo. So, my, 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 my biggest worry, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy I raised that. My biggest worry is that the Act uh, mandate us to engage government, uh, provincial, and, um, and, 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 and local. It does not talk about us having to engage with uh, institutions, especially of higher education. And I will be pushing for that. We are not going to, to say, because, because most of the things, things that should change um, uh, our, our language spectrum start from education. For me, education is important. And then the, 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 the people in the educational sector seem to be in, in, the, in the silos. And therefore, I'll be pushing for the amendment of uh, the power that conferred to us that they must not, it must not only be, be, be the government that we monitor and evaluate and uh, push it, but also the educational sector. That would be my first uh, uh, step. Uh, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Pewa. Uh... Now we're coming to an end of this session with you. Thank you. Yeah, if, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, we are apologizing uh, about your hiccups of in network, uh, but at least you managed, uh, we, we did hear you. Um, now the process, is that uh, after we've done all the interviews, you uh, you are 25, and then we'll give the department the report uh, about uh, the scoring of all of you. You'll be hearing uh, then from the department. Uh, if you want to say something, uh, we can allow you. 
thank you and jabule laga khulu chapasin and thank you very much to all the honorable members of the portfolio committee by danki uh, to everyone and uh, thanks so much for even having the opportunity to attend this interview i really appreciate it i feel honored thanks so much and uh, good luck to the work going forward i know we've got a long day thank you very much thank you so much uh, mr pewa getlesha lako eh siya kukunula and course Uh, honorable members, uh, now the next candidate is Professor Berenhorst. Uh, Okay. Prof, are you in? Yes, good morning. Um, oh, sorry, it's been a long day. No, no. <laughs> good afternoon to you. Yes, I am here. Okay. Uh, Prof, we are taking this uh, opportunity to welcome you uh, in these interviews. Here, you are having... Uh, the portfolio committee members of this committee of sport, arts, and culture. Uh, we are having a secretariat. We are having a researchers. Uh, we are having a interpreters. Uh, we are having content advice and the all whole secretariat of this committee. Now we are giving you the chance of that you must tell who you are. You must not forget that you have, you are in front of us we are having your file, but just few uh, important things that you want to tell us who you are. I thank you. Thank you so much. Once more, good afternoon to all of you. Um, I will proceed then in English because I did not declare the, the language. I take it that you did not make necessary arrangements for me to use my language. Ikama ulo liwa wama kubo umbo ngwambo isa muela so ngawele ngangizibugo langzalwa kona. However, I'm married to the Parenost. Um, kusigazi ngababa u Parenost. Angzazi ngeza kwa Parenost itagaze lo ngabe ngeazisho. Ah, um, I'm permanently employed as um, the associate professor and the director at the University of uh, Cape Town. I'm sure you see the background. That is where I am. I'm the director of the Matilwansim Education Project, and it is under the Center for Higher Education Development. Basically, I'm responsible for the implementation of the language policy at the university. I advise the university, the vice chancellor, and all the parties um, that um, about language related matters. Um, that is my permanent and full-time uh, job. And then um, besides that, um, I'm the, uh, the, I was the chairperson of the board of the Penn South African Language Board. And then our term expired um, in earlier this year. And um, academically again, um, I, before joining the University of Cape Town, I was at the University of KwaZulu-Natal, and then I had uh, various portfolios of positions there at that university. I um, first started them, um, gee, before joining UCT, I was in the lecturing position, and then I became the head of the cluster leader for Linguistics, African Languages Development, and African Languages. And then I was seconded to the Office of the Deputy Vice Chancellor. And then I was advising the University of Kazilu Natal with language related matters. 
the office that I was in, there, it was the University Language Planning and Development um, Office, Language Development and Planning Office. So prior to that, I was heading the, um, the, the Department of African Languages, and then I taught translation, interpreting, semantics, morphology, and the, other, and the others. So, and I am a language practitioner. I am a language activist. And uh, my PhD is on, I developed the interpreting services model, which is currently used by um, the Durban University of Technology. And um, before joining UKZN, I worked uh, at DUT, started there when it was MSO and Technicon. And then I headed the department there and I became the Dean of the Faculty of Arts. I got bored in administration and then I went back to academia and then I started a program on translation and interpreting practice program. And um, I trained a lot of translators and interpreters, some of whom are employed by the parliament in the, in where, we, where you are currently seated and some of them are in the legislatures, and then train some interpreters and so on. So um, it's a long journey. So I think, okay. let me take a pause there. Yes, I yes. think that that should be a snapshot of what, because it's a long story. I hope that is fine, Chairperson. And thank you for the opportunity. Yes. I don't take this lightly. Yes, you take a pause. When you landed that we have got a product here in Parliament uh, of uh, trainees from your hands, okay, can now take um can take this opportunity uh, to give honourable members the chance to ask questions, uh, honourable uh, Sevilla. And thanks, Chairperson. And greetings to Prof. Makubu Badenhorst. Shotangi uh, Tarazet. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, Chair. What is your understanding of linguistic human rights and its linkages to linguistic diversity and multilingualism? Why would it be important for you to argue for multilingualism in South Africa? Thank you. Uh, are you still there? It seems as if uh, wow. <laughs> And thank you for the question. Um, you didn't get the question. For, for, me, for me, oh, I'm, 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 I'm continuing. That is good. Leave. Can yes, you switch off your video? Uh, prof, prof, switch off your video. And then I'm asking to do here the question. I did get the question. Okay, okay. And um, am I still on? I'm sorry, I, I, I actually thought... Carry on. I will switch off the, the video. Yes. Um, um, better, is it better now? Uh, can, can you just me? express yourself? We'll, we're going to listen. We'll tell you if we cannot hear you. Thank you. No, this um, by, by the human rights, uh, for me, I take uh, linguistic human rights that every individual in the country or everywhere has a right to use and speak his or her own language. That is my view. And then now uh, every person must receive every services, whether it, any services, whether you go to the post office, whether you go to the hospital, whether you are in church, whether you go to the police station, that is your right to receive information 
be it in your own language, be it translated, or if you're communicating with the personnel, the staff members that are there, the interpreting services, it's supposed to be pro provided. If not, then multilingualism. Multilingualism for me, it means that, you know, a person is able to use more than two languages. If it's two languages, that is bilingualism. However, in multilingualism, it is two or three languages that are used. And uh, myself, I would like to speak to say that I am a multilingual person as well as a South African because I use all of these languages. I'm learning a little bit from my past experience again to say Kaites, which is one of the core and sen languages. That's how important. Because if you're addressing a person in his or her own language, that person uh, will actually, you will get anything, you know, the person in his or her own language. And again, multilingualism also then means that you are able to communicate with more than one person at the same time. And also you, as an academic, again, you are able to venture into various things and then it can also you can also then um is am i am i okay uh, uh no not hundred percent not hundred percent the last uh four contributions which you didn't hear you you were clear whilst you were telling us that uh you have no. few you you know about few languages and then okay. from we couldn't hear you oh i'm sorry i, I actually had to use uh, more another data i'm sort of like hot spotting myself it's that time of the day where they i i do apologize for that i should have actually chosen another venue for this but um i'm audible now right yes yes oh, okay and then that I you uh, multilingualism, I take that as a as a resource. If a person is able to use or speak multi languages, that person can be used as a resource to communicate with other people and to help and assist and make sure that everything, the information, knowledge, because we know knowledge is power. So we do know that uh, if you can't get your services in your own language, that's so frustrating. And then probably also then uh, my thinking is also that um, the languages go with the person's identity. If you do not know who you are, where you come from, and the language and identity and culture go hand in hand. And then the multilingualism also then comes in there. Because if you start with your home language and then venture into other language, you become an open-minded person. You are able to interact with people at various levels. So I think I've said a mouthful. Let me take a pause there. I hope I've encapsulated everything that has been asked to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any member want to ask a question? Uh, Honorable Zondi? Yes, Chair. Uh, 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 thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, the next question will be, what are the key arguments expounded by the National Language Policy Framework and enforced by the use of Official Language Act of, 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 of number 12 of, of, of 2012 in relation to the language use? Have you identified any gaps between the language policy and Im implementation? Thank you. Okay, um... Thank you so much for that question. Um, Uyola, if I take it, I use it as an acronym. At the time when that was promulgated or when we were still advocating, we really got excited when it came into being. For that, for, uh, the, the Uyola, it says that uh, for me in a nutshell, 
each and every individual, each and every government department, public sector, and so on, must use the language and should consider having a language division or a language unit that will, or that will be used to assist that particular department, be it a public sector, be it a government department, to use the official, the South African official languages. As we know, we have the 12 official languages now, including sign language. But when it started, uh, Iola started, sign language wasn't official. We do know that. But then now we know it is official. We have 12. So the government department are expected to do that and offer the services if the information that is required by the citizens of, the, of this country is not in their own languages, then it is problematic. So we all are saying that departments and the individuals should be able to use and, um, and gain access to, to, to the South African official languages. I'm sorry, I missed the, the last part of it. Oh, the gaps. In terms of the gaps from, from my side is that in terms of the policy, I wouldn't say there's a gap in a policy per se. The problem that we do have as a country, in my experience, in my 30 years old of experience, is that you know we do have wonderful policies, but the, po the problem is the implementation. Probably what we need to say to do is currently we are doing in higher education. I like what the higher education sector is currently doing in terms of the new language policy framework for public higher education institution that was promulgated in 2020 whereby it says that universities must develop the young language, their language policies and align them with the new language policy framework. But over and above that, don't end at the policy level. The, each university to have a language implementation plan or development plan. So my the identification of the gap in the EOLA, it would, it would be rather not necessarily on the act itself, but on the implementation aspect. I think we need to be vocal in that regard. And then we probably need to say that, yes, all the departments show us how are your plans going and so that we can take the process forward. So that is my view on the matter. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Any intake? Uh, Chief? Yes, Bob. Thank you, Chair. So, Bona Profess. Yeah, what's that, boy? Uh, what role can, can language awareness campaign, campaigns play in a, a promotion of the multilingualism and the development of the sign language? I thank you. Sorry, um, please, can you repeat that? What role can what play in, in, the, in multilingualism? I, I missed the first part of it. If you may sure. repeat, I think, yours. Hi. Promote of the multilingualism of the, and the development of the sign language, I think. Oh, sign language, the development of a sign language. Wow, that is my passion, actually, is the South African sign language. Part of my PhD, the, when I was developing the interpreting services model, I actually included South African sign language. And I, I have been advocating. I actually never thought that sign language will be will become official in my life in my lifetime. So the role that the multilingualism then play is the inclusiveness and making sure and ensuring that all the deaf community they receive services, they can communicate at ease with everybody in the country. And then I take it that, you know, they are the double, if I may use the word, doubly margin, marginalized in the country because uh, most of us do not use the sign, South African sign language. We are not users of South African sign language. So when you communicate with them, it is a visual language. We normally then tend to write and some of them, their literacy level is not as high as we would like it to be. So when you write to them, still you cannot communicate. And it is still a challenge for us. But as a country, we are a step, we are moving a step forward. And I am proud to say that, you know, we are getting there. So it's the role of multilingualism in advancing the issues of sign language. It is the inclusivity, 
ensuring that their identity, their language, and also they can have confidence and also use their language in all spheres of our government, in any sector, everywhere they go, and then so that they can then gain uh, um, access to the services at ease, like in any, the, any other citizen of the country. And they shouldn't be treated as the stepchild. So that is my view on the matter. I thank you. Thank you, Prof. Honorable uh, Mteto, Honorable Malomane, and Honorable Adams. Mang Bingelele, Professor. By <laughs> 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 it's section six four of the constitution of the Republic of South Africa empowers government, both national and provincial to regulate and monitor the use of official languages to ensure that they enjoy parity of esteem and are treated equi equitably. What legal and operational measures would you put in place to make this to come into effect or reality? Wow, young boys. <laughs> um... I would say that um, I would um, crack the whip. We ask mom, Zali, Ngane, Ee, Kai, Umas, Nalale, if I may use that, this is, you need to ensure that um, that is used. So if we must, the, the perito of esteem, we still have a, a long way to go as a country. Because first, you know, for the fact that when you go to, when you approach somebody or you, especially in the, in the community, in the business sector and elsewhere, and the higher you go, people just assume that you understand English and they want to use English. But unfortunately with me as a language activist, when you invite me to deliver a keynote address, you invite me to present the paper or anything, I prepare it in Gisizub because it's one of the official languages. Up until you then say, Aibo, we were expecting you, we assume, we assume. And um, the parity of esteem, we are at legacy at the moment. I would definitely say that we mustn't assume be it a government department, be it a private sector, that everybody will be used the Queen's language because it is, you know, it is my ninth language, probably somebody else's 10th or 11th language, and people cannot express themselves. So I would rather, rather say that um, we need to strengthen the use of that and maybe let's have some punitive measures and say that, you know what, if government X, or rather, sorry, department X, be it in government, be it a private sector, if they don't produce their plans, and as currently, as you know, in pencil, it, well, pencil monitors the departments. Out of all the departments that were monitored, and in my view, not all of them have their language policy plans in place. The policy is there, accumulating dust, but I think. The, the what I would like to see is uh, the use of our languages. And if the departments or anybody doesn't use our language, then there should be punitive measures. And the parity of esteem, we are getting there. I'm not, uh, I'm a positivist myself. I wouldn't want to say that, you know what, there's a long, long, long way to go. No, no, no. We have evolved as a country and I'm proud to be South African and say that, you know what, in certain instances, I could go to a place and communicate in the language. But the other language is my concern that I'm actually worried about is the Khoi and Sen languages. Just yesterday we were attending, not yesterday, day before yesterday, we attended, um, it was the, uh, the research uh, symposium on the commission for the Khoi and Sen matters. Although they were not dealing with language matters, they neglected to discuss that but I identify huge gaps there. 
So if we can then do something in that regard, but don't um, don't focus on one language and at the expense of the others. If the others are moving or doing well, now that we have sign language, you mustn't say now that sign language is getting there, then we neglect the oral languages. This is always Tosa, Sindebele, Isi, Lukungan. So they let them develop the parity of esteem. We are getting the Kangane Gangan, Ziachi, Zizindu. And I don't, and I'm being specific, I'm not saying Zizo Jiga. I say Ziachi, and we are making them Zijige. As a language activist, I am making them personally and also with the people that I work with, be it informally or formally. formally. I hope I've uh, answered you, Nyambos. Gabong. Uh, thank you, Doc. Uh, Honorable Malomani. Thank you, Honorable Chen. Greetings to you, Professor Biden host. Um, I'm greeting you with the correct one, Malumane. Thank you, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, my question it will be following the publication of the language statistics released by Stats SA for the census 2022. Penslab mm -hmm. has expressed some concerns about the sharp decline in the South African Sign Language. This is the significance of South African Sign Language is now recognized as an official language. Additionally, Penslab highlighted the decrease in the number of Isindebele speakers in schools and also noted that the metric class of 2022 marked the first class without a single learner registered to learn Siswati in the Gauten province. The proportion of English, Sitonga and Shinde Shivenda speakers has remained relatively stable. However, the statistics show a decrease in the number of Africans and Isitosa speakers, and as a decline in the use of Khoi and Sen languages. Uh, my question will be, what is your analysis of this situation? And if you were to be appointed to PENSLAB, what measures would you put in place or strengthen to ensure that indigenous languages grow? Wow. <laughs> um, we need, thank you for the question, Kelly uh, We need to understand that language is not static, it is dynamic. And we do not dictate actually to the users of the language, be it in that province. And also the mobility of people from one province to the other province. And also the moving of the graduates or the learners from um, at, at high school to high school, then hence the mobility into various uh, provinces. So my take on the matter here is that we need to strictly monitor that. And then we need to have measures in place and make sure that we put our hand on the pulse. We need to make sure we know which, what each department is doing, what each school is doing. The language policies mustn't sit there and accumulate that dust. I still go back to that. The problem is that we do, when you come to the department or to any entity and you ask about the language policy, they would gladly show you the language policy. However, there are no plans in place the policy is accumulating dust. But if we can strengthen the implementation or the development plans, and people must know that, you know what, there will be, you know, it's developmental. You're not there to actually to be against them. We want to embrace multilingualism. And it is the people's choice to use whatever language. However, the other languages mustn't be used at the expense of the others. But my take, lastly, is to strengthen and make sure that the language development plans, development plans and the implementation are put in place. And then PEMSA must make sure that, you know, each and every department have them have time frames and say that by such and such a time, we would have monitored and checked so many departments or so many divisions, so many entities 
and then take away process and, and then advise them accordingly. And then people, and also they, this department must then understand that, you know what, when pencil is approaching them, it is not in a negative way. It's not a punitive measure. It is coming there to develop and to assist so that they can serve our people, the learners, and everybody else in his or her own language because that languages are our own rights, they're our own identity, and they should be treated as such. I thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, the last uh, member, Honorable Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. Greetings to uh, Professor Loli Badenost. My question, uh, Professor, Section 6.2 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa acknowledges that indigenous language, languages are facing a challenge of diminishing uh, and this requires the state to take practical steps and positive measures to evaluate their status and advance the use of these languages. What is your opinion on this section? What measures would you put in place to ensure that the state, including provinces and municipalities, comply fully with the constitutional requirement? I thank you. Um, thank you so much for, for, for your question. I think I sound like a broken record in terms of the development plans and pencil monitoring them. But my reaction to that, I think we shouldn't be complacent and actually be negative about it. I think we have evolved, we have moved as a country. You know, um, I, I, whenever I uh, listen to people talk, you know, and also the social media, people now express, if I'm comparing with 10 years ago, people actually attributed their intel intellect or intelligence with um, the use of English being monolingual. And they, when you use your own language, you will be looked down upon. But I see in the social media, people are using it. So I wouldn't 100% agree to say that, you know what, the language is then are dying. If you can, you know, go whether, just that I'm not on all the social media platform, but then in those that I am, people are using their language. So they are not facing that. This is Ulungege Sife. It's in Debele. It's not going anywhere. Shitonga is not going in. Instead, they are Lundjobala, if I may use that language. So I don't totally agree with that. However, it, my take is that we need to continue using our languages because if we don't, we run a risk. The only language that was identified to be extinct or distinct, it was one of the Koyan Sen languages. This is no, And then we did some work with um, old, well, I'm saying with Dr. Oma Katrina because UCT, we conferred honorary degree, uh, doctorate to her. So we did some work with her and then she is doing something in such languages. However, with regards to the others, we need to decolonize the minds of the parents because the parents, they still think that when they send their children to the universities, to school, they must learn the Queen's language. They attribute the intelligence with the use of English as opposed to the other languages. And also the myth that is out there, it is that we want to get rid of English. Nobody ever in his or her sanity will say that get rid of English. English is a language. We are talking about additive bilingualism. You must use all more multilingualism. That is my take on the matter. If we can embrace and ensure that our languages enjoy this parity of esteem that we talk about. And then we then have, we make sure that we monitor them. We then um, provide any help that is assisted through the use of pencil. We should be able to get this right. We are getting there. And I am confident that we are getting there as a country. I thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, Prof, we are taking this opportunity to say thank you for your time and thank you uh, that you avail yourself. Uh, honorable members, I'm having a request from the interpreters uh, that they want to, to waive 
uh, to the professor because they they <clears throat> are the product of a uh, uh, with your permission, can we allow that? Yes. How in Ganesa Mingia Bong Zipping Cossian away sent a son at Tishon Kulu. Yeah, even if anything happens to me today, you know, I'm so good. I kind of I beg a band, get your boot, Gabon. I'm truly, truly humble to see you in action. You know, in class, Chaperson, when I was still lecturing to, they were still young and tiny. And when you lecture to them, they said, where are we going to work? There are no jobs for language practitioners and interpreters and so on. And then I would say that, hey, where am I now? So, and I am actually proud of you and continue making me proud. I am truly proud and be proudly South African. I'm reminiscing now. I think, you know, I need to have a session. I must visit my... Give it to Nana Kohata. Then I'll treat up a straightening up, no born. Hey, hey. Oh, my loom, sell it up on a one pro. Oh, yes, nice, nice to meet you, Prof. Mantuani Papo, I don't know you, but I'm happy to meet you. I'm pleased to meet you too. Mushamung declared a copana somewhere through a conference or maybe somewhere Hanya Ban Pidis Bank invited. It have a holy say, but can you go? Hulebu Hanya. And I'm also proud of you. Keep up the good work. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Uh, we strike a woman, we strike a rock. Uh, <laughs> we are seeing your product amongst our good selves. Thank you with the good work. Thank you, Prof. We can release you as professor that we have been in this field. You know that uh, for us as this committee will just uh, scoring and giving back to the department. Uh, we don't know out of 25 who's going to be taken, but you will, you will be waiting patiently. I thank you, Prof. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you so much for the opportunity. It was a great pleasure to share my views on the matter and with the challenging questions, but I highly appreciate that. Have a wonderful evening. And all the best with and, and continue doing the good job for the country. Thank you and goodbye. Bye bye, bro. Okay, doctor, are you in, doc? Doctor Mudau, uh -uh. Yo, doctor Litswan, yo. Doc. Knock knock. Go, go.
Tobel. Eh, eh, Tobel eh, just a moment, whilst we were having a challenge, two members, they just uh, get out of the room. Let's wait that they must come back. Uh, we'll start. Thank you so much that we are back. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, uh, can we continue? Uh, uh, Dr. Lutzwala, here we are as members of the committee. Uh, uh, we are committee members, sport, arts, and culture. Uh, with our administrators are uh, all here, researchers, content advice, uh, the house is full, parliament uh, arranged that we must all be here on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we are servants of the people. Uh, translators are also here. Um, if you can just tell us who you are, but uh, you must not forget that 
we have uh, files of all of you, 25 of you, you will just uh, go to again as close as Gaba Gaba. Just few words of uh, telling us who, who you are. I thank you. I'm beautiful, Rulani Chairperson. Uh, we don't want to uh, not to tell you that uh, we have your CV with us. Um, Kialabora. Ke kebeke go petse gore politician o itle be ka le lemela sepedi ba le ke thome ka go botsisha pele ka gore ke go le botsisho e le ka ka sisimane ke botsisho gore eh ke sa dumeletswe go tswela pele ka go bolela ka le lemela sepedi go wa eh le litetse gore politician o itle be ka le lemela sisimane Thank you very much honorable chair interpreter Comment as these members, we are aware just that uh, we want to use our own languages. That's why we are here as an interpreter. But uh, when uh, members are asking uh, English, uh, don't interpret the the same question because Udok can hear English, but. Uh, when he wants to respond, he can respond in 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 Sibedi, and then we interpret. It. Then uh, we we don't want that. We must facilitate this thing correctly. The the question uh, because sometimes uh, you are still writing, translating uh, the question. We are taking time. Uh, so we are asking as these members that uh, just now he uh, spoke about uh, his language, translated that, but immediately that the members are asking the questions, they will ask questions uh, in this official language in South Africa. And then when he is responding, then you translate, I thank you. But we are not yet telling us what he was saying. Please. So oh, my 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 apology. Uh, the the doctor was only uh, letting us know that uh, he made a request to express himself in uh, his, his mother tongue, and uh, he was worried that uh, the the proceedings started in English. So actually, uh, what uh, the chairperson had said uh, after that has actually resolved the whole uh, 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 the whole issue. Thank you. Um, now, Doc, I will give the the honourable members. Oh, I'm reminded the saying that uh, Prof must. Uh, U doctor, I'm from Professor. U doctor must tell who is he. Doctor uh, does understand English. Tell us, a uh, doctor. Kelebo, Kali na kina pia dili swalo. Kimo kimo fatushi mugolo University ya ya Afrika Borwa. Kichoro ya lefapa la chamalimi. Tuta Malimi, ili Malimi ya Sibiali Viali, wana mu University ya Afrika Borwa, ki kiliso wana lao tuwa kwa eh, sishiro, eh, le ratu laka la cha Malimi litu mile reki ya University, eh, reki itute la eh, krata ya jachari politishan, mwe ilo ore, kile kale mga gore a gona baswaba bantsi ba ile gore ba laetsa gahlego mo o ithuteleng malemi a ga bo bona ke ile ka bona 
o ina le sekgoba se ilore eh motho a ka tsena ka re ga lona a sona a itirela lina kudu ile eh o o lebelela eh le rato la polelo ya ya geshu ka ka ge ke be ka kana go ke tsebe ke sa le skolong ke be ke le motho wa go rata go go ngwala diema le de karolo ana tsidi nyane ka le lemela geshu since le sa bon sa 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 dira gore e ke le kwa university ke le ga re ke ithutela tshe tsa malemi o tloge go laetsa ga botse gore le rato le o le gona go ba go fitlhela ga le gono ke ke le mofahlushi mogolo ka re ga le fapale ke ke motho e lore ke khumane di awati tshe mmalwa ka ka re ga le fapale la 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 tsa malemi se go le thata e le go hlabolla malemi ka moka a Afrika borwa mo e lore ke go khumana ke le ka re ga di hlopha tsa go fapa fapana tshe e lore di shuma ka hlabollo le tsweletso le tshumisho ya malemi a ga borena ke le bo thank you very much honorable chair Uh, I am Dr. Litswalo. I am uh, a, a senior lecturer in UNISA, uh, and I'm also a head of uh, linguistics in UNISA. Uh, I am I hail from uh, an area called Seychelles, and uh, I grew up uh, loving uh, languages and uh, linguistics in 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 in, in general, and then. Uh, Uh, that uh, that made me to study uh, linguistics uh, in university and uh, i studied the uh, communications and then uh, i saw i i, I realized that uh, there was lack of interest in languages in uh, in our youth so i saw an opportunity to go into languages and uh, uh make sure that uh, i i i i play part i play a role in uh, the development of uh, my my mother tongue so i grew up uh, uh, i used to love poetry uh, when, when as a young man when i when i was growing up so uh, so that's why i even studied uh, languages in university uh, that is that is what made me a senior lecturer today and uh, again i have uh, been i've i won quite a number of uh, awards uh, that uh, have to do with the uh, development of indig indigenous language languages yes and uh, that's in short uh, who i am Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Interpreter. Thank you, uh, pro, uh, Doctor. And then the first question uh, is going to be asked by uh, uh, Honorable Van Dijk. Thank you, Chairperson, and also welcome to Dr. Letsuala. Um, section 6.2 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa acknowledges that indigenous languages are facing a challenge of diminishing and this requires, thus requires the state to take practical steps and positive measures to e e e elevate the status and, the adv and advance the use of these languages. What is your opinion on this section and what measures would you put in place to ensure that the state including provinces and municipalities comply fully with the constitutional requirement thank you yeah ke le bo eh o go tloga go le go hlokwa gore re re thome ka o lebelela gore eh malemi tshumisho ya malemi a ga borena e tla kae eh ka re eh mola o thewana ga go rena o laetsa gore malemi a a setlo a swanetse gore a shumishwe eh ge re lebelela matjatjing a logono re ya bona gore eh batho ba go bolela malemi a ga borena ka bakala 
di khoba cha ekonomi tse lore di gapele tsa gore eh ba tsebele le mela se simane ba felele tsa ba sena gahlego ya go bolela maleme ga bo bona re bona bana ba ba isho di kolong tse lore di ruta le le mela se simane eh ke re lebelela gore maleme ya a shumishwa vyang eh mo eh se chabeng sa gaborena se se tla dira gore re gone go tseba maemo a tshumisho ya maleme ya gaborena eh le go le le go lebelela gore gahlego ya go shumisha maleme ya e e mo kae eh gore maleme ya a ke a a shumishiwe ka mafapheng le di gorong tsa mmusho go tlokwega gore go diriwe di khoba tsa gore ge batho ba shetse ba laetsa le rato e bile ba ithutela malimi a one le di khoba tse lore ba ka feleletsa ba 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 di humana ka le ba ka la eh malimi a a ga borena ka ge re ne le melawana le molao theo o o laetsa go gore tshumisho ya malimi a ga borena le hlabollo ya wana e bo tlhoka go tlhoka ga gore re go bele le naneo la la go lekola tshumisho ke go ine le di go go ine le di goro le mafapha a mmusho a e bo e lo gore ana le eh di policy tsa tshumisho ya malimi a ga borena go tlhoka ga mananeo a o lore a ka thusha gore re re sheetse gore na malimi a a tshumishwa o fitla go go ka ka eh ka re mulawana wa 2012 wa tshumisho ya malimi a ga borena o laetsa gore eh goro ye nngwe le ye nngwe eh e swanetse gore ya mmusho e swanetse gore e be le unit ye lore e tlo sheetsa tse tsa go tshumisha malimi a ga borena go tlhoka gore re bie eh ditsela tse lo re tlo lebelela gore ka nnete se se a dirwana ke re lebelela malimi ka ga di eh di dirishwa eh mo na re nya ga borena di tlhaelela eh ge re lebelela ka ka tsela yeo malimi a ga borena a bo pegile go ka gona re gona go bona gore ka gore gone le malimi a e lore eh ke go bolelwa eh le ge e se le limeleti o pya batho ba gona ba gona go kwana eh ke fe motlhala ka le limela sepedi setswana le sesotho re ka lebelela gore eh malimi ao a ka shumishwa ka go shielana mo go rontse itse eh gore go a gona go go hlabollwa eh malimi ao tswana le isizulu seswati sindebele le sikhosa a ka shumishwa ka go shielana eh re dire ga pele gore mo di gorontse re re ya go go tswana mo eh me masipale nya ga borena eh pule di shano tse di ba go gona tsa semmusho di pego tse di ba go gona tsa semmusho di swanetse go ngwalwa ka maleme a ga borena go be le di project tse lore eh di humana mashileng a e lore a tlo thusha hlabollo ya ya maleme a ga borena re nete fatse le gore re re dira eh di di bokuboku tsa go laetsa di chaba tsa ga borena gore malimi a ga borena a bo tlhokwa le gore gore a gone go hlabolwa ke 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 ge bona ba o ba bolela go malimi la a ba ka shumisha ka gore re a bona gore ge malimi a sa shumishwe gore gore malimi a ka feleletsa a se sa bolelwa eh ge batho ba yolo re ka se se ba ka ba bolela malimi ao ge ba ka hlokofala le le melewo o ba malimi ao a ka sa ba gona ke le bona thank you doc eh eh thank you very much uh chairperson eh uh, it is uh very important to to start by uh looking at uh, how far uh the development of our indigenous languages uh is so as you may know uh 
Nowadays, uh, people do not uh, use these indigenous languages. They prefer to use uh, uh, English uh, for economic reasons. So uh, they even go to an extent of making sure that uh, their children uh, learn English at school. So uh, it is uh, very important uh, that uh, we change the, the situation. We change uh, the situation and uh, make sure that uh, uh, our people use uh, our indigenous languages and uh, it should actually uh, start uh, in a government department. Uh, the government departments uh, must make sure that uh, uh, the, 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 the the services that they, they, they offer to the people, uh, they, they actually use uh, the languages of choices to maybe uh, disperse information and, and the likes. So, and another thing uh, is that uh, the, the government, uh, the government de departments must make sure that uh, uh, there are jobs so that uh, our children become interested in learning these languages and they will, they will know that uh, after learning this language, after mastering this language, uh, they, it can help me in my job. I can help me uh, maybe uh, uh, get a career out of it. So uh, it's very important to uh, promote uh, the use of uh, indigenous uh, languages. Uh, and then uh, another important uh, 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 another important point is that uh, uh, these organi organizations, uh, government department and uh, 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 mean, uh, other uh, private organizations, they should uh, adopt a, a language policies. Uh, you would have heard about the, the use of uh, Official Languages Act of 20, 2012. Uh, which says that uh, every uh, department, every government entity should have uh, a language policy. Uh, so uh, this should also be uh, followed up. So another uh, important thing is that, uh, uh, you, you know, we've got uh, groups of language. We've got the Sutu groups, which is uh, the Pedi, the Sutu, and the Tswana. So, uh, uh, those languages, maybe uh, they can take turns. Maybe uh, this week or, or maybe this month, they pub make their publications in Sotswana next month in Sipedi, so they let them take turns. And also in the Guni, in Guni languages, uh, let it also be the same. Today is Zulu, tomorrow uh, is uh, uh, Sitosa. Uh, yeah, yes. And then... Uh, uh, Another thing is that uh, official communication should also uh, uh, should also be printed in uh, our indigenous uh, languages. Uh, the, the, these reports that they are publishing every day should also be uh, uh, should also be available in our languages. So, also the government uh, should also come up with uh, projects uh, that uh, are able to to help promoting the promotion of indigenous languages uh, and also uh, fight for awareness of uh, indigenous uh, languages so that uh, we do not find ourselves one day talking about one of uh, the indigenous languages that we once have, we once had that is today extinct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, translator. The next honorable member is Honorable Joseph. Thank you, Chairperson, and good afternoon, Dr. Letzalo. The question that I will ask Chairperson uh, to Dr. Letzalo what is your understanding of linguistic human rights and its linkages to ling linguistic diversity and multilingualism? Why would it be important for you to argue for the multilingualism 
in South Africa. Thank you. Um, Kyalabo, uh, but one ali li li di to kelo, uh, Mulauto Wagabrina, who who father to di to kelo cheche, who lay lor di to kelo cheu, di dinalamaro, Elisilosa, Savoshoka, uh, Jolie, le batu vana le, uh, uh, di di to kelo cha, cha malim, mutu una le, to kelo ya bushumisha, le lime la rawe, uh, gare, uh, kishitikele di jore, uh, mula otewara na wa, utecha, di du to kelo cheo, mutu wuiloro, utwele la pelrahoro ya tseko, una le, di to kelo, chaore, a a khone go go bolela ka le le mela gaba em se chaba se itjego se lo re se bolela polelo ye itjego e ka no ba polelo yo bo e se ye ngwe ya dipolelo tse lo go tsa semmusho o pya le bona bana le ditukelo tsa go shumisha polelo ye o e lo go ya bona ntle le le ghetollo o ba le le tsho la gore ke ba ka shumisha le le mela ga bo bona eh ba ka tla ba ba ka ra kotsi eh re boni le le mela go swana le ngu le lore eh ba o ba ba le bolela go ba be ba tshoga gore ke ba ka bolela le le mele ba ka felile tja ba le eh ka di kholego ba ile ba ba yemisha go bolela le le mela ga bo bona ba thoma go bolela le le me la africans moelo re le khonu re bona o shetse motho o tee we lo re le limile o le nyantse le tsweleng ka fa o ditokelo tsa tshumisho ya malemi di thusha gore re ska felele tsa re ba le siemo sa go tswana le sa le limila nngu eh molao tsho wa rena gore re ne le malemi a o ilong gore ya le sumi pedi a a semmusho eh se o se la etsa gore gone le le polelo ntshi ka mo gare ga na ya ga borena eh batho ba go tswa ditjong tsa go fapa fapana ba go tswa ditshabeng tsa go fapa fapana ba na le malemi a go fapana a o ba shumisha ao eh se o se thega ke molao theo ka fao ge re na le malemi a le sumi pedi a o ile gore ke a semmusho se o se laetsa go ba gona ga siemo sa polelo ntshi ka mona ga nya ga borena ka fao gore re skera ba le batho ba o ile gore ba ke kwa ba ghetollwa ka ba ka la ge o ba sa khone go bolela le limileitse go le lore le bona la go kare ke lona le lore le a thegwa o tlokega gore go be le segoba sa gore eh polelo ntshi e be gona e e thegwe gore batho ba gone go go ikhumana ba le siemong se lore ke ba le gara ba bolela dipolelo tsa ga bo bona ba gona le go ithuta malemi a mangwe go mmege ba ithuta malemi ao ka ge eh le le fasile ba tla ba ba go le go go lona le thega go ba gona ga polelo ntshi se se dira gore ba se ke ba le bala go ba go emisha go bolela le lemela ga bo bona se o sinkisha kwa mora go gore ge batho ba bolela le lemela ga bo bona eh le lemileo le tlo tswela pele ba tlo le tsia ba lisha ba neng ba bona ba lisha ditlogolong le ditlogolwaneng tja bona ka fa o go botlho kwa gore ge batho ba le gare ba ithuta malemi a mangwe a o lora a bolelo polelo ya ga bo bona le yona e tswela pele go shumisho motho ga ge a tsena sekolo a ithuta se simane a seke a a yemisha go bolela le lemela ga bo bona ge ile na pia di letswalo ile nna ke tswa sechego mo ke bolela go sepedi ke tla ga uteng mo e lore eh ke kopana le batho ba go tswa eh di ma di ma deleting tsa go fapa fapana ba bolela malemi a go fapana ke tswela pele ke bolela le lemela gesho o pya ge ke le moshumong ke bolela se khoa o ene le ba shumi mmogo ba ke ba go lo bona ba ile hore ba bolela sezulu 
ke ithuta e sizulu ke ithuta so gwa but ke sa le bala gore polelo ya motheo ke le leme la gesho le o le nthusha go gore ke tswele pelo go gona go ithuta maleme a mangwe le gore ge ke sheje ke ithalosha ke seke ka ga ka ne ga ka ge motlhomweng ka ba ke tlhaelela ka go ithalosha ka maleme a mangwe ke le bo Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, one would uh, remember that uh, uh, people have rights. So as uh, our constitution and uh, uh, these rights uh, should not uh, be limited, should not uh, have limits within them. So uh, the, uh, on the right of, of the use of uh, a language, language of choice, uh, one uh, has to be able to has to be allowed to choose a language uh, which they feel uh, they feel they, they they feel they can express themselves better in in, in that particular language. So uh, even in in, in our courts of law, uh, the people who are uh, maybe the accused, uh, they choose they, are, they they must be allowed to choose a language uh, which they feel they, ex 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 uh, they understand better or a language of their choice. So, so when somebody uses uh, a, a non-official language, a, a non-official language, I feel that uh, that should be allowed. Uh, for example, uh, the language of uh, Nu. So the Nu speakers uh, used to to be afraid to speak uh, their languages, their language rather. So uh, because they, they they were afraid that they would be arrested, uh, so they ended up uh, adopting Africans as their mother tongue. So. So today, that 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 situation led to uh, this, uh, to what's happening today. We find ourselves uh, today having only one speaker, or one mother tongue speaker, uh, of uh, the the language of Nu. So, we, of course, our constitution says uh, we have uh, twelve official uh, languages, uh, uh, but. Uh, I still support uh, the the issue of uh, multilingual uh, multilingualism. So uh, yes, uh, the, the 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 constitution also says that it says that uh, there must not be a discrimination uh, amongst uh, uh, the, the 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 languages so so it's 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 very important for people to to learn many languages and uh, 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 even when uh, one learns uh, other languages, it is still important for them to to make sure that they still uh, have and they still know their language, so that uh, they are able to uh, skate the language down to the next uh, uh, a, a generation. So, so uh, uh, our youth nowadays when they go when they leave their homes when they go to university they 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 forget uh, their their languages and then uh, when you get to university you come across people from uh, different areas speaking different languages uh, so uh, i i for one used to use the opportunity at uh, that uh, situation as a as an opportunity to learn and make sure that i become a uh, multilingual but uh, the important thing is that uh, do not uh, forget uh, uh, your mother tongue. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. 
The next honorable member is Honorable Mteto. Thank you, Chair. I'm trying to find my glasses. Tobela Naka Letualo. Tobela. Lega in that. Rona Rakavichalina. Rona Ovitoa Kaker. So Tanzo Rakiti said the question. Governor V. No, I just want to find out what are. Uh, the key arguments expounded by the national language policy framework and enforced by the law, by the use of official language, languages act number 12 of 2012 in relation to language use. Have you identified any gaps between language policy and implementation? All right, That's yeah, yeah, level. Uh... Le Lisa Lemura or a Rona Le de Momore or J. J. Dinchi, a Mava Pili, a the policy jar and Nachi or River Rolito or Naka Mona Ring, a singer of Essay Fella, the policy jar, cha 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 Chumishoya Malemi, a fella, the policy, Kama Fapping, um, our Fapa Fapana, or a Rene le di policy cha cha maya mwa godi mu upya. Ero itla mo ilore di policy che di swani chiro shumi shwa retro gare shaelel itla lemo gare re 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 bolela ka shumi sho ya ya malimi a gare na lore horo di horo kamu ka cha mu sho di swani chiro di beli. The unity che lor di tla be go ba di le pola gore ka nete eh policy che di a phetagatjo eh e re tlo ga re bona gore gona le hlaelelo eh mo di gore ntja ga bere na ka gore eh gona le ba 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 shuma mo di gorong tja tja mmusho eh ka di tukulong tshe lore re khumana batho ba go bolela maleme a a go fapa fapana eh ke fe motlhala ka e tikolo ya polokwane mo ile hore o tlo khumana bona le batho ba go bolela tshivenda tshitsonga eh sepedi ke o ile hore ke a mangwa maleme a magolo a semusho ka province ya ya Limpopo e fela o khumana ile hore batho ba ile hore ba ba shuma mo di kamogelong tsa di goro tseo le batho ba ile ba shuma mo di phapushing tse ile re di shuma ka batho tsa tsi ka tsa tsi ga ba tsebe malemi a a ga borena ka fa o tlhokega gore eh mo khwedi tharong go swanetse gore go be le di peyo tse ile re di a dirwa go laetsa gore eh di policy tse re be go le tsona di a phetagatjwa ntle le go ba le dipego tseo eh tse lo re di felwa di lebelelwa gafetsa gafetsa re feletsa re khumana mo siemong se ilo gore ge ngwaga wa mashileng o fela eh re lebelela ka mo o o shumilwe go ka gona re re feletsa re bona go ene le hlaelelo ye kgolo eh mo tlhabollong ya ya malema ga boreng le tla le mo gore ge eh boto ya 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 pencil po e e tlhoma mishwa ka ngwaga wa 1995 ke meng ngwaga e mintshi mola se se diriwa e utjwa le gono re sa bolela ka hlabollo eh le khudisho ya malema re be re swane tjo go ba ka se se ba ka re 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 bolela ka tswetjo pele ya chumisho le eh le le nete fatjo ya gore se se a dire upya re khumana e lo re go sana le maleme a e lo gore gana di dirishwa eh ka mafepeng a go fapafapa se se felle tsa se dira gore maleme a mahangwe re go se ke go ba le khonagalo ya gore a shumishiwe ka ge go hlaelelwa 
dilo tsa go swana le mareo mo eh di 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 nsinche di ka fao ke ke gatelela taba ya gore eh se khoba se se bona ga la gore se sa hlaelela ke re lebelela police di police le phethagatso ya tsona ke dipego tsa go laetsa tshumisho yewe le go 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 hlatha eh di kotsi eh tshe o dika ba go gona re di hlatha di se shutja ba gona o nete fa tsa gore re ba le mananeo a ile re a tlo re thusha gore re se ke ra felletsa re ba se mong se lo re ga ra gona go phethagatsa di nepo tshe o lo re re rile ge re thoma ra di bia fase ra re ge ngwaga wo wa mashele go fela re sone tsho ba re fitlheletse se le se eh ge re ka ba le dipego tseo ra ra ba le mananeo a o netefatsa tshumisho e se go ba se ke bolela go ka sona se ka gona gore se thijwe maleme a ga borena a felletse a le se mong se lo gore eh a maleme a a se tlogo a a felletse a le se mong se lo gore re gona go bona e le ge a shumishwa le gatong le le tee e go swana le le leme la la sisiman e felo go tloga go tlhokega di dirishwa ntse lo re di ka ba gona go nete fatsa gore maleme ya a hlabollo ke le bo thank you very much Uh, you would uh, understand that uh, uh, there are many uh, <clears throat> okay you would uh, when 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 talk about uh, a policy uh, one would understand that uh, uh, the language policy Uh, it's it's it should be uh, every rather every uh, department every uh, government uh, entity should have uh, should develop a language uh, policy so now uh, uh, you would agree with me that uh, our policies are some of the best policies uh, but uh, our challenge uh, comes with uh, implementation so so uh, the act this act of uh, uh 2012 which uh, talks about uh, the use of official languages uh, it says that uh, uh, these de departments must have uh, this uh, language policies and uh, now the challenge uh, is that uh, many uh, government entities do not uh, comply so uh, for, ex for 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 example i want to give an example to see when we are in polukwane uh, the people there use uh, cpd sivenda and chitsonga so uh, you would find that uh, the person who who receives uh, the clients or someone who said the reception does not even know one of uh, the one of these uh, languages that are spoken in the area so i feel that uh, if we can uh, actually have uh, quarterly reports uh, that can actually that actually uh, report on on these challenges that uh, we can uh, that that we find whereby uh, people are not able to to receive services in uh, in their language uh, in the preferred languages i feel that uh, that can actually uh, uh, turn around the the situation so uh, in 19, uh, since uh, pansap was uh, established in in 1995 uh, it has been a long time since pansap has been uh, 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 established but today we are still talking about uh, a development of uh, languages we're talking about uh, uh, the 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 development and the implementation 
of uh, we, we're talking about the development. We're not even talking about uh, the implementation of uh, this uh, 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 legislation. So, so another challenge is that uh, uh, is, is the problem of uh, resources. So. The, we are not able to develop some of these uh, 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 indigenous languages because we do not have uh, resources. Uh, we are not able to make sure that uh, we have uh, the necessary terminology for the language. So uh, we also need uh, programs that uh, will make sure that uh, there is a development and, uh, and, 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 and and there will be development of, of our, uh, our indigenous languages. Uh, we also need other projects uh, that will make sure that uh, uh, that will safeguard uh, the, 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 the implementation of uh, our policies. So uh, we need to have uh, a, a, a quarterly reports, and then, then, then at the end or of the financial year, we should have uh, reports uh, that uh, tell us how far we are uh, in this uh, in this uh, regard. And again, uh, we must make sure that uh, there is uh, uh, equity. Uh, in 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 our languages, uh, and make sure that uh, uh, our in, indigenous languages are able to catch up with English. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, uh, Doctor Litswang. Uh, now, honourable members, um. I'm going back to Doctor. Doctor, can we take this opportunity to thank you uh, to order yourself to come because we do have an interest as as questions fired to you and the way that you're responding. That's why you are here. Uh, here you are having uh, honorable members and the staff of parliament and interpreter. Uh, now the process, as we are aware, is that after the scoring uh, of each individual who did come uh, to sit in these interviews, we'll take uh, our recommendations to the minister and then uh, the process We'll get it uh, from the ministry. Any responses? Uh, we are here to interview 25 members and hoping that uh, the department doesn't want all those 25 members. So uh, can we take this opportunity to thank you? If also you want to say something, now you are allowed. Um, Rumana, Salo Solita Tullo, Yase Lure, Avasi Quishishavore, the Petulo J, the Tava over the Filui, the Hono of Fisa, O Maluco A Palamente, Camuha Ulore, the Trilogy de la Gawa, Calabo, Hakilabas of Gasil in Pilo Sol. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, my request is uh, a small request. Uh, I would like to request that uh, uh, if our interpreters did not understand something, 
as uh, the as we are busy here uh, they should actually try to ask so that uh, uh, the right information uh, gets to to you members of parliament thank you thank you so much uh, now uh, we are releasing you uh, doctor thank you so much yeah, Honorable members, uh, Honorable uh, Tetua is not going to be with us as from tomorrow has got other commitments. He asked to be released today. Uh, now we are left with one, one uh, person, Dr. Mudao. This is our last uh, member. Dr. Mujao, are you ready? Open your mic, open your veto, uh, Dr. Mujao. Can you hear me now? Yes. We don't see you. We, we do hear you. Okay, I'm opening the video. Yeah. But if you have a challenge, you just open and then you can switch off uh, after we've uh, seen you on your video. Can you see me? Not yet. Let me lock on my phone then. I think so. Yeah, this big over there. Recording and recording. Hello, 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 hello. There's an echo, echo,
Honorable members, the clarity we did get uh, that she's uh, not going to get a uh, Mm. Yes. Can, can so, you see me now? Can you see me now? Can you see me now? Can you see me? Oh. Hello. Okay. Your mic is off, Dr. Mudau. Your mic is off. It on now. Yes. Uh, oh, thank you. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. Uh, as you are aware that this is a committee of parliament, these are members of parliament and the staff of parliament Staff of Parliament, everyone is here. Uh, secretariat, uh, researchers, content advisors, uh, interpreters. Uh, can you tell you? Can, I sorry. Can you tell us who are you? I'm Paul Delina Mudao. I'm a CPD speaker. Born and raised in Limpopo province in Moleji. I'm a language practitioner in Parliament, and I've been working as a language practitioner for 13 years now. But I started working as an educator in Limpopo. I worked for, for 13 years and also taught as principal for two years and worked as head of department in one of the schools there for almost two years. Thank you. You can switch off your camera now. 
uh, in case that uh, it can disturb you through a network. Um, Amera. Negative, negative. Any member wants to ask a question? Honorable Zondi, teacher. Good evening, uh, Doc. Uh, your first question will be section two, section six, rather, of two of, of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa acknowledges that indigenous languages are facing a challenge of diminishing and thus requires the state to take practical steps and positive measures to elevate, to elevate their status and advance to use of these languages. What is your opinion on this section? What measures would you put in place to ensure that the state, including provinces and municipalities, comply fully with this constitutional requirement. Thank you. I think in order to for the state and other uh, institution to comply with this requirement, uh, there has to be a language unit in government department which I believe they already have them because according to the um, use of official languages act number 12 of 2012, every government department and the national public entities and national public uh, enterprises must have, they must adopt uh, language units and those language units must have a language policy which comply with section six of the constitution and the language policy must be implemented. If they have a language a, a policy that meet those requirements and they implement it, that will be able to elevate the status of the formerly marginalized languages. And also if there will be monitoring to ensure that the, the official languages are used according to the, the policy. So uh, PENSARP, of course, has a responsibility to monitor the use of official languages in the in government departments and also to make sure that the, the policies that they have do indeed uh, meet the requirements uh, according to the act. Those policies, but, uh, the, the de each department or a government office has to identify three languages that are used by the uh, community around those offices. And then they must provide government service using those languages that are, to, are spoken by the community. And the policy must also indicate how those offices are going to communicate or to provide services to people who are not speaking of those languages. It must also indicate how the people can uh, report violations of human rights, uh, linguistic human rights, and how the, the office will deal with those uh, complaints. And the, the, the language policy, the, as Pensar in collaboration with the National Language Unit and the Provincial um, Language Committees, should encourage and make people aware of language committees and uh, language policies, and also promote and protect the linguistic linguistic human rights. Uh, the, the government offices must avail the language policies so that the public can have access to them. According to the, uh, the use of official languages act, every government office must display a summary of the language policy that they use so that the, the public can access it and read it. And again, if uh, PENSAR together with the, the national language units and the provincial uh, language committees are doing monitoring, uh, they are monitoring the use of those languages. These languages 
will uh, receive equal treatment and their status of those languages will also be elevated. And in that way, it's, they will be like achieving the, the, the mission and vision of, of PANSAR, which is the custodian of multilingualism. And I also think language exposure can assist in elevating the status of these languages and also to ensure that they receive equal treatment. We, as PANSARP and uh, provincial language committees, uh, in case I'm appointed to serve in the board, we can organize language activities like your language uh, festival, cultural uh, festival, I remember. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Any other intake of question? Honorable Maloman, Honorable Adams, Honorable uh, Van Dijk. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Greetings to you, Dr. Modao. My question, it will be, what is your understanding of linguistic human rights and its linkages to linguistic diversity and multilingualism? Why would it be important for you to argue for multilingualism in South Africa? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, South Africa, the, the South African nation, it, it has a... Uh, diverse languages. Therefore, it's important that all these languages are treated the same way so that the speakers of the language of those languages as well will feel that their languages are valued. In terms of uh, linguistic human rights, um, people should not be excluded in any activities or maybe being unable to receive government services based on the language that they speak. They must be assisted, like interpreting service must be provided, translation of documents. They shouldn't be receiving documents that are written in a language that they, they don't understand. And for example, someone must not be uh, must not be denied any opportunity just because they are not a speaker of the language that she, she or he is forced to use. So if someone uh, is exposed to such uh, language uh, violations, they have to report it to PENSAR so that PENSAR can, can uh, solve the, the problem for them and also publish the, its findings. So in a nation like South Africa, where people speak diverse languages and, uh, and there are different kinds of uh, services that they need from government and also in the private sectors, and as well as the, the constitution itself stating their rights, their language rights, people have to, the language has to be treated the same way. Hence, violations of, of human linguistic rights must be reported and be resolved by PENSAR. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Honorable uh, Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. And greetings to uh, the, uh, Dr. Mpo Madao. My question to you, uh, Doctor, section, section 6.2 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa acknowledges that indigenous languages um, are facing a challenge of demonizing uh, uh, and uh, thus requires the state to take practical steps and positive measures to e evaluate, e evaluate the status and advance the use of these languages. What is your opinion on this section? What measures will you put in place to ensure that the state 
including provinces and municipalities, comply fully with the constitutional requirement. I thank you. Thank you. And uh, is there a matter of policies first? All government institutions should have language policies that meet the requirements as stated in the the, the language uh, the use of official languages act and also section six of the constitution. And the, the policies have to comply with the requirements as stated in the Act. And PENSAR has to ensure that by doing monitoring, has to ensure the use of those languages and co also come up with ways in which they can promote multilingualism. I think multilingualism can be promoted by uh, multilingual education uh, or bilingual education, but that will need collaboration with the Department of Education and other relevant departments. That should be done from foundation phase up to higher education level, because according to research, uh, children who receive tuition in a language that is foreign to them, not their mother tongue, they are at a disadvantage because it limits their academic at achievement. Because children learn best in their first language. So I know it's something big, but it's something that can be planned. You can start with uh, group languages, for instance, uh, in the Nguni languages, one language and one language in Sotho group. Chivenda, Shijonga, and the South African uh, sign language, and then see how it goes. If language, all languages can be used as languages of tuition in schools up to university level, that will elevate the status of this language and their, the treatment of the languages. And with time, of course, they can even become economic language like. English and bilingual language has proved to be working in other countries like in Canada where students receive tuition in French and English, in Wales it's Welsh and English, even in our country. We have a history of Africans and English that are used as a language tuition languages and those children stand a, 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 good, a good chance of uh, succeeding well in their studies. So we can learn, we can consult those countries that have been doing that for some time. And we even have our own languages that are already used for bilingual and uh, for bilingual uh, tuition. And I think also social media, we can use social media platforms to promote multilingualism. A language like Semi, which was a minority language in Sweden, was promoted on social media and more and more people joined it and something that was started by the youth. And more and more people joining the, the, the status of that language were, was elevated through this. Even in our own country, a small thing like uh, someone in Pretoria, now called Twane, Started teaching Sipitori as slang, Swan and Sipedi slang in Swane for people who moved to that city and they were able to communicate with the local people using that language. So, social media has now become a part of everyday life worldwide, especially after the hard lockdowns. And it can be used. That's something that will need to be researched thoroughly, of course planned, come up with policy and check the laws, what, what the laws say, or they will need to be amended in order to accommodate. It. But it, I, I see it as something that can be used to promote uh, multilingualism. I know you have to factor in risks like the, the digital device, um, addiction, because if you look in rural areas, deep rural areas, 
they don't have access to, most of the people don't have access to internet like in the city. So government can assist by uh, availing Wi-Fi hotspots like the people have in the cities. There are Wi-Fi wi hotspots in the cities where people can go there to connect to the internet. Yeah, if the budget allocations are not enough. Hello. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joseph, yes. Thank you, um, um, Chairperson. Um, evening, Dr. Duao. I will focus on also on, on sign language and want to ask you what role can language awareness campaigns play in the promotion of multilingualism and the development of sign language? Thank you. Sorry, can you repeat the question, please? I will do so. What role can language awareness campaigns play in the promotion of multilingualism and the development of sign language. Thank you. Language awareness can play an important role in the development of languages and other official languages, including sign language, which already now is one of the official languages in the country. I think by organizing uh, or by running language, language awareness campaign, by organizing um, events like language festivals, uh, cultural festivals, or book clubs. I know Dali Bari has been uh, doing the book club campaign and it has worked well, even though that is not on a big scale because it's run by a private company. Um, in those events, we uh, are both in collaboration with the provincial language units, of course, and the national language unit, can also invite experts in language area. Language is multidisciplinary. Uh, we can invite experts in from in different disciplines, invite the artists, writers of books, uh, and ask those people to come in and speak and share their expertise and knowledge and also showcase their products. And at such events, PENSARP has to provide interpreting services, language services as interpreting, uh, transition uh, services if that will be needed even before the those, those kinds of events by that. PESAP and uh, language, other language structures will be uh, uh, creating social cohesion. When people are able to participate in matters that affect them or in community activities, they, they have the sense of belonging. Uh, and in that way, at the same time, PESAP will be achieving it's, uh, its vision as custodian of multilingualism and also promoting social cohesion. And it's at such uh, community activities where policies, language policies, and hum uh, hum linguistic human rights must be advocated. You, you, you never know. People, someone, that might spark interest in someone. And people must be encouraged to speak to people who use a different language from them. And someone might be interested in learning a la another language, like myself, I'm a, my home language is Sibeli. But since I arrived in parliament, I work with people who speak other official languages in the country. By mixing with other people, speakers of other language, languages, it inspired me to learn those languages. I greet everyone in their home language, in their home language, and I keep on learning bit by bit 
their, those languages. I send birthday messages to colleagues in their home languages. If I don't know how to translate that message, I go to one of the colleagues who speak the same language and ask them to assist me by translating that message. And when I get the response from the, the, the colleague who is birthday, you can see that I reached their heart. So when someone's language is used equally, like other languages, it gives them so much joy. So we can also arrange for some people who want to learn a different language or to develop the language that they are speaking. Programs can be started, language programs, maybe online lessons or forming groups where people who want to learn a certain language can meet, connect. Yeah, that will assist in helping PENSALF uh, achieve a, its vision and its mission uh, of um, promoting multilingualism and developing and ensuring the use of all official languages, including the South African Sign Language. Thank you. Remember, it's your turn now. Huh? OK, thanks, Chabes, and greetings to to you, Dr. Mdao. Section 6.4 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa empowers government, both national and provincial, to regulate and monitor the use of official languages to ensure that they enjoy parity of esteem and are treated equitable. The question is, what legal and operational measures would you put in place to make this to come into effect? I thank you. Yeah, that is language policies. Government, uh, according to the constitution and the uh, the use of official languages act, government departments have to use official languages for government purposes, and also have policies in place that describe how they are going to use those languages and how they, they are going to assist the communities who are no speakers of the official languages. And if government departments uh, adhere, have those policies and adhere to them, they will be able to, to, to consult and the country as a whole will be able to achieve uh, multilingualism and social cohesion. Mm. And also there has to be monitoring of official, the use of official languages as stated in the, the use of official languages act, and also the national language units. A government department Will have government departments have to submit records annually or quarterly or according to however PENSAR will need. The PENSAR is my dented to request for records of official use of languages anytime, and the, these institutions have to comply with that. So if there's proper monitoring, then the goals or the mission of PENSARB will be achieved because all languages will receive e equal treatment. And monitoring as well, it should not only be maybe to find failures, yes, part, part is to, if there are failures, then PENSARB has to intervene and assist those departments, starting with their language policies to check if they have language policies in place, they have language units, those language units have policies in place and whether they are adhering to those policies. If not, PENSARP has to assist, assist them in compiling policies according to the requirements 
as said in the Act, uh, in the Act, yes. And also ensure that they keep on checking whether they are coping with implementing, implementing those policies. And PESARP has to also report to, to, to national parliament because those reports have been has to be submitted to the Minister of um, Sports, Arts and Culture, who has to table it in the National Assembly as well. I do believe that it's possible to achieve the shared goals of Pensarbe's vision and mission if policies are adhered to and there's monitoring as well and interventions are provided where there's a need. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Doc. Uh, now, Doc, we're coming to an end of questions to you. Thank you so much to bother yourself to come and do these interviews, hoping for the best, uh, as you are aware that uh, what you are doing, we are doing, uh, preparing for uh, the department, that department must choose the best candidates out of the scoring of uh, members. If you want to say something, Doc, that's your time now. Uh, I just want to thank you for having given me the opportunity to be or to even shortlist my 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 application or nomination. I really appreciate and hoping that you will appoint me so that I will assist with the skills that I have in the pencil board. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. You are released now. Thanks. Honorable members, let me take this opportunity to thank every member who's here. Uh, we know that other members having apologies. We all know that Honorable Mamabulo is having a bereavement and, a, and having a bereavement, and today it's a funeral. Oh, In, tomorrow, I mean, yes. And then... Mm -hmm. No, Mr. Mr. Honorable Jafta has got a bereavement also. Uh, and then Honorable Mtetwa uh, is, is having uh, other commitments of the party, as we all are aware that uh, we have a very crucial coming months so but uh, you, you decided to commit yourselves to be here uh, we are not going to do what initially is written in that we must reflect and i don't see any need we'll check whether on sunday uh, because tomorrow we we'll have about 10 candidates and I'm suspecting that uh, at least we'll start on time at 10. So our staff, they must try to emphasize to, to the transport that they must be on time. And uh, tomorrow maybe the, the traffic is not that much. And tomorrow also we're not going to start with anything except this. Uh, we'll try, uh, I will try to guide um, but uh, we must be very careful not to just chop uh, whilst they are still uh, talking. But sometimes if in one question uh, somebody is taking 10 minutes, we don't mind because it's taking his or her time. 
uh, you have seen what I've done on those who did take 15 minutes in one question. I, I didn't want to be loud and say any other thing. We'll just look at the, the questions and at the time. So uh, I've seen, I've just, the nature was calling and I, I got outside. I've seen the packs outside. Uh, I'm not sure I'll talk to our staff that when the the kitchen rushed us and rushed them, they were not aware uh, about our program because our staff were up and down trying uh, to talk to the uh, kitchen managers because they once be uh, workers, maybe uh, they was they will be saying there's no overtime for for themselves, but uh, the clever administrators and secretaries they've said they must pack our food and then we got parcel outside when we are going out we must just grab thank you so much honorable members and we must be aware uh, that this is a parliament and people when you are looking at us they are looking at the members of parliament uh, i'm happy we are presentable uh, it's unlike as if we are going to rally. Uh, uh, we are very presentable uh, because uh, interviews are done by uh, members of parliament. And you know, even the way that they are dressed. Uh, but I'm happy uh, that we are all presentable. You see, Mos. <laughs> uh, okay. We adjourn for today. Yes, we can leave our files. Okay.